any difficulties be picked up in transaction through reasoning or dislocation of abutment, the brand new TS system is designed to avoid potential issues for implantation. With 1-2-3 feature drilling system, now it is ready to place implant. The TS comes with abutment holding system which is located in the lower part. When the implant is connected to the abutment, it holds these two parts firmly without using a screw. At the moment of loading short pieces, the TS system prevents dislocation of abutment which may cause bindable elasticity. Also, it is more convenient for clinicians because it does not require to treat x-ray after loading. For conventional abutment, clinicians are required to select between mini platform and regular platform. However, KS abutment is compatible with all different diameter of implant, so the selection of short pieces becomes a lot more easier for clinicians. The abutment screw of KS system is designed firmer and the space is being used to reinforce the inner wall of the implant body. The KS system is aimed to reinforce abutment by thickening the wall and implant wall as well. In addition, the depth of connection between implant and abutment is increased. As a result, structure of the KS system disperses masticatory pressure effectively. By the reinforced structure, the external force which may affect on the screw stays minimum and eventually minimizes the screw loosening. As of the diameter of 4.0 implants, the KS system secures the degree of strength at 4.5 with the increased depth of connection, reinforced walls of abutment, and thickened implant body. Find your key solution. Introducing the lab kit. The lateral approach sinus kit that safely raises the sinus membrane without perforation. The planified drill design, both dome and core drill feature rounded cutting edges that minimize direct contact with the membrane. In this way, lateral windows can be created safely. The dome drill in the lab kit helps lift the sinus membrane safely while selecting approximate bone particles between the cutting blades. By creating bone chips between the blades, the core drill's rounded cutting edge reduces the chances of direct contact with the membrane. The lab kit's dome and core drills are specifically designed to create the lateral window safety. Lab kit allows for more precise control over drill depth. The last kit features drill stoppers in 0.5 mm increments. Six different lengths of drill stopper allows for more precise control over drill depth when creating a lateral window. All these last kit features contribute to safer sinus lifting surgery and reduce the chances of sinus membrane perforation. Let's go over the advantages of our lab kit. It is specifically designed to help surgeons to create lateral windows safely with the patented drill design. Six different lengths of drill stoppers with 0.5 mm increments allow for more precise control over drill depth. Try the lab kit specifically designed for clinicians to perform a sinus lift safely in a short time. Introducing the chest kit. The chest approach 
sinus tip that safely lifts the sinus membrane with a hydraulic lift system. The casket reduces the chance of membrane perforation. The plaintiff's cast drill creates a corneal cylinder that keeps the drill edge from direct contact with the membrane. Casket ensures safer drilling by preventing sinus membrane perforation. Using the drill stopper makes it easier to adjust the drill depth. The casket features drill stoppers in 1 mm increment. It is possible to control the drilling depth precisely by using the stopper, which ensures safer drilling without the risk of perforating the sinus membrane. The hydraulic lifting technique of the maxillary sinus can facilitate the blood supply of the surgical site. The casket's membrane lifter is using hydraulic pressure to elevate the maxillary sinus membrane higher and wider. Consequently, it facilitates blood supply, which encourages the formation of new bone in the healing process. Try the casket that reduces the risk of membrane perforation to ensure safer surgery. Introducing the acid tip for narrow alveolar ridge slit. The acid tip uses expansion drills able to extend the bone buccally and lingually, even in the case of severe alveolar bone resorption, eliminates the use of a mallet. A safer and easier buccal plate extension is achievable when minimizing the risk of buccal fracture. During the final stage of implant placement, the implant can secure a strong initial stability in the narrow ridge without pushing. The acid tip allows regular size implants to be placed in narrow ridges with a low risk of buccal fracture. You can try it out. MS implant. Introducing the MS implant, a one body type implant for narrow bone ridge areas such as the mandibular inferior region. There are three types of MS implant, narrow ridge, denture, and provisional. First, the narrow ridge is a one body type implant suitable for areas with narrow bone width or narrow interdenture spacing. Second, the MS Venture is an implant designed for overdenture. Third, the MS Provisional is used when immediate placement of a temporary prosthesis is necessary. Try the MS implant in the mandibular inferior region where the bone can be very narrow. Oh, 
全部君様何でも知ってんだよ。それは先生、君、レモンが決めそう。ごめん、ただなんだ。今回は8000円。今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何万円今回は何オッセンミュージック2030서울전세계축구인들의뜨거운관심속에서진행되는오늘행사는잠시후오전9시부터영어와중국어로동시중독되어대놀사이트와유튜브를통해실시간생중계됩니다이번행사의주제는주요된네로임플란트로폭넓은경험으로당연의의미를더해주실과장네분을모시고다양한임상증명으로살펴보는주요임플란트의장점과안정성장기적예의에관한손영희원장김기성원장의강연과내로임플란트의임상적유용성을보여주는박성민교수배아란교수의강연이준비되어있습니다특히오스템미팅의하이라이트라이브스토드리는오전과오후두차례의나뉘어선보입니다오전시간박상기교수가원다이브를활용한주요된내로임플란트수술을오후시간김현종원장이 MS 임플란트와원다이브를활용한네로임플란트수술현장을공개합니다마지막으로조영진원장박정철원장조영단교수세명의연자가함께주요된네로임플란트의정의와임상적활용에관한의견을관객들과함께나눠봅니다각세미나실에서는수명보정장치의클리니컬에듀케이션을주제로한보정세미나와개원이치치과인테리어치과정형전자파트까지네가지주제로구성된개원세미나치과주공사와치주공과전공생을위한세미나까지알찬강연들이이어지며현장에참석하신분들을위한특별프로모션풍성한이벤트까지영진공이최고의학생사다운시간으로꾸며집니다주요된내로임플란트의다양한활용법과임상노하우를전해드릴오스템미팅2023서울지금시작합니다Greetings, welcome to Austin Meeting 2023 Seoul. I am Kim Yusu, the MC of the day. Before we begin, I would like to express my gratitude to all the love and support that you have sent to the Hygienist Forum. This is 9.02 right now. We are going to focus on advanced digital dentistry, short and narrow implant today. Today, the main auditorium and the third floor seminar room will host various programs and uh, starting from 2 p.m., including seminars on orthodontics, private practice opening, dental technology, and more will be provided. I look forward to your interest. Uh, additionally, by visiting the dental website, you can enjoy the live streaming of all ongoing lectures, live surgeries, and seminar room presentations. This year, Austin Meeting has garnered immense global attention. We are thrilled to have numerous dentists among us. Many from overseas branches are here with us today, and we are really grateful. Simultaneous interpretation services in English and Chinese are provided for our global audience. And this is a live stream that I look forward to your interest. For uninterrupted uh, experiences, we kindly request attendees to switch their phones to silent mode or to turn them off. As a Special treat for our on site guests. We'll have a grand prize draw after all sessions. Prizes include a Galaxy Note at the Book 3 Pro, Galaxy Z Flip 5, and Galaxy Tab S9. Your support and enthusiasm are much appreciated. The excitement does not stop here. At Austin Meeting 2023 Seoul, we have an array of events happening on each floor. 
attendees who are in person. But remember to use your beverage voucher and collect stamps on your stamp tour sheet hidden across the first and fourth floors. Once you've gathered all stamps, so submit your sheet at the reception desk on the first floor to receive a special gift. On the first floor, we are showcasing and presenting 109 posters registered for the Austin Meeting Poster Session. Explore various clinical cases and research findings in implants, digital dentistry, GBR, and orthodontics. Don't miss the free professional photo zone. Enjoy a rela relaxing break with a beverage using your voucher at the cafeteria. I hope you utilize a lunch break as well as coffee breaks. The second floor houses Austin's product exhibition hall where you can directly experience Austin Implants' diverse range of products. On the fourth floor, explore various exhibition booths and on the right side, there is catering zone inside the restaurant. Next is the online event. Those of you watching from the dental site, you'll be able to win coffee coupons and dessert set coupons. Regrettably, online event that is being discussed is for the Korean audience only. For Korean audience, please refer to the pop-up on the dental site. The draw results will be announced after each session and coffee coupons will be sent simultaneously. For those who will stay with us until the end, we've prepared generous prizes including Samsung Bespoke Robot Vacuum, JBL Wireless Headphones, and Galaxy Bud 2 Pro. I hope you stay tuned. For Korean audience, please note that participation in all online events require logging into the dental site. Ensure you are registered for smooth access. Attendees on site can also participate in these events through their mobile devices. For those participating in lectures, we've prepared a special gift after each lecture during Q&A session. Ten participants who ask the best questions selected from both live chat and on-site queries will receive WAPIC Handy Oral Irrigator as a gift. We encourage participation from both our international and local attendees as interpretation services are available for questions in English. In the afternoon, there will be a discussion. Before our discussion session this afternoon, we invite you to participate in a brief survey about short and narrow implants. Please scan the QR code displayed on the current screen or use the one at the entrance banner of the auditorium during the break. Online viewers will receive a text with a survey link for your convenience. The results of your participation will be incorporated into the discussion, enriching the session. Now we will begin Awesome Meeting 2023, celebrating today's event. Hong Soo Yeon, Vice President of Korean Dental Association, will give a, a opening speech. Let's welcome Vice President Hong to the stage. Greetings. I am Hong Soo Yeon, the Vice President of Korean Dental Association. First, I'd like to extend my heartful, heartfelt congratulations on the commencement of the Austin's 2023 Seoul event. I have been closely associated with the inception and development of Austin, especially through the AIC Education Center for Dental, Dental Education. I am aware that Austin's growth into a global company leading the world of dentistry has been grounded on the interest and affection for every sector of dental community, including dentists, dental hygienists, and dental technicians. 
It's a history for which we are sincerely grateful. The world is changing rapidly. Dentistry has also entered the era of digitalization and AI. The hospital I work at is in the process of transitioning from the analog to digital dentistry. And we're almost to completing the process. Fortunately, Austin has been part of this journey. I really appreciate this. In this era of super aging society, the role of dentistry is extremely important, as is the social responsibility of uh, corporations. Austin has progressed with a corporate spirit that precedes the times. I believe that Austin will stand tall as a company that significantly contributes uh, to enhancing our society. Once again, I congratulate Austin 2023 Seoul for leading the way forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Hong Soo Yun. Let's give her another big round of applause. This is being broadcasted online from Austin Implant Head Office Auditorium, Austin Meeting 2023. So, the first uh, viewer event for online participants. Please uh, join through the pop up window that is displayed on the demo site. The results of the lucky draw will be announced at the end of each uh, each session by sending coffee coupon text the messages uh, now it's a uh, 9 12 also the meeting 2023 Seoul is broadcasted live online to overseas countries and let's begin the first session the head of Seoul National University Dental Hospital, Dr. Lee Yong Woo, will chair the session. He graduated from UCLA Dental Research Institute. To research, uh, he was the researcher, and um, he was a professor at Periodontal Department of Seoul National University, uh, visiting professor at UCSF, a periodontal department in the U.S., head of implant center at Seoul National University Dental School. Currently, he is the head of uh, Seoul National University Dental School. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Lee Yong Mu from Seoul National University. So um, there are participants here and uh, who are participating online. Awesome Implant Meeting 2023. Congratulations. The first uh, speaker I want to introduce, he's going to talk about the clinical availability of a short implant, the rescue implant, the regular implant. Uh, let me invite Dr. Sun Young Hui from Ijun Dental Office. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Greetings. I am Dr. Son Young Hui. I have my private practice in Kyunpo. I am the first speaker of the session, and I feel very honored to open the session. The topic that I'm going to talk about is the clinical availability of short implants. Before we begin, as I was preparing my lecture, I looked at past photos. In 2013, I first participated in Austin meeting, Seoul meetings. I started my participation in 2013, and uh, I think I was much fatter then. And now it's become 2023, and now I'm opening the session. At the time, 
Professor Lee Yong Woo was also the speaker. Professor Lee Yong Woo, you're the moderator today, but you were also speaker at the time. So I'm participating in to the awesome meeting for my 11th time. Short implants can be viewed in various ways. Clinically, from where, what do we consider short implant? There are many different journals available. Some view less than 10 millimeters. It was viewed as such at one point and others view less than 8.5. The length of the implant is decreasing. At one point, we consider what is less than 8 millimeters is short implant and less than 6 millimeters as short length implant. So currently, we view less than 6 millimeter as short implant in Korea. What length do we consider as a short length implant? In general, Implant less than 7 millimeter is considered, from 7 millimeters, we consider this as short implants. This has to do with the KFDA's decision as well as the unique Korean situation. Personally, I view less than 7 millimeters from 8. 5, I consider it as regular length, and from 7 millimeters, I consider it as short. So how much stability does a short length implant have? There are many literature, and I want to introduce two meta-analysis report. Short implants, is it clinically really visible? In 2016, this uh, study was reviewed and 8 millimeters and less and eight millimeters and over were compared. Survival rate, marginal bone loss were com reviewed. Complication and prosthetic failures were reviewed. The difference was not statistically significant. So you can use the short implants frequently placed in posterior area This is a more recent study in 2021. The, this viewed short implants as less than six millimeters, and it was compared with longer implants of over eight millimeters. Uh, success rate, marginal bone loss, prosthesis complication rates were compared. If you look at this study, one to three year follow up showed no significant difference between short and regular length implants, but at five years post-op, there were some changes in terms of long-term stability. Short implants do have some downside. If you look before, uh, below that, in the case of complications, when bone augmentations were done at five years, there was no significant difference. The placement of extra short implants, which is less than six millimeters, could be an acceptable alternative to longer implants in atrophic posterior arch. Currently, the consensus has been formed like this. Clinically speaking, when can we use short implants? Largely put, we can summarize it into three. We can use it for rescue implants for field implants. Also, it can be an alternative to avoid a large amount of bone augmentation. We can simplify the bone augmentation procedure. Furthermore, it can be an implant for avoiding anatomical limits. Clinically, I think we use short implants mostly for these cases. If you look at different cases, this is a situation that we come across quite frequently. Four implants were placed in the lower right, and peri-implantitis were observed in 45 and 46. There are many reasons for peri-implantitis. The reason, in my opinion, was absence of supracrystal attachment and there was problems with long-term stability. If you take a look at CT, 
the implant body, about half of it, there is about half of bone loss. Let's look at clinical situation. Implant was removed. As we all know, we follow the uh, established procedure. EFR kit is used to, to minimize damage to heart and soft tissue. And it has been removed like this. The flap was reflected. And after checking the site, the implants were placed. It, when placing implant in a place where implant failed, after loading, more remodeling occurs. Personally, I try to place the implant apically. I prefer subcrestal placement. In this case, in number 45 and 46, a TS3 4.5 by 7 millimeter implant was placed and the subcrestal placement was done, but remodeling compensation was necessary. Xenograft was used for GBR and collagen membrane was used. GBR was done. In periodontally unfavorable situation, when extraction is done and when doing replacements for failed implants, the amount of remodeling is expected to be more compared to normal case. Hence, the implant should be placed in the remaining bone as much as possible and larger amount of bone graft is recommended. This was how surgery was completed. If you look at panoramic image, when we enlarge it, it's like this. The existing implant, its vertical position compared with it, it's placed much more apically, and I think it's better way to do it to receive secure long-term stability. With healing, gingival recession, or contraction may occur, and we need to place it five millimeters a deeper co in consideration of that. This is post op CT view. This is post op three months prosthesis has been have been delivered as shown. This is post op three months. Short implants are used most conventionally like this. This is a follow up five years two months follow up. There is no major problems and bone level is stable. This is second case which requires significant amount of bone augmentation. Number 36 was missing and if you look at the CT, it's like this. When we enlarge the image, when we are to place implant in this bridge, we can make many different choices. In general, septal margin is evaluated and we determine what length of implant we're going to use. Uh, the references is the top part. This is the lingual plate here. Or using this, we can place the implant and do GBR to regenerate the buccal bone. Or we can reference the buccal bone level and place the implant up to here and do minimal bone augmentation. We can make these two choices, as we all know. The first choice is the difficult way. Second is an easier way. I chose the second option. I used a guide, five by seven millimeter implant was determined to it was placed apically and I referenced the lowest point of the bridge placement was easy using the guide and following the buckle bone level implant was placed if I have made the first choice I think it would not have been a bad option however the I think you may choose depending on your situation and the prognosis may differ. And this was the choice that I've made. And this is post up three months after prosthesis delivery. And the results look stable during follow up. Then, would there have been another choice available? I don't think that we will be able to receive, achieve same result every single time. What kind of uh, results would we face? In 2011, I placed the implant to myself, extraction was done. 
socket preservation, bone graft was done, and prosthesis was delivered in 2015 November. If you look at standard image, crestal marginal bone loss was observed. If you look at CT, it's more devastating. Buccal bone loss occurred in 2015 November, and plant was removed. Bone graft was done again at this point. I used non resorbable membrane and used open membrane technique and did socket preservation. After one month, the remembering was removed. In this way, bone augmentation was done. And it, such tedious process was done in 2016 April. Implant was placed. And in 2017, it looks like this. Buccal augmentation procedure was done. When we do regeneration, we rely rather than relying on residual bone when we rely on residual bone the predictability can be reduced we need to place it in the end we end up with implant more buccally placed implants and we end up with more devastating results and i hope you don't come across these cases uh, I think it is better to choose a safer choice. In 2017, March, prosthesis was delivered. June 2023, the no major problems have been observed. In this way, when we want to avoid a significant amount of bone augmentation, we can use in short length implants intentionally. As shown here, this is the conventional method from the anatomical limit. When it is a very close to anatomical limit, we end up using short implants. Number 35 and number 36 missing. And the patient had atrophic ridge. Cast kit, cast drill was used. And uh, short the drilling was done following the conventional way. Cortical perforation was done. GBR was done. 4.5 by 7 millimeter and 4.5 by 6 millimeter implant was placed. Uh, P titanium reinforced PTFE membrane was used. You can use uh, this method. I think this is the conventional method uh, in utilizing short length implant. And this is the typical clinical case. This was how case was completed. In the case where immediate implant placement cannot be done, as shown when the occlusion is very bad and perio condition is very bad, extractions can be done. Socket preservation would be done first. In this case, within the socket, FDBA cortical bone was used, and on the outside, AOS collagen was used. In the case of AOS collagen, it's circular shaped, and if you divide that, on the top, convex ridge form can be maintained and socket preservation can be done in this way. So I've used two different graft materials and I prefer this method. Osgai, the collagen membrane was used for coverage and surgery was completed in this case. As we prep the site, we were able to regenerate only limited amount and uh, if you do not consider patient morbidity, even if you do GBR. But in order to do minimally invasive uh, treatment, uh, I chose this option. Three short implants were placed using a guide. The most mesial implant was not many implant and I used a 4.5 by 6 millimeter and 4.5 by 6 millimeter the implant in the middle the primary stability was not good so it was removed and this is post of five months implants were placed as shown in number seven 4.5 by 6 millimeter implant was placed this was how it was this is the canal as uh, shown, when there is a limited vertical space, you can utilize guide to place the implants. Then you'd be able to minimize error caused by contraction. In the case of this patient, compared with the treatment planning, 
you can see that implants were placed in fairly accurate positions. This is post-op eight months following conventional method, prosthesis was delivered. In this way, in order to avoid the anatomical limits, you can use light short implants. We can largely divide the situation into three. When this is used, what kind of considerations should we make? In 2019, in a journal, 360 short implants, so 460 short implants were placed in 199 patients and were followed up up to nine years. After nine year follow up, the primary cause of implant failure was periimplantitis. Out of 199 patients, so 19 implants failed out of 460 short implants. Compared with male patients, success rate was higher in female patients. The most influential factors were smoking and history of uh, periodontitis prior to extraction. These factors had negative influence on the implant success. Systemic health and others did not have major influence on the success of short implants. That was the conclusion. The use of short implants as a predictable long-term treatment option was acceptable. When we use a short implants, in most journals, short implants show no statistically different success rate. So it's a viable option. What precautions should we need to take? I think we need to look for three. First is we need to use wide diameter implant if possible. Second, we need to do accurate drilling and placement. Because bone level of bone engagement is limited, we need to do accurate placement. After loading, marginal bone loss needs to be minimized as much as possible when we use short implants. When we look at another journal, this is a journal from 2015, and clinical outcomes of single short implants less than seven millimeters in the mandibular was reviewed. Uh, wide implant. Why am I showing this? There are different journals, five diameter and six diameter uh, short implants were compared. Uh, in terms of success rate, there's no major difference, but in terms of primary stability and secondary stability, six millimeter diameter showed as much better ISQ value. So you, in order to get a more safe result, you need to use a wider diameter implant. You can get a better result using this. And that was what was anticipated second. You need to do accurate drilling and you need to do precise pr placement. My recommendation is to use cast drill or guide a system which is even more accurate. You'll be able to place your implants in a very convenient manner. In number 47, about 6.3 millimeters of residual bone was observed considering septimization. From septum, 2 to 5 millimeter of drilling was possible. Cast drill was used. Implant drilling was done. SS3, five by six millimeter implant was placed uh, after it looks it's not fully in but actually it's fully in prosthesis delivery was done in this way when castrol is used castrol does not have wide dimension it does not have stop and rest one millimeter so you can do accurate to drilling Hence, it is recommended to use a castrol not just in the upper, but in lower posterior as well. It's a very useful tool. 
in order to do accurate implant placement, you need to use the guide system in number 26. It was missing. In the case of this patient, CAS was used. I don't think that it's going to be a problem if we do socket lifting. A regular diameter implant could have been placed, but the patient refused that. Inevitably, I said I will not do sinus lift. 1485 kit was used for this patient, and this is a guide system dedicated for short implants. 5 by 7 millimeter implant was placed. Uh, it will contact the sinus floor. Surgery is not really special. 1485 kit. It's an awesome kit dedicated for 4 to 8 millimeter. There's no rest, and uh, Y dimension is about 0 0.8 millimeter to 1 millimeters, but it's it does not exist in 1485 kit, so you can just uh, do vertical drilling as much as shown. One millimeter can be significant in sig certain cases, but if you use this kit, you'll be able to do drilling accurately. One four a five kit was used. When you use guide, the results are the same. Uh, the post up three months, the prosthesis was delivered, uh, and this is two year follow up. There is no major problem. So when placed in the upper, in the case of stability, Doc Professor Kim Ki Sang will elaborate on this. Third, as for short implants, after loading, marginal bone loss occurs inevitably. That may be the views of some, but because it, it has a short length, even with a small marginal bone loss, short implants can be affected more significantly. As shown here, after loading, as shown, in number 47, implant, peri-implantitis occurred. Uh, this was removed uh, and re-implantation was done uh, on the mesial side. Uh, there was significant calculus and uh, I think it's my fault. After implant removal, EFR kit uh, could be used for implant removal to minimize damage to hard and soft tissue. After that, This is the situation. Implant was placed. TS3 5 by 7 millimeter implant was placed in the same context. A remod significant remodeling was anticipated in choosing graph material using xenograft or alloplastic as recommended for bone augmentation. Xenograft was used, a culture membrane was used as well. Wound stabilization was done and surgery was completed. When you use short implant after implant placement, rather than just moving away, if the ridge is not favorable, then we need to consider potential marginal bone loss ahead. This is post of five months, prosthesis delivery was done, and this was how case was completed. This is pre or post of CT. Consolidation is not fully done, but you can consider bone level to be like this. I'll give you my conclusion. Short implants with less, with length less than eight millimeters are considered predictable treatment for posterior jaws. In the case of four millimeters, I try not to use them. If you look at the journals that are available, these length implants can provide predictable treatment for posterior jaws. Not just special implants, but clinically, we can use them regularly. And for success of that, first, as mentioned, we need to use a wider diameter implant, bigger than five millimeter diameter. You need to use a larger diameter implant. Second, you need to do accurate drilling and uh, do precise placement. CAS can be used or guide system can be utilized. It will be of major help. A third, we need to consider potential marginal bone loss and uh, we need to place the implant in residual bone. Also, you need to do soft and hard tissue augmentation. 
That is the recommendation. So this has been my clinical experience, and I wanted to give you my recommendation for a higher successful short implant use. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Son Young Yi. It was a really meaningful lecture. Thank you once again. Questions about the Dr. Son's lecture will be addressed after a second lecture is provided. Let me introduce the second speaker. It will be delivered by Dr. Kim Gi Sung, who is with the Namsung Namsang Dental Clinic. Okay, the topic is the logic of short implant. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. I am Dr. Kim Gi-sung from Namsang Dental Clinic. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I would like to thank uh, Chair, Chairman uh, Che Gi-sung and uh, people in Austin. And I would also like to thank participants online and here in person. I'm going to talk about the logic, the rationale of using short implants clinically. Contents. First question, do you need short implants in our clinic? Practice, yes, absolutely, yes. Short implants. The definition of uh, short implants was uh, delivered by Dr. Son. I believe uh, we use them in the cases like this when there is a lack of a vertical bone and when we want to avoid anatomical limitation at the top. Implant, an implant is a place. Uh, in the maxilla, I believe uh, they showed the pretty good results in the maxilla. In many cases, in the posterior region, in the mandible, uh, when a vertical bone is lacking, a bone augmentation is done and uh, an implant is placed. But it takes time and it is painful for the patients and uh, um, it is costly. But using short implants, if we have a good clinical results, we can um, approach this in a more simpler way. Short implants are uh, recognized when a grafting can be when um, with simplified graft grafting, when opening is limited, implant drilling. Placing of implant can be challenging. Uh, short ones can be used. And there are various uh, surgical kits available uh, for safe uh, placement. Uh, guided surgery can be performed, not only in the mandible. In the maxilla, we can have a successful results. In the surgical process, uh, there are many drills with laser marks, and uh, I believe this is not safe to do the drilling. Basically, anatomical structures, when we are close to such structures, we need drills with the stoppers. Austin, 
uh, provides the stopper uh, drills and the various uh, kit drills for short implants. This is a simple case um, where a short implant was used. This can be controversial. Number 36, um, the prosthesis uh, was uh, shaking and the implant fractured. In the mandible, at a lower on uh, one quarter position, it broke and the rest is also it also integrated to remove uh, the implant that tray fiber can be used and uh, there's an uh, it is close to the lingual concavity so it can be dangerous so in that case a um, short implant was used to address the problem and I heard that they can be there can be a problematic but uh, let me introduce this case. Recently, I use KS implants quite a lot, 5.5 by 6 millimeter implants. So it is placed like this. And the seven weeks, post of seven weeks, ISQ was 90 and 89, pretty high. So scan body was connected and the one piquet came abutment was used, and abutment level impression was taken. ER type prosthesis was uh, completed yesterday, and uh, the prosthesis uh, uh, the prosthesis was uh, done two months after the placement. So you can see the day of placement, post up seven weeks, ISQ values, and the prosthetic work was done. Uh, one piquet came abutment was fabricated. So this is the uh, final result. The remaining implant remnant can create a problem, but it was very difficult to remove uh, the remnant of uh, the implant. So short implant was the answer. So even though you have some volume of bone, the screw hole should be drilled at the center, and if you want to consider the opposing tooth, the lingual concavity, and we sometimes we have to go through the lingual concavity, especially um, at the mandible. So that invades anatomical structure, which is very dangerous. So short implants can be used to avoid uh, the anatomical structures, and if we can have a correct axis of implant, like on the left. I believe this can be addressed in a simple way. So this is the CT result. Short implants can be um, used in various clinical cases. Regrettably, um, the Korean FDA allows a six millimeter implant when diameter is five and then the length should be seven for four point five diameter implants so um, there's a no four point six diameter implants available I believe um, these need to be approved by Korean FDA MFDS what do you think about this panorama four implants are placed and that this is rather awkward. I I hope you understand that short implants play a very important role. The four implants are routinely selected uh, in terms of the implant length in my practice. So uh, the zygoma implant and the very short implants, uh, the various implants are available in the market. And then um, you, what would be your shortest one? Five by five is the length of uh, the implant that I choose. Uh, sometimes a uh, short implant success can be questioned. If I don't do it, I 
am doubtful about the success. Seven millimeter implant uh, is highly demanded in the mandible. Five by five, five by six implants were placed in these cases. So in the mandible, short implants, six millimeter or shorter implant cases, uh, splinted and the single ones in the posterior region are included. Success of the short implants uh, is also observed on the maxilla. And I'm accumulating photos like this. I like short implants. Uh, clinically, they show very high success rate. So uh, if you use a short implants uh, in clinical practice, there are many advantages. Uh, there are some things that, that can be reduced, and there are some things that can be increased. The surgical difficulty can be decreased. Vertical augmentation is a challenging procedure. Uh, the surgical failure is quite high, so we can avoid that, that very challenging surgery. So uh, patients at discomfort, including pain and swelling, would be reduced, and um, complications from surgery and uh, it can be reduced. The surgery time can be reduced as well, and the cost on the part of patient would be in decreased. Safety, on the other hand, is increased. Guided surgery is done, but um, that ensures a safe uh, surgery even near the anatomical structures, and it increases patient's confidence, and the survival rate would increase. And money, the last item, when we do surgery, and we can earn less money, but with a confidence on the part of the patients, we can get more patients. So eventually, it would contrib contribute to the management of the clinic. So c considering factors of short implants uh, problems, and for various reasons, the short implants are avoided. So let's have a look at the problems associated with uh, short implants. Short implants are short, so initial stability may be lacking. So these are from Austin, various implant surgical kits. All the surgical kits have a stopper no, drills for short implants with the stoppers are available. If you look at uh, the bottom ones for guided surgery, from summer 2018, I have been using um, the guided design and the use it for all implant placement. One guide kit, short type drills are available using the guide, a vertical osteotomy limitations can be overcome. Very safe, six millimeter drills. They are not in the basic kit. This is optional, you need to buy it separately. Uh, recently, I prefer to use a 1485 kit from four to a five millimeter implants, as Dr. Son said, wide dimension, one millimeter wide dimension is uh, not included. So it, this is very safe, especially for the mandible. So with the safe drills, if you use a guide, placement of short implants, you can control the interference between the implant and bone, so or it can be used uh, without a problem. One for 85 with kit it does not have wide dimensions, so they can uh, go near uh, the anatomical structure and it is safe. I don't go as deep as this, but one for 85 drill compared to other drills is very safe. This is uh, similar to cast drill, but 
uh, the drill efficiency is better than that. It has more efficient cutting capability. So in the mandible, one for 85 drill proves to be very efficient. Next, the bone to implant the contact area. It is a short, so the contact area is uh, not sufficient. And uh, occlusal load in the posterior region, can it withstand the load? As Dr. Son said, currently, Austin um, provides six millimeter or longer ones um, available. So short implant wide diameter with wide diameters are available. I prefer to use a five by six. And if you use uh, this kind of implants, BIC can be obtained. And in the limited surface, in order to widen bone to implant the contact, a surface plays an important role. Uh, this is um, the surface treatment to, uh, from Austin. As a surface, BA surface is uh, one step above that, and so it surfaces even um, higher than BA. It is hydrophilic, and um, this is a very efficient uh, surface uh, treatment. UV lighted treatment is not necessary. Hydrophilic capability can be uh, maintained uh, years after the glucose, and the HEPIS application is made for hydrophilic characteristics of uh, SOI surface. I believe this can address BIC problem. SOI surface, uh, I have it in my mouth, the KS with a surface. Crown implant ratio must be discussed. A quadrant four two teeth are missing and short implants are placed and prosthesis were delivered in my clinical practice and in many papers. Uh, this is different from uh, natural to the prosthesis. Implant crown ratio uh, one to two, one to three. When it comes to implants, uh, there's uh, not many complications and that's uh, how I feel in my clinical practice as well. So clinical crown length is longer here. Mechanical complications such as screw loosening can occur more, but individually, a radical uh, regular screw retightening is provided to overcome the unfavorable crown to implant ratio. Next, the bone loss can occur in the short implant may fail, that's our concern. So Austin provide short implants, five by six, five by five, five by four. So the bevel design was developed. My principle in placing implants is that all implant surfaces should be in bone. That's my principle. Then the bone loss from short implants can be prevented on the right hand side of five by five. The bevel part is not exposed to gingiva and I make it sure everything is in bone and there are, there are many uh, different implants and uh, they need to be placed subcrestly then a bone loss is not a concern. Five by six, five by five, five by four. Uh, actual, actually, the length of the implant is 6.2 millimeters, and then the bone is not flat. They are convex, so the bevel portion, uh, the, the bevel would have some more bone growing there, so I use a five by five quite a lot, uh, and all the surface of uh, surface of implant should be in bone. So uh, five by five, a short implant case. This is a um, place 1.5 millimeter deeper. I will talk about this later. 
a short implant um, success rate in my practice is quite high because um, it is uh, the they are placed the deeper. The short implant, uh, do we have long-term data? And uh, many papers are discussing about this. And each paper, the multi-center data is demonstrated. I'm not going to quote a paper. I am going to talk about uh, based on my clinical data. This is a case uh, more than 10 years uh, before, five by six implant uh, in quadrant one. After 10 years, so you can see the clinical photo and x-ray. There is uh, no problem. And I am, uh, I will show you uh, the clinical uh, data again. So we have sufficient long-term data. Uh, as the implants are short, initial stability is a concern, and early and immediate loading. Um, this can be questioned. The accurate drilling can ensure in initial stability, excellent surface. It can facilitate also integration, so we don't need to be really concerned about this. Eight implants were placed, and in the anterior region provisional was delivered immediately. The short implants in the lower posterior region where bone quality is not good. And uh, when short implants are placed with sinus lift, uh, the healing period is required. Uh, but uh, if a short implants is placed in D2 bone, immediate loading can be done, I believe. Dr. Son talked about many clinical cases focusing on mandible. And let me show you the maxilla short implant cases. In the mandible, the sinus lift process is utilizing various drills, and they show pretty high success rate. But uh, there are some cases where sinus lift cannot be performed. If um, the vertical bone amount is five to six millimeters, and if there is uh, inflammation in the sinus, and unless we control the sinus, sinus graft and the sinus lift would be very challenging to do. So uh, clinicians would be confused. In this case, I use a short implant so that uh, we don't invade into the sinus. In this case, if you cannot trust uh, short implants, you cannot do this. If you do not use uh, short implants, this can become a very hard case. So this is, if you look at this, one guide kit is used in one cast in the maxilla. In the mandible, one for 85 uh, should be used often. And uh, I will also show you this is used in the maxilla as well. At number 16, in this case, an implant was planned. Sinus, as you can see, is cloudy for unknown reasons. So in many cases, uh, sinus lift is successful, but I didn't want to go into sinus here. So one guided kit, short implanted drill, six millimeter drill, needs to be used, and the drills are optionally purchased. So through various steps, tissue punch was uh, made, initial drill was made, 3.5, 4.5 by 6 uh, drill was used in order to get um, uh, initial stability. Under drilling was done up to 4.5 millimeters. TS3 soy surface implant was used. Uh, this is the, my favorite surface of implants. So this is how the surgery was completed. It is very close to the sinus floor, but it didn't go into the sinus floor. So this is my routine protocol. After six weeks after 
implant placement. ISQ is measured. If it is 70 or more, I use a scan body. Uh, one pick fabrication is started. So in this case, for of six weeks, the scan body was connected and um, one pick was uh, fabricated at the abutment level. Uh, another impression is taken. A full zirconia ER type crown was completed uh, two months after the placement, and it is used pretty well, too, uh, the usual protocol. Loading protocol would vary from doctor to doctor. My routine protocol is that ISQ is measured uh, post of six uh, weeks before final prosthesis. Case two, using one CAS, number seven, in quadrant two, bone loss was observed and it was extracted. Bone quality is not very good if you look at the right hand side, but the sinus was clean. So sinus lift was not done, but the sinus floor was used for initial stability. Bone quality was poor, so I used just the one drill after tissue punch. So three. 0.6 by 7. One case drill was used before placing an implant. 5.5 by 7 millimeter implant was placed. Punch and 3.6 by 7 millimeter one case drill was used before placing an implant. 5.5 um, is frequently used in my cases. 5.5 compared to 5.0 or 6.0, the thread depth is bigger, so it is easier to get initial stability. Flapless implant placement. After two months, the bone quality was poor, so ISQ was measured. It was over 70, so in a standard way, scan body was used. One bit cat cam abutment was fabricated and impression was taken. Full zirconia ER type was completed. Clinical implant crown ratio, as I said before, it is big, but there is no clinical problem. The last case, this is on my favorite one for 85 kit was used. A short implant case in quadrant two in the posterior region. There was inflammation in the sinus. A sinus lift or graft was very challenging to perform. But a seven millimeter, six millimeter of a bone was available. So in this case, implant studio was used. The guide template was designed. So in a standard way, a flapless approach was used. The drill sequence was like this. Uh, to avoid the sinus perforation, I started with the short drill. So punch in one for 85 initial drill and the four millimeter drill. Ultimately, five millimeter drill was used, uh, followed by osteotomy and TS3 soy implant was placed. In this case, 26 and 27. And uh, he, he, it was healed. He, the H4 means um, the healing height was of four millimeters usually. I use a four millimeter healing abutment, but uh, the vertical bone was limited, so I couldn't go subcrestal too much. So uh, I used the four millimeter healing abutment. It touches the sinus floor, but didn't go into the sinus. Next, post of 10 weeks, I waited a little bit longer. I ask you was so for 70, so a scan body was used for scanning and CAT cam abutment the one was um, used for prosthesis. In the maxilla, I showed you three cases. Uh, there are uh, so many successful uh, short implant uh, success cases in the mandible. As Dr. Son said before, uh, seven millimeter or less is considered as short implants on the, from 2001 to this year i placed 
1066 short implant, 7 millimeter, 940A, and 5 or 6 millimeters, 118 millimeters, and 18 of them failed by region. There are some differences between maxilla and mandible. So uh, 6 to 4 is the ratio mandible to maxilla. If you look at the types of uh, Austin implants, the KS has been available not, uh, for a long time. Uh, and the use of KS is increasing. Um, all of them have been successful and the implant failures, 18 failed, and uh, two short implants failed. Seven millimeter is uh, rather difficult, but the six millimeter or shorter than that, uh, seven to three is the ratio between mandible and maxilla. The short implants were used as a single cases. In many cases, not all of them were splinted. Single short implants um, can be performed. So the uh, number of implants I used for the last 10 years, and uh, we have um, more such cases. So 118 up to September. So uh, I use uh, more and more short implants in the practice. Um, length 7 millimeter and uh, length under 6 millimeters. Implant survival rate was uh, the same, 98.3%. Uh, and the survival rate is uh, quite high. Conclusion. As uh, Dr. Son said in the morning, if you look at uh, the short implant cases, the success rate is very high. So clinical use of short implants, if they are used properly, it has a very good uh, prognosis and uh, predictable promising long-term outcomes. So proper drilling and the proper short implants uh, need to be used and you don't really need to be concerned about uh, short implants and we can have very good long-term outcome. So I hope you get a very good treatment outcome with the short implants. Thank you. Q&A session. First, uh, let's open the floor for questions. My name is Kim Myung-ne. I have a practice uh, through uh, two doctors. I realized uh, the usefulness of short implants. My question is, at this point in time, What's your most favorite uh, implants that you said, the soy surface of 5.5 millimeters? So at this time, at this point in time, what's your most favorite uh, short implants for the mandible and maxilla? Uh, if you talk about TSKS, uh, soy or other osteum implants, uh, then I would have more confidence. I don't really distinguish mandible from maxilla. Short implants, uh, uh, personally, I delivered uh, the short implants presentation, but I um, try to use the long implants as much as possible. When uh, there is a necessity for short implants, then I go for uh, the short implant at seven millimeters. So. Actually, 8.5 millimeter implant is my most favorite length. In the mandible, 7 millimeter is okay, but in the maxilla, still, I, I am still concerned about uh, single 
short implant up to seven millimeters uh, that's uh, they can be used so you don't distinguish a specific implant type right right today we are talking about the short and narrow implants so we are focusing on short implants if I place an implant at lower number seven if short implant is uh, at the implant that I place there is a KS 4.5 by 8.5 when a vertical bone is sufficient uh, I prefer to use 8.5 millimeter long implants if a short implant should be used uh, currently I would prefer uh, KS 5.5 uh, millimeter so surface thank you very much for the clear answer uh, so uh, continuing from the previous question short implants and based on your clinical experience 8.5 millimeter length is sufficient if you place it subcrestally so that will not have a perimplantitis if we use a 10 uh, 13 millimeter implants so we don't need them uh, what's your comment 13 millimeter implant for initial stability um, this can be used but at this point in time I don't think we need, really need a 13 millimeter implant six is better than five seven is better than six and 8.5 is better than seven but I don't think 10 is better than 8.5 millimeter thank you very much for the good comment Would you introduce yourself first before asking a question? And I am at the OCM Implant of Brazil manager, and we have Professor Josephi who is um, with us today. So I um, received the question. Uh, there's a patient uh, who has a heavy uh, tooth grinding habit uh, can we use uh, short implant is it verified is it indicated for uh, tooth grinding patients bruxism question basically uh, in many in any implant cases patients with a power function we have lower success rate based on my experience wide diameter regular implants are used and in even in multiple cases due to bruxism I experienced the failures so when severe bruxism is observed the stability of uh, short implant in such cases is questionable and we need to study it even further and when proxism is uh, severe is it possible to use uh, short implants maybe no is the answer uh, I have a little bit different opinion in my cases on the proxism patients uh, when I didn't determine proxism uh, before I choose implants so in limited cases a six millimeter bone and the uh, uh, implant is placed there then uh, a problem can occur but as you saw before if a um, short implant is a one millimeter subcrestal and the five millimeter implants would not be a problem uh, the in terms of a clinical technique uh, not screw type uh, but a screw hole a screw hole is used for screw retightening to avoid the complications. Uh, in bruxism patient, um, the prosthesis can break, but implant itself would be intact. 
Thank you. Any other questions? My name is Kim tae -sung. I'm from Gangseo-gu. Crown implant ratio. Can we use the traditional crown implant ratio? If the ratio is not very good, if we use the short implants, and uh, how can how long can we guarantee uh, the survival rate of the short implants there? When you talk to patients, usually, um, according to papers, implant failures and prosthetic failures are separate. Implant um, uh, prosthesis can last uh, usually ten years. And so the prosthesis needs to be replaced um, after 10 years, and implant can last longer. Regarding implant crown ratio, I am i don't think it's really a concern. I keep saying this, the mechanical complication can occur. So every year or three years, I deliver screw retightening. If you keep doing it, uh, you don't need to be concerned about that. Sinus graft, uh, it was high, but implant was short. So, why did you do it? What? What's that? Uh, the sinus graft was uh, voluminous, high, but you used the short implant, seven millimeter implant. Sinus graft was done, and. I believe Dr. Sony is the same. A 10 millimeter would be placed, but uh, with a sinus lift, I believe a 7 millimeter is good enough. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Chang Dook. My question is for uh, Dr. Kim. Uh, short implants are a very good option in the aging society. Uh, Dr. Son showed us uh, the mandibular cases, and I have been using them with a good result during drilling. As uh, the Dr. Kim showed us very good uh, patient cases, uh, and uh, it was placed uh, ideally for prosthesis. And um, short implants can withstand uh, in such cases. But many patients do not have uh, such good conditions. In many cases, a vertically resorbed uh, bone, especially in the maxilla, if you drill in type 4, it is very soft. So do you still use short implants in very soft bone? And according to a Strauman a paper, short implants can work, but we have a different uh, the food chewing habit. So the situation would be very different in Korea. So if you look at the clinical data, I believe it was because you place them in good conditions, good places. So uh, they they can be misleading uh, because we have very soft bone. Regarding the survival survival rate, the 98 percent of the survival rate is um, my statistics with my cases. So, if you gain experience and um, more and more implants are placed in Korea, number seven in the maxilla is also uh, the case we experience. So um, sometimes, uh, whether short or long, in some bone, we suspect the success of implant, whatever implant may be. So uh, the short implants were placed where those were indicated without um, I have been successful because I carefully chose the sites for indications. And when six millimeter bone is available, I don't use um, the implants because implants cannot be placed subcrestally. So I checked the indications very carefully. So uh, 
you're right. We cannot use the short implants in some bone cases where they are not indicated. So that's very important. So oh, that uh, needs to be stressed. Another question. So in the upper posterior region, when bone is uh, poor, uh, condensation can be provided, and uh, or dense bar, dense bar can be used to to make a bone dense. What do you think about those approaches? When the four bone in the posterior region, I don't think a denser bone or other things can make the difference. I use a short implants, sinusitis. Um, it was, it was because uh, that a lesion was there. One cast usually is used to, to do sinus lift uh, than using short implants. Uh, rather than bone condensing, bone graft needs to be done. Sinus lift is uh, my preferred approach. So I hope that answers the question sufficiently. Do you have any more questions? We have some more time left. Just one more question. This question is for Dr. Son, and my name is Oh Young Hak. I am from Songpa area. D4 bone or D3 bone? Oh, the bone is poor. So with under drilling only, can we place implants or in poor bone? The threads cannot go in straight down. So, how much under drilling is needed clinically? Another thing, sinusitis is observed, and um, sinus flow bone is important for initial stability. Engaging cortical bone. Can it be fatal uh, for a sinusitis patient? First, as Dr. Uh, Chang asked the question, this is similar to that question. Um, in D3 or D4 bone, uh, bone compaction is not really high. Primary stability is low and secondary stability would go even further according to literature if you use a compacted bone under drilling can it be an alternative to that uh, according to the papers that i've read um, one st stage two stage um, surgical options the one stage has a higher success rate, and I agree with that. The patient-dependent factors is something that we cannot do anything about, and the success rate can go down, and uh, that's something we cannot really um, make an improvement. Uh, under drilling, based on Austin products, uh, the one step under drilling can be used. What was the second question? Cortical. Yes, the bicortical fixation is what I prefer in the sinus. So the cases I showed you, if it touches uh, the sinus floor, if we do not use a guide, the rebound effect they can occur, especially in the mandible. So short implants, how can they be used? I showed you the cases, but clinically, sinus floor engagement should be used to increase the initial stability. But when there is a pathologic condition in the sinus, even it is not the case, implant surface, um, if it come in contact with the bone, 
I believe uh, there is a more unfavorable effect than the favorable result. So I believe uh, we entertained the sufficient questions. And uh, let me ask a question, an online question. I am a periodontist, Dr. Kim. You always um, uh, position implants in bone and Dr. Stone in the first case. Is so um, in the failed implant case, you place the implant very, very deep, and you also do the augmentation. So the, the upper part will all be sulcus, and it may vary from prosthesis to prosthesis, but uh, Dr. Kim said uh, you do the retightening every one to three years, and the instruction to patients would be important. The residual gingiva sulcus is uh, what I'm concerned about. So what's your experience? What's your take on that? So the, this is a frequently asked question. Um, my clinical criteria is that tissue attachment, a long junctional attachment, basically a long junctional epithelium longer than six millimeters is not something I aim for. At the time of surgery, the implant vertical soft tissue volume so after a year, the volume would be decreased more than I expected. So if you consider that, uh, I prefer to position implant in uh, deeper. But if it is too deep, if it is um, making six millimeter or more sulcus is not good, and they can cause uh, bone loss and peri-implantitis. So. Uh, that's uh, something I'm careful about. I have a slightly different opinion, and I join a study group, and uh, the prosthodontists and uh, the periodontists do uh, study there together, and uh, Suprocrestal tissue, when implant is placed deep, is considered as pocket. So if implant is placed deep, deep pocket is created. And um, placement uh, of implant deep is uh, uh, concerned, is a concern for them. All problems actually are derived from shallow implant placement, not deep implant placement. Uh, according to many papers, a subcrystal contour angle, or uh, some of them need to be considered. But unlike natural tooth, when implants are placed deep supracrystal tissue, if it is uh, tightly connected, I don't think it's a pocket. So in my cases, so 1.52 millimeters in bone and gingiva tissue four to five millimeters uh, down deep i place implants that's my routine thank you very much for your wonderful lecture regrettably we need to conclude this session due to constraint of time please give them a big round of applause And then we are going to select the best questioner. First, uh, the, from Brazil, we have a doctor, a periodontist. I don't remember his name, but uh, he wins the best questioner prize. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Thank you very much for f traveling from afar. On the third road, the second on the winner. I don't remember your name either. Thank you very much for the good question. 
So thank you very much for participating in session one. Uh, this concludes session one. Awesome meeting 2023. So meeting session one is concluded. And uh, let's um, give a big hand to Chair uh, Dr. Lee and two speakers. Online best questioner will be contacted individually. So the coffee coupon winners will be announced. 300 people will receive coffee coupons. So let's do the lucky draw right now. So many people have won the coffee coupons. Thank you and congratulations. Coffee coupons will be sent to you through text messages. And uh, please check the Denol site. If you are not lucky this time, there will be other chances later. So um, please enjoy lucky draws. So up to 10.50, we will have a break. On both sides of the auditorium, we have exhibition booths and rest space. And on the first floor, poster presentation and evaluation is going on. A profile photo zone is awaiting for you, and you're welcome. So we will come back here by 10.50. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
best cash uh, since its first project. Primary security. Uh, what is uh, your protocol for uh, my minimal uh, bone hate, residual bone hate? The minimal residual bone hate in my opinion is three millimeters because it's kind of easy for kids to use like six feet by a little or one millimeter but okay. Thank you very much for your uh, nice lecture. I'm the Associate Director of Harvard in the States. So for the special organization, that's our failure rate will increase.
라이브 소절이를 보러 오시는 거나 다름 없다고 생각합니다. 저희가 아무리 설명을 잘해도 무슨 소용이 있어요. 결국 그것이 어떻게 적용되는가를 보는 것에 세계의 많은 원장들이 원하십니다. 저는 그걸 일단 시작하면 현실성이 든게 어떻게 40분을 끝내는 분인지 몰라요. 정말 대단하다고 생각합니다. We will begin the second session of Awesome 2023 shortly. Please be seated. Plus 
is available in three colors, white, blue, and red. You can choose the color that best matches the ambience of your clinic. Introducing the upgraded P2 Plus with clearer images, shorter scanning time, and lower radiation dose. Selecting the right bone material by comparing it to the patient's existing bone quality and condition is crucial when expecting the satisfactory result from the GBR. Defects may occur on surgical parts such as the anterior maxillary sinus and ribs which will require bone graft material to facilitate the process of forming new bone osteogenesis while maintaining the bone volume. With that said, here is the Ostium Implant Zale Graft AR with phenomenal volume maintenance and osteogenesis. For bone graft materials, it is important to have a faster emollient detail. Similar to the human bone, Ayo's particles have a cancellous pore structure. The structural property of AR, when fully saturated with blood, significantly contributes to the process of new bone formation. The success of bone graft materials must be verified with various clinic research. AOS is designed to graft bone in the socket after the tooth extraction, and the treatment of peri-implant defects with guided bone regeneration. AOS can be applied to the sinus lift to place the implant in the maxillary sinus and to augmenting and reconstruct of the alveolar bone. It can be used to treat and prevent various bone defects. The bone graft material must be easy to use in a variety of surgical situations. AOS collagen plus contains 10% of bovine type 1 collagen. It is specifically designed for post-extraction socket augmentation to maintain the volume and allow for better aesthetic and implant placement. The surgical can cut and reshape the plug to better fit the defective site. The AOS 10 is a bone graft material delivered in the syringes type container that allows the surgeon to titrate the material with just one hand. And the syringes inner diameter is available in two specifications. 5.4 and 3.5. This allows the surgeon to select a better suited syringe for each tooth. In summary, AOS forms new bone rapidly, which can be applied to any surgical site due to its similarity to the human bone. AOS is a perfect solution for both the surgeon and the patient. Time now. Now is the highlight of awesome meeting, live surgery. Today we have uh, live surgeries in the morning and in the afternoon. So let's get started with the event that you have been waiting for. You can check out the second pop-up on the dental site for coffee and dessert coupons. The winners of the lucky draw will be announced at the closing of the second session with the sending of coupon text messages. Please note that the more you watch, the higher chance that you will win the coupons, the coffee and dessert coupons. And those who are here in person can also join us through mobile devices. Let's get started with the live surgery, the highlight of Austin meeting. Let me introduce Dr. Kim Kyung-won, who will chair the session. 
He graduated from Seoul National University. He has completed his residency in oral maxillofacial oral maxillo surgery at the same institution. As a specialist in oral and maxillofacial surgery, he serves as director of the Austin Implanted Dental Research Institute. Please welcome Dr. Kim. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Gyeongwon. I'm honored to see so many faces. I would like to extend my welcome to those who have, who are here with us from abroad. We're going to have two live surgeries today. And uh, we always try to use one guide system. Do you have experience using one guide system? Professor Park Changju of Hanyang Dental University is going to provide live surgery under the topic when gu one guide meets narrow and shorts. Let's look at Professor Park's uh, surgical lecture. Hats off to you for studying even on weekends. I am Professor Park chang Ju of uh, Department of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery at Hanyang University Hospital, responsible for today's live surgery. Today's live surgery topic is one guide meets narrow and short. As some may have guessed, this title is inspired by the movie When Harry Meets Sari. When Harry meets Sally. If you're nodding or smiling, you might not be among the younger crowd. It's a movie from 1989. Let's look at the information of the patient who consented to today's surgery. The patient is 46 year old male with a large mandibular torus on the lingual side. He opted for digital implant surgery based on flapless technique rather than making a denture after torus removal. His medical history includes hypertension, cerebral infarction, and arrhythmia, for which he has a pacemaker. He takes Lixiana, a new oral anticoagulant, also known as NOAC, a thrombolytic replacing warfarin, at 60 milligrams daily. For this surgery, Lixiana was stopped two days prior. Here is the initial panoramic dental x-ray upon his first uh, visit. After removing uh, the mobile teeth, here is the panoramic x-ray image three months uh, post-operatively. You can see multiple missing teeth in the mandible and maxible, maxilla. The patient joked about becoming a candidate for life surgery on the maxilla too if this surgery went well. And I had a, I and the patient had a laugh about it. This is the intraoral photo. This is the upper and lower arch. The occlusal condition suggests enough uh, space for prosthesis, especially in the maxillary and mandibular denture in place. Uh, the problem, however, lies in the mandibular torus. Instead of uh, drug discontinuation, incision flap reflection, torus removal, and denture delivery, the patient opted for a flapless implant surgery. I want to emphasize that digital implant surgery not only allows faster, safer, and efficient implant placement in typical patients, but also offers 
benefits for medically compromised patients by utilizing flatless techniques and identifying optimal bone locations. Hence, it can widen the options for the patient. Virtual planning was done using Implant Studio. This impl digital implant surgery, which bases its planning on prosthesis design first and then implant placement, also has the advantage of reducing stress during prosthetic procedures. I'll show you the implant selection. We took a preoperative CBCT, the steam bun or horn-like structure in the middle is a radiological marker attached inside the patient's mouth for easier merging. For missing tooth number 35, we plan to place CS3 soy 4.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant and for number 32, a TS3 soy 3.0 by 10 millimeter and TS3 soy 3.0 by 10 millimeter was also chosen for 41 for number 43 and 44 TS3 4.0 by 8.5 and for number 45 we opted for extraction then for number 46 TS3 soy 5.0 by 6 millimeter implant will be placed That's how one guide was prepared. Especially, I wanted to showcase the two-piece narrow diameter implant in this live surgery. The TS3 3.0 implant. It maintains the internal hex connection of the traditional 3.5 diameter implant, but uh, strengthens the outer wall by increasing the thickness by 0 0.25 millimeter. There is a variety of implant lineups available. One of the primary advantages of two-piece narrow diameter implant is their ability to be submerged if they do not achieve initial stability, unlike one piece narrow implants. This is something that we all know about. Uh, this is crucial as it allows for a two-stage approach, which is a significant advantage in implant procedures. Second, it can be stably connected prosthodontically with other TS internal connection implants nearby. It can be splinted. Third, it offers a variety of prosthetic options due to its uh, many connection. For the existing TS3 3.0 two-piece narrow di diameter implant, the same prosthetic options that were used before can be applied. Next, I want to talk about short and extra short implants. The six millimeter implant on the far left is commonly referred to as short. Depending on the protrusion out of the bone, if the bone is submerged 5 mm into the bone, it is called extra short 5 or extra short 4 if submerged by 4 mm. As you know, shorter implants are thicker or wider. Ostrom offers a wide range of short and uh, Depending on the case, extra short implants in diameters of 5.0, 5.5, and ultra wide 6 and 7 millimeters. The biggest advantage of short implants is that they don't require bone augmentation procedures. And they can achieve maximum primary stability, making them a good alternative to longer implants. 
For this surgery, a 5.0 by 6 millimeter implant will be placed in number 46. We have prepared two templates printed by the One Guide team. The first template will be retained by teeth on both sides and fixed with one anchor screw. Implants will be placed in number 44, 43, 41, 35, and 32. The indicated 32 and 41 are TS3 3.0 narrow implants. And therefore, we'll use the small 1MS system for implant placement. Then we'll extract uh, the, the tilted and horizontally mobile but vertically stable number 45. It will be temporarily used as an anchor, but we'll remove it and then uh, use the second template to place uh, the implant in the number 46 position. In number 46, so we'll place a TS3 5.0 by 6 millimeter implant using one 485 system. The template may shake uh, during surgery, so we'll utilize the teeth and anchor screw as well as pin as much as possible if the template seems to shake during drilling or implant placement. We will actively use implant anchors. Thus, we have to showcase not only the one guide, but also one MS and one 4A5 systems in this live surgery. Let's focus on the key points of this live surgery. First, we want to show the expansion of a flapless-based digital implant surgery in medically compromised patients. Second, we will demonstrate the 1MS system, another family member of one guide for placing narrow diameter implants. In this surgery, we will use a two-piece uh, TS3 3.0 narrow diameter implant. Another focus is on short implants. I hope you appreciate the One Guide's other family member, the 14A5 system, which is effective in low bone height and it does not invade important anatomical structures. Also, the existing TS bone profilers from Austin were two-piece, but to match guided surgery, we have launched a one-piece TS bone profiler. If the implant is placed deeper, the TS bone profiler can remove the surrounding bone efficiently, facilitating the attachment of healing abutments and subsequent suprastructures. One piece TS bone profiler allows this. I've heard that previous life surgeries focused only on one guide and one cast and were conducted too fast to really feel related. People felt difficulty in relating to the cases. Therefore, this time, we will introduce one MS and one 4A5 system. I am sure Professor Kim Gyeong Won, the moderator, will explain well and we will proceed slowly and clearly. Please feel free to ask any questions during the Q&A session. It's always nerve-wracking to perform live surgery. Thank you for listening. And though I may fail, I hope your clinical adventure continues. I'll see you in the operating room.
Dr. Park, are you ready? Yes, let me start the surgery. The, the patient is under conscious um, sedation, so uh, sometimes the verbal communications uh, may not be done completely. So I'm going to fit the template first. The template, I'm checking whether it is seated uh, properly. It is fitting very well. Tissue punching. Please um, turn your head this side. Thank you. The template is fitting quite properly, and tissue punch is used. Uh, a lot of water will go in. You can swallow it. At number 35, a tissue punch is being done. So using the one guide at number 43. Next, uh, the adjacent one, number 44, soft tissue is being removed. One MS will be placed, so tissue punching is done. Are you okay? The patient is under mild sedation. Number 32. One MS has a little bit longer offset, so using a tissue punch. So the template is to be removed first. The template is removed and overlying the mucosa are removed. You can see the remaining gingiva. The alveolar bone may be inclined. Then um, tissue punch is not sufficiently removing them. So after tissue punch, the overlying gingiva is being removed. Number 43. Next one MS site, number 41. And uh, 32 overlying mucosa is being removed. Overlying mucosa should be removed uh, during initial drill. It cannot come in contact with uh, the template. So all the overlying tissues are removed, and the template is to be fixed in the mouth. using the remaining teeth at quadrant three. The fitting here and here is perfect. The anchor screw is to be used. One MS, when we use one MS, especially in lower anterior region, to prevent the sliding during drilling. So template and needs to be seated quite uh, properly, so this is very important, and I'm going to concentrate on this. Lateral anchor, anchor screw is uh, being drilled. Number 45 to the doesn't have very good uh, periodontal conditions, so there is uh, left to right mobility. And when a template is set, it is made sure that it doesn't move with the lateral an anchor. Irrigation, please. Irrigation. Uh, 
so it is to be fixed the lateral anchor is to fix it the template is um, pressed down by a finger and it is uh, fully set and the surgical template is firmly fixed with the lateral anchor. So there are teeth on both sides, so one lateral anchor is to be used. So it can be screw tightened. So I'm going to insert it a little bit more. If you use many lateral anchors, uh, they can be tightened alternatively but now we are using just one looks like um, it is done the template looks firmly fixed so the back side and the front side everything okay the patient is uh, taking noeg comedine uh, warfarin if those are used uh, Arena should be checked, but uh, NOAC doesn't require monitoring. So uh, the, the uh, a drug has been stopped for two days and not much bleeding. Uh, please turn your head to this side a little bit. Flattening drill is used to flatten uh, the upper top bone if you use an initial drill sometimes it doesn't go in up to the stopper so flattening drill can be used to flatten the top part of the bone number 35 the flattening drill is being used So I'm going to use the flattening drill here at number 43. When we use a template to prevent the bone heating, Dr. Park is doing pumping. If you use hand piece for pumping, so uh, the irrigation goes into the hole. We did this uh, practice in our lab, and the pumping is very important. At number 44, flattening drill is used. Very good. So my earphone is about to fall off. Please check my earphone. So I'm going to check the holes, if it, there's any chips. And if you do irrigation, the cell line would go into the holes to reduce the heat. One guide initial drill. Uh, please uh, hold it firmly. An initial drill is used. At number 35, it starts with the site. The flattening drill was used there before, so the initial drill is uh, going in up to the stopper. At number 43, so using the pump pumping action like this, during drilling, you don't just go in straight uh, to insert a cell line into the hole you do this a pumping action number 44 the initial drill uh, should be inserted fully to the stopper that's important and it is being drilled so the stopper came in contact with the template irrigation so irrigation to prevent overheating into the drill holes to prevent a bone heating cell line is added f 3.5 by 8.5 drill the patient is doing very well 
3.5 diameter by 8.5 millimeter one guided drill is used and I'm going to check whether it is the one guided template doesn't have metal sleeve so using the double contact the drill is positioned actually one guide drill um, is used for wide hole so this is I changed it to regular one 3.5 by 8.5 number 43 3.5 by 8.5 drill 3.5 millimeter by 8.5 and uh, let me make sure that um, bone chip is not remaining in the drill so the the drill is seated using the double contact concept. The drilling is done 3.5 by 8.5. The same drilling at 44. 4.5 by 8.5 drill. So uh, let me do the irrigation first. Uh, Dr. Park, can you hear me? The other side. Uh, Dr. Park, can you hear me? Maybe he doesn't hear me because his earphone fell. To evaluate the bone quality, uh, let me stop irrigation. I stopped irrigation to evaluate the bone quality. So this is, uh, this looks like a normal bone. The guided surgery, actually it is difficult to evaluate the bone quality. Without irrigation, I'm doing this to check the bone quality. The amount of bone that is coming out as evaluator can see white bone is coming out. The bone quality seems fairly good. I believe it is normal bone. I'm going to check here as well. Number 44. Are you okay, sir? Number 44. A lot of bone chip is coming out in this case. I believe it is normal or hard bone. I'm going to do over prep. F4.5 by 8.5 drill. I'm going to do irrigation as well. Comparatively, bone quality is quite favorable in the lower. If were necessary, one step over drilling is done. 4.0 diameter implant is going to be placed, but 4.5 uh, diameter drilling is done. Primary stability is important, but it is important to prevent overheating. 4.5 by 8.5 drill is used in number 44 as well. Irrigation is done, and the implant will be placed. When you use template, when you do drilling, the sleeve contact occurs. Uh, checking bone quality may be a bit difficult. In the case of Professor Park, uh, evaluating the amount of bone chip, but bone quality is being uh, evaluated. Bone quality estimation by doing this can be more accurate. Four point zero by eight point five. So, ITS uh, implant will be placed. Uh, 
this is hydrophilic implant and you need to wet it before placing it. So I'm going to twist it so that you can see better. It is placed about 780% using engine. Done. In the case of Austin One Guide, in order to prevent the drill jamming, it is placed about 780% using engine because bone quality is good. If you use engine too much, there can be jamming. The size has been reduced, so such possibility is low in number 43, as you can see, using engine. The implant is placed about 80%, so up to the yellow mark. 4.0 by 8.5 in number 44. Soy surface uh, implant is placed. Uh, so you need to twist it after it's in a little bit. As mentioned, the implant, uh, once it's positioned, drilling is done. Uh, so in one using one guide, this is very important. Uh, there's no metal sleeve at times. Uh, the plastic sleeve can be grinded off. Some may ask, uh, have, once you position the drill pr correctly, because of uh, guide the barrel, the sleeve is hardly grinded off. Primary stability is excellent. It's over 30 Newton centimeters in number 44. You need to make sure that it's over 30 in number 44. Although over drilling was done, over 30 Newtons of uh, primary stability was achieved. And in number 43, primary stability is also excellent. In number 43. Hex is correctly positioned. So, moving on to number 35, implanted driver is used. So, there's gap of 0 0.4 millimeters with the guide so we can prevent the tool being jammed. Irrigation is done. The implants are already in. As for implanted drill, the gap, because there is gap, jamming can be prevented. So apologies for not being able to listen properly. My earpiece is not working. Well, this is one MS kit. Offset is uh, 13.5 millimeters, so you need to use it while doing irrigation sufficiently. In the case of lower anterior, we need to be very careful. We need to use a flattening drill first to remove potential inclinations. Irrigation is done. Professor, how much time do we have left? Next. F1, this is straight drill, 1.8 by 8.5. So some people think that we need to use 1.5 by 10 millimeter, but in such cases, it may not be guided. So in the case of one MS kit, you need to start off with a shorter drill first so that it can be guided accurately. 8.5 is done first. 10 millimeter implant will be placed. The 8.5 millimeter drill is used first. Irrigation, please. The most important thing is to prevent overheating. 10 millimeter drill is used with the same diameter, 1.8 by 10 millimeter. Mm -hmm. 
The short drill is used the first in the drill it will be in double contact to make sure safe drilling. So drill is positioned. After that, the engine is started. Irrigation. Two point three by eight point five drill. The bone quality is very good in the posterior region. Two point two three by eight point five a drill is used. Two point five by eight point five. Especially one MS has a long offset. So we need to prevent heating and jamming. Next, 2.3 by 10. 8.5 was used first. Oh. 2.3 by 10 millimeters. At number 41. 2.3 by 10 millimeter drill. Next, 2.7 by 8.5. As you can see, the bone quality is excellent. Two point seven drill. 2.7 diameter and 8.5. 2.7 millimeter in diameter and 8.5 at the short drill. And next, 2.7 by 10 millimeters. Irrigation. So, hand piece. 2.7 by 10 millimeter drill. And uh, I'm going to check the bone quality. Irrigation is stopped. The final drill. Bone quality checking. It looks good. 2.7. A lot of bone chip is coming out. Normal bone. The other side. So looks good. Irrigation. And we're going to prepare implants. We don't need to do over prep. Next, 3.0 by 10 millimeters. Irrigation. Patient, are you okay? Yes. At number 32, and two piece implants at TS3, 3.0 millimeter diameter. Soy implant. It looks straight. TS3, 3.0 by 10 millimeter implant. The implant is positioned and the engine is started. The bone quality is pretty hard. Normal bone or better. Sorry about that. At number 32, with the engine, it is placed about 80%. TS3 3.0 by 10 millimeter implant at number 41. And the implant is positioned first before the start of the engine. And the offset is a bit long, so it uh, takes a little bit more steps to place the implant. One MS has a higher offset, so you need to be careful about that. Uh, 
using an implant driver, using a hand wrench at the final position, depth, and hex position are controlled or adjusted. So the stability looks good. So it is over 30 Newton centimeters, so it looks good. Likewise, at number 41, the stability is excellent. 30 Newton centimeter, or I, actually it's about 25 Newton centimeter. Oh, it's 30, 30 Newton centimeter. And the initial stability is pretty good. At number 44, 43, 41, and the five implants are placed there. Anchor screw is to be removed. At number 46, a white implant is to be placed. So we are going to use the second template and the anchor pin here is removed. How much time do I have? Sufficient? How much time do I have? It's 11.36. Can you hear me, Dr. Park? Yes. Now it's done. I'm going to extract number 45. The second template, the number 45 extraction. So it was a mobile tooth. Curette. Curette and the extraction socket. The next template is to be connected. The second uh, template was fabricated after the extraction of uh, uh, number 45, the letter anchor screw. The, we have anchor pin without the screw. It is uh, fixed with a pin. Uh, so just in case, uh, let me insert one uh, vertical, for vertical anchor. Implant fixture will be connected to it. So at number 43, the over the implant place, the vertical anchor is connected. So the template is fixed. It's not moving at all. Very good. And uh, let me do implanted drilling at number 46. A wide hole is prepared. Five by six millimeter implant is to be placed using one for 85 kit. Like a cast drill, there is no white dimension at the bottom. So at number 46, the design is a little bit different. So at number 46, tissue punching. So there is a blade inside an overlying mucosa can be removed by the blade. Yes, uh, it, it is taken out. So inside of the tissue punch, there's a, bl uh, a blade um, grinding off uh, the mucosa. The template is anchored and the newly designed the tissue punch is being used. And next, the flattening drill. This is for a wide hose, so it is gold coated. The flattening, the flattening drill is inserted up to the stopper, and the bone quality looks good. And 
When bone chips are attached, the cutting efficiency can be lower, so the chips are removed. Uh, thank you, patient. You are doing very well. Using the flattening drill, the, uh, the drill went up to the stopper. 2.2 by 6 millimeters. 1485 2.2 by 6 millimeter drill. This is short for short implant. So it is uh, drilled up to the stopper. Pilot drill. We used the straight drill, and in the middle, we used the pilot drill before other drills. So, one for eight five drills were straight. 5.0 W. So, I stopped irrigation and 5.0 final drill. 5.0 by 6 millimeter final drill the, to check the bone quality. It looks good. The quality looks good. A lot of bone chips there. Irrigation. Good. Next implant placement. 5.0 by 6 millimeter implant. TS3 soy 5 by 6 millimeter implant with a soy surface. So it is a hyd uh, hydraulic, hydrated. So implant placement up to 80% of the placement at number 46, the last one and using an implant driver, the final positioning, uh, hex control and uh, diopsis is control too, looks like 30 Newton centimeter stability. Very good initial stability. Now all the plant implants are placed. Now the pin is removed and template is removed. The live surgery is being completed. Next, bone profiler. As I said before, bone profiler for TS implants. The implant is inserted in there. It is uh, two pieces, but now this is on for one piece. Uh, there is a plastic sleeve for protection. A narrow implant is placed on um, the anterior region as the bone is uh, hard. Uh, a uh, two-piece um, is uh, uh, my preferred one, but uh, it takes time to insert it and uh, remove it. So uh, in this case, I use one piece. So it is uh, profiling the bone, and if an implant is uh, placed deep, uh, this kind of profiling is done. One piece bone profiler is used in the posterior region at number 35. Please turn your head. Uh, please open your mouth. It's almost done. And then um, a drill extension is used because uh, there was interference from the adjacent tooth. Uh, it's very good. Mm 
In the profiling, in the next site, number 44, why the 6.0 regular connection? At number 46, now it's okay. I'm going to cut it with caution. So sometimes um, it comes off like this and it can be removed. AOS collagen is to be inserted at number 45. It is not to be to have implant socket preservation or alveolar rich preservation would use AOS collagen. So the extension socket, it is used. Suture, prepare suture, please. At number 45, AOS collagen. AOS particle, 90% of them are AOS particle and 10% uh, collagen. That's how the AOS collagen is consisted of. And for rich preservation, this is quite um, used quite a lot. As you can see in the extraction socket, when we use AOS collagen, we don't need to cover it with the collagen membrane. And soft tissue would be healed pretty quickly, and soft tissue response is good. It goes in measly and comes out additionally. Hidden X technique, suture technique, mesolingually goes in. And uh, some people feel, feel it up to the soft tissue, but I don't do it. For socket preservation, AOS collagen is grafted, and um, collagen membrane is not used. Uh, it's simply sutured if you use collagen membrane, AOS um, has very good collagen response in terms of soft tissue response. So this part will be sutured because it was torn up a little bit during extraction before connecting healing abutment. It has very good the physical property, but it is a uh, white color, so I am getting old and I cannot see distinguish it very clearly. So suture is almost complete. No, no. The assist was to cut below uh, the tie. Uh, so the video quality is very good, so we can clearly see the tie. In the front side, 3.0. So healing abutment is to be connected. What is the height of the healing abutment? Uh, the implant is uh, placed uh, quite deep, so the height is 7 millimeters, 4.5 by 7 millimeters. Uh, the initial stability is excellent, so a rather long healing abutments are used. 
Next, 5.0, what is the height? 7 millimeters. The implant uh, was placed deep and uh, bone profiling was done, so there's uh, no con uh, problem with the connection. Seven millimeter long healing abutment is connected. As you saw before, bone profiling was done before, so healing abutment uh, is uh, set without any interference. At number 44, uh, the same healing abutment is connected. Very good. Patient, you are doing very well. Initial stability is very good. This is the last one. A six millimeter diameter. And the height is seven millimeter healing abutment. So the surgery is coming to a close. I'm going to change it a little bit. It's good. Thank you. It works very well. So it's complete. So let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you. Dr. Park, are you out here? It was very good. Let's do Q&A. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Dr. O. Dr. Ch Park, uh, uh, to save time, uh, I have so many questions to ask, but uh, the urgent question, the overheating is something we need to be careful about. So the last drill would be very important. Uh, so if it is overheated at the initial drill, uh, we can cut it off, but uh, you didn't do cooling. How can you stop heating? Dr. Park and Dr. Kim, you can answer. When I do final drill, I do irrigation cooling. Uh, we have uh, many questions on the chat window. When we use one guide template, as you may have experienced, uh, because of the guide the sleeve, the bone quality, and we cannot feel the bone quality. So in my case, to identify the bone quality, I just look at the bone chip volume. And uh, Dr. Park didn't use uh, the final drill with the irrigation. So with irrigation, I can check the bone chips. So I use irrigation up to the final drilling. Dr. Park, are you there? The patient has some handicap, and um, the patient, it takes time for the patient to be moved. And Dr. O's question is um, you duplicated by many other questions, so I, I will ask the question to Dr. Park. Do we have any other questions from the floor? It was a very crisp um, live surgery. My name is Kim myung -ne. I have a private practice. Austin is proud that they provide the provisional uh, prosthesis after live surgery, but you didn't do that. Implants were placed quite deep. 
when we use one guide, sometimes uh, the height would be would vary, not consistent, and then um, they are placed quite deep. When we use one guide surgery, do you provide a provisional prosthesis or do you provide a removable partial dentures? And if um, the provisional is to be provided, if it doesn't fit quite well, especially for short and narrow implants, when they are placed deep, uh, that can be the problem. And uh, what is your take on that? Can you tell us, based on your experience, uh, it is uh, regrettable that we cannot connect to Dr. Park. In this case, uh, we uh, place implants with one guide, and uh, we had many immediate uh, loading cases. Uh, this is a short and narrow implants this time. So we focused on implant placement. I believe um, in the morning, uh, Dr. Park uh, uh, used the two-piece uh, narrow implants, but in the afternoon, Dr. Kim uh, is going to use one-piece narrow implants, and Dr. Park uses a two-piece and a 485 uh, kit um, uh, for short implants. So uh, Dr. Kim, when you do this, when you use narrow or short implants, do you provide uh, provisionals for immediate loading? No. So because uh, this is a simple surgery, OSTEM has shown us a more complicated surgery. But I wonder why you didn't provide a provisional at this time. As Dr. Park said at the beginning, sometimes we, uh, when we do live surgeries, we provide the provisionals too, but this, there was some feedback. Uh, they are experts, so they can do it. But uh, yeah. some people said they cannot do like the expert. That's why we um, didn't provide a provisional. So uh, my question is, actually, when immediate, uh, actually, do you provide a provisional and do immediate loading? It varies case by case. Do you do that too? Yes, from time to time. Does it work? So using temporary RPD, um, they use it and then they change it? No, I will not uh, ask any further questions. Dr. Park? So you uh, appear a little bit uh, late lately, so thank you very much for your wonderful surgery. Before you are connected, we had a question from online as well as from the floor. Uh, when you use a template, the bone heating can be a problem, so irrigation is important. Uh, and during the final drilling, why didn't you use irrigation? How did you determine bone quality? Because uh, there was many questions regarding bone heating. Um, conscious um, sedation um, was used for the patient, and it, it took time for the patient to move out of the operation room. Saline irrigation is not used for the final drilling, and you're concerned about that. But uh, the biggest disadvantage of digital dentistry is that even though you accurately evaluate the bone quality, especially um, the soft bone can be estimated, but the normal and hard bones turn out to be different uh, after you open it up. One MS, no mounted driver or implanted driver. Sometimes um, we struggle when they cannot be, when they are not coming out. When 
bone is hard and when we do over preparation that happens often so final drill uh, i don't use irrigation to check the quality and you're concerned about the overheating uh, but if you look at the various data most heat is generated mostly in the first two drilling and the, during the final drilling when the hole is prepared the excessive heat is not really happening that's the first thing however as you saw during the surgery at each step I take time to do irrigation that's my principle so if you keep those two in mind implant driver or no mount driver sometimes uh, they don't come out easily so that's our struggle so the final uh, bone quality is checked without irrigation to check the bone quality as it is especially uh, the cortical bone um, if you remember the over preparation in that case over preparation um, is uh, it re requires irrigation that's kind of tip so when what was the rpm for the final drilling and you mentioned it briefly the bone chips if you uh, so you are checking cortical versus the medulla bone what is the rpm 30 newton centimeter is uh, the setting value Any further questions among the floor? And I uh, heard that Dr. Kim, thank you very much for your compliment. But um, I believe you understand uh, the general hospital setting. And um, if I do surgery in a hospital of course we provide the provisional but um, uh, personal dentists should uh, allocate um, half a day for that so I provide the healing um, and uh, when uh, I provide a provisional after a stitch out if uh, the uh, implants are not placed very deep, but you can estimate uh, the depth as I use the seven millimeter uh, healing of abutment. If you c tighten two piece uh, profile screw and if you move on to the next phase, if we have to place uh, three or more implants, it takes very long time. So today, Immediate provisionalization, uh, uh, temporization is not the key point today. That is good if we provide uh, the temporary. So AOS collagen, up to AOS collagen insertion, um, I limited my focus. So it took a full 40 minutes. So I concentrated on performing surgery today. I believe this answers your question, Dr. Kim. Any other questions? Uh, my name is Kim Jeon. I'm from Incheon. Thank you very much for the surgery, and it was a very good completion of uh, surgery. Uh, so, for uh, one guy, the beginners, and uh, when they design in house, one guide tool that you use today. Would you give us more details on that? Dr. Kim, thank you for the question. What is your question? Can you elaborate on that, please? Offset concept, would you, uh, what is the millimeters of uh, offset if we do it in house? Uh, thank you for the good question uh, the offset is um, appearing a lot in questions when it comes to a guide 
offset is important. As you said, when implant uh, goes a little bit deeper, offset can become a problem. Implant um, should be in bone and at least four millimeters um, from gingiva. One guide. Other companies uh, use uh, the two, three, or uh, many different offsets. So one guide kit, in the case of one guide kit, from the top of the template to the top of the implant, that's 10.5 uh, millimeters, the offset. But one M offset has some longer offset, which is 13.5 millimeters. And uh, I want to emphasize this again. Uh, it is a uh, long offset so that the guiding drill can be jamming in the sleeve and that it creates trouble. So, so um, we use the over preparation to prevent that. So uh, in summary, one guide has an offset of one uh, ten point five millimeters. The one, uh, but the today I use the thirteen point five uh, offset. If I may add, other companies have a varying offset values. So one guide, also one guide, and one cast, and others have offset length of ten point five. Uh, from the top of implanted to the top of uh, uh, template, and then one MS offset is 13.5. Uh, can you show us post of a panorama? Can you see it? Yes. This is pre op panorama. This is post op panorama, as you can see. So there is a rich short implant, a TS3, 5.5 by 6 is properly placed, narrow implant, TS3, 3.5 by 10, and the rest, 4.0 by 8.5. A healing abutment, healing abutments are properly connected. The CT is uh, being taken, so you need to take lunch, so CT will be shown later. And uh, Dr. Kim kyung won thank you very much to chair this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this concludes the session. Two questioners will be selected. The first questioner, Dr. Oh. And the second uh, questioner, Dr. Kim myung -ne. Thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch. Live surgery. That was a successful live surgery. I would like to thank Dr. Park, who chaired the session, and Dr. Kim kyung won Thank you very much. So this concludes the second session. And uh, login event winners and many winners 300 people will get coffee coupons a 200 sweet dessert set so 500 people in total will win this coupons I don't know whether you can read it. So many people won the prizes. I think uh, congratulations. The winners uh, will receive the coffee coupon text messages. Now it's at 12.09. Please come back by 1 o'clock, lunch hour. Enjoy your lunch. And uh, please visit various exhibitions and events uh, staged uh, at various locations. The new dental commerce platform and then a live show, which is gaining popularity since its launch in April, will be aired soon from 12 to 1. Pusen as 
toothpaste, toothbrush kit, uh, xenograph materials will be provided at special prices. Note, 100 Korean viewers of the live show will be selected and receive 10,000 one Starbucks uh, gift certificates. You need to log in and agree to receive marketing messages. And you can purchase the products at special prices and win uh, gift certificate. So uh, please uh, join us um, from 12 to 1, from 2 p.m. on the third floor, seminar rooms, uh, orthodontic dental clinic, lab seminars will be held in parallel. Please uh, stay, us, uh, stay with us uh, until the end. That is concludes the morning session, and uh, let's uh, get back together in the afternoon. Thank you.
multi angle event enables creating a single unit cohesive even in an eventual state. Using a multi scan body, the person can select from a dedicated library to two digital scanning options, PI based, long, or short. To ensure a proper fit and eliminate any possible error, the prosthesis must be treated in the mouth before being cemented onto the PI base. Try our simple and accurate QS multi PI base. Introducing the 1MS kit, the implant surgery kit for anterior region with narrow bone width. In the anterior region with narrow interventral space and also in the narrow bone width, place the 1 by template. And then you will be able to place MS implant with the most narrow 2.0 millimeter diameter and PS3 3.0 implant exactly in the planned position by using 1MS kit. Try the 1MS kit, the implant surgery kit for the anterior region with narrow bone width. Introducing the scan healing abutment, which helps you to take implant incision without removing the healing abutment. You can use the dedicated healers to fasten the scan healing abutment in the correct hex direction more conveniently. The scan healing abutment is available in different lengths. You can choose the right abutment for each patient's implant surgery plan. When using a CAT program, the unique shape of its upper surface helps you identify the abutment length. You can also create custom abutments with our official guidelines. If your clinic does not have an oral scanner, or if you are having issues with scanning, you can take a rubber incision as an alternative. Experience easy implant incision taking with the scan healing abutment, which combines a bunch of healing abutments and scan body. Did you enjoy your lunch? It's Kim Yuzu greeting you once again in the afternoon session of Boston Meeting 2023 Seoul. Did you w enjoy watching the dental live show during one lunch? The special sale on Busan S toothpaste and toothbrush kits as well as allogenic bone grafts is still on. You can place your orders on the mall until 5 p.m. on a Monday or through our sales representatives. 
make sure to take advantage of these offers. So as we begin this afternoon's session, let me inform you about the exciting events prepared for those joining us today. As a treat for our on-site guests, so we have uh, prepared uh, awesome prizes. After all sessions, a grand prize draw will happen. As shown, there is a Galaxy Notebook 3 Pro, Galaxy Z Flip 5, Galaxy Tab S9, as well as OIC Seminar Tickets. I look forward to your interest. For our online audience tuning in through the Adenal site, we have an exciting offer for you. Among the logged in viewers, uh, a total of 2,700 will receive coffee and dessert set coupons. Don't miss the pri price entry pop up appearing on the Adenal site for about three minutes before each, se each session. Right now, there's a pop up window for you to enter, so go ahead and try your luck. The lucky draw results will be announced at the end of each session, and coffee coupons will be sent via text simultaneously. Additionally, for those who stay with us online until the end, we have prepared generous prizes, including Samsung Bespoke Robot Vacuum, JBL Wireless Headphones, and Galaxy Bud 2 Pro. Your continued interest and viewership are greatly appreciated. Please know, to participate in any online event, you must be logged in to the dental site. You need to make sure that you're logged in. Don't forget to sign up in advance for a smoother experience. Those present at the venue can also participate via mobile. So keep, please keep this in mind. If following the lectures, we'll have a Q&A session. The best questions from live chat and on-site selected as the best questions will earn 10 participants a WAPI candy oral irrigator. For our international guests, so feel free to ask questions in English as interpretation services are available. Next, President Chegyuo of Austin Implant will make a presentation. Please welcome him with a warm round of applause. Good afternoon. My name is Che Gyo. Today it's Sunday, and um, thank you very much for coming here despite its holiday. Uh, some dentists have said this. Uh, there are two types of uh, dentists, uh, those who went to Austin and those who have not. It is worth the coming here, and uh, you are already here, and online participants um, are invited to visit us sometime. We have 15 research centers, and if you are trying to prepare a degree papers, we can help regarding implants, or um, if you I have a specific experiment or study, we can assist you. And uh, we have auditorium and 12 classrooms, uh, economic congress, or if you have uh, university alumni meeting or uh, the big meeting that you want to hold, um, the rooms are provided for free, and um, the meal can be provided. And there are two model clinics and you will see how interior design is uh, made there. We have 60,000 equipment and uh, materials and uh, they are on display all the time. Please visit here and uh, it's not just the building but there are things that can be of help to you. It's worth visiting. So today, I'm going to talk about new interior paradigm. 
one week interior, an interior that can be finished in a week. Now, if you do interior work uh, for about 50 pyeong of uh, area, it takes about five weeks, but it can be extended to six, seven weeks, or even two months. But uh, there are not many cases where the duration can be shortened, but we do it within a week. So the construction, interior construction, is uh, completed in a week. Uh, we did a pilot, and uh, that will be more extended to other um, clinics. And then we can do the interior work in seven days. It took 35 days. And how can you reduce it to seven days? 35 days. Uh, the interiors are pre fabricated and uh, installed at the site, but uh, seven days uh, utilizes the many prefabricated parts. The interior and external construction. And if it took 35 days, um, that includes a lot of um, uh, external uh, outside uh, outdoor outworks, uh, but they can be reduced to seven days. So um, this is uh, the sequence of work, uh, the uh, electrical plumbing work, uh, ceiling, uh, walls, floor, and uh, furniture and finishing. And then we provide partitions and we do the work uh, on the ceiling and the floor. So uh, day one, we do preparation, marking, electrical work, uh, preparation, and uh, pipe work. And on the next day, sealing. And uh, day three, sealing is completed, and the walls are installed. And day four, walls are finished. And uh, day five, floor. Day six, furniture. And day seven, on the sign boards are installed, cleaned, finishing. Prefabricated, prefabrication. So walls, ceiling, furniture, electrical, and the facilities are prepared in advance. That's a secret to seven day work. So furniture is made in advance, and other uh, companies are doing that too. But in terms of quality, we produce um, uh, uh, in large quantities. So that's the difference. Walls, interior walls, so we mark on the floor and uh, using the wood. Uh, the frames are made and uh, uh, plasters are used, and uh, we do the. We have the sheet cover and that just installed. So the bo board panel are attached, and the finishing caps are also prepared and sealing. The actually this is indirect light installation, and uh, they are prefabricated too, depending on the interior design. Electrical work as well. And uh, from the inlet, we do the wiring, and they are all prepared uh, to specific length and uh, the connections are all prepared in advance. And the piping at the site, um, there's um, water emission, discharge, and um, city water coming in, but we don't do the work uh, at the site from scratch. Uh, they're all prepared in advance. Only connections are done at the site, and the floor is all prepared. 
they are connected uh, very tightly. So that's a prefabrication preparation. And on at the site, day one, marking is done and the piping electrical work and um, the ceiling is um, made on day two. Day three, walls are installed and the frame is made and prefabricated panels are inserted and they all click in. So the tight connection is achieved. And day five flooring. And rather than marble, we use uh, some different material. They get connected. It's aesthetic, durable, and they can be finished pretty quickly. And day six, installation of furniture and lighting. Electric uh, wires already installed and the lights are attached. And day seven, signs are attached and cleaning. That's um, the one week uh, on site work. Day eight, equipment are installed. Day nine, sofa tables. Doctor's CV or, or certificates, um, photo pictures, plant pots, and lights. The artificial flowers or trees are installed on day nine. It looks like um, already settled dental clinic. The next day you can use it immediately. Waiting room, doctor's room, uh, the f plant pots and uh, pictures are hung. It looks like, uh, it doesn't look like uh, the construction is just finished. It looks like uh, everything is settled. So in summary, the interior connection, one week, um, equipment installation, one day and finishing one day. And I'm going to show you how we finish the work in one week. Day one, electrical wiring. Day two, ceiling construction. Day three, wall installation. Day four, and the finishing of walls, day five flooring, day six furniture installation. Day seven, signs. Day eight, equipment setting. Day nine, materials, instruments are put in the cabinet. On the second floor, the 65 Pyeong of area, the interior was um, finished in seven days, and equipment installation was uh, done on day nine, and uh, that's all included in the video. So one week interior, the advantages, it's fast. I emphasized it can be done in a week, and it is a high quality construction and it's a very quality design. And the finishing it doesn't require a lot of manual work. I did many interior projects, but from morning to a certain hour 
in the afternoon, I have to monitor, watch what the interior contractors are doing. Uh, it may be the same for you, but um, you can trust us. You don't have to be uh, monitoring us so what we are doing. A signage CV is uh, hung on the wall as a finishing work. When problem occurs, so we provide a fast effort sales service. Uh, that's our advantages. So uh, it's fast. There are two types of uh, customers. One, the first timers, and they do uh, the interior work in a new building, so the duration is not uh, that uh, important. So uh, the during the interior construction period, uh, they don't really pay the rent. Usually that's the contract. But uh, if you want to remodel your clinic, it takes two months you have to dismantle and um, do the remodel. So they just uh, do the remodeling in parts of the clinic. So this is just one week work. So uh, the dentist can take a short vacation and come back. So they don't need to be on site uh, and monitor what we're doing. So it's very fast. And uh, you may suspect quality if we do the work fast. Uh, we provide high quality work. The walls, uh, they click in quite nicely. Electrical wiring. If uh, wires are um, finished with the tapes, it's not good. So we have the proper tubes. So they all um, go into the tube and finish like that. And pipeline, uh, the pipes are cut and connected as site usually. And uh, the materials are brought in. And if they don't tightly get connected, they do the work again. So, but the overlapping part of the pipes should be five centimeters, but if it is just one centimeter, they just uh, leave it like that. Then it can be the cause of leaking when the floor is um, frozen and the thawed. But everything is prefabricated, everything is connected as site, and we don't use. Uh, we don't use um, Chinese-made um, synthetic marbles. So we use Alex House's um, countertop and the materials. And uh, when leaking occurs, automatic uh, locking system is used. When there is water, this um, pipeline is closed automatically, and that is um, communicated through cell phone message and um, automatic air conditioning. So if um, the temperature goes down uh, a certain degrees, heating will be turned on. And with a cell phone, you can turn it on or off even though you are not at the site. The design is high quality. We have uh, many researchers who are dedicated themselves uh, for the design. Very aesthetic design. Based on that, the materials are prepared. This is the waiting room of the clinic on the second floor. Counseling room, lab, makeup room. And uh, lighting is very important um, in the waiting room and examination room, and the cabinet, upper cabinet, the lower cabinet. Very dignified looking, a doctor's room. We don't make chairs, but we make bookshelves and desks. 
so we can customize the cabinets. The cabinets can go up to the ceiling, and then we studied the flow of people, and we have done more than 1,100 interior projects. Patients flow, staff flow, doctors flow are considered, and the chair, the length of the chair, and if there is any uh, pipes, uh, the length would be different, and then uh, imaging equipment uh, very practically laid out. And uh, it looks good, but sometimes uh, it doesn't turn out to be practical uh, for the users. And um, at first glance, it looks beautiful, but uh, sometimes it doesn't work. So uh, the height of cabinets, depending on the height of the staff, the upper cabinets are positioned. And in between the upper and lower cabinet, so the space can be utilized. Handles and drawers, it looks beautiful. And uh, when it is open, it can be easily opened and closed. In the case of the lower cabinet, uh, there is a lower part. And Sometimes um, it touches your feet, the tip of the feet. So if you look at the red dots, and uh, the wood has a darker shade. So we pushed it in 15 centimeters so that you can comfortably sit in front of it without uh, stooping your uh, upper part of your body. So this is made very practical. And uh, the finishing without uh, requiring manual work, uh, we have the system and the rooms, cabinets, and drawers. Uh, so in short is RCD, rooms, cabinets, and drawers. Uh, we have the RCD system for storage. So we came up with a statistical uh, analysis. Uh, 300 to 400 items are used usually in a clinic, dental cl clinic, um, where those items should go uh, depending on disinfection room, examination room, or operation room. If you do the installation or uh, storing of them uh, from the beginning. Sometimes you get mixed up, and um, over time, you know where to find what. But that is all considered. And um, this is uh, the layout of the disinfection room. And this is for uh, the examination room and mobile cart. So all um, the items are designated in terms of where to go. So this is the 65 Pyong Dental Clinic. And so this is uh, storing items in the storage area. What is the advantage of this uh, RCD system? We can quickly identify the location of items and it is easy to control inventory and it can increase the efficiency of uh, examination. After the interior uh, project, uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, hard to find the certain materials, instruments, uh, then we have to send a patient back and um, they have to make another appointment to uh, get a service. So. Surprisingly, there are some people who are resistant to this idea. And then if we provide this uh, kind of um, DRC service for free, 
and many of our customers just accept them. And uh, we send the three people uh, to do the organization, and uh, it takes just uh, three or four hours. And we do that more in more than 100 uh, clinics. And ever says the service is very important. So, uh, for various reasons, uh, ever says the service is not uh, streamlined, but awesome provides very fast after-sales service for two years for free. The warranty is two years. And after the construction, the VR is made for you. Virtual reality, if you click on the round button, you can go anywhere and you can put it on your website. And uh, your customers will click the various um, red buttons and uh, see your interior. One week interior. The construction will be finished in one week, and equipment installation one day, and the storage one day. So the advantage is the fast the quality and the finishing without manual your manual work. So you are involved uh, in the interior design, and after that, everything is automatically fulfilled. So we have um, done the work a thousand up to August. Now more than 1,100, 330 interior project this year, and that it will be increased to 420 next year. So Austin is the biggest interior dental interior company. It is difficult to do 10 or 20 projects a year, but we will have a more than 400 projects uh, next year. This will be distributed throughout the world. The furniture uh, factories will be expanded. So the area of the factories um, are continuously increasing. It requires a lot of space. So raw materials. There are two types of costs, material cost and labor cost. Material and labor costs. To reduce the cost, we need to reduce the material cost. So uh, economy of scale, we purchase in large quantity, not only from Korea, but throughout the world, who's from Malaysia or Indonesia, uh, still some from sourced from different locations. So uh, the material cost can be drastically cut. And the prefabrication is the key. Uh, high quality um, carpenters or plumbers are not required. Everything is uh, accurately prefabricated. So uh, what they need to do is just connection at the site. So we are going to lead uh, the dental interior work with a fast service to reduce uh, the gap in your patient care time. Thank you. So Austin has no limits. President Chek Yul, your presentation was wonderful. Please give a warm round of applause. Austin Medium 2022-23 Seoul is being uh, broadcasted 
live in English and Chinese. Let us begin the third session. Professor Shim Jun Song of Yonsei Dental School is the moderator of the se third session. Professor Shim Jun Song graduated from Yonsei University College of Dentistry and obtained his PhD in dental biomaterials from University of Manchester. He served as the head of Un Yonsei University Dental Hospital and is a specialist in dental prosthodontics. Currently, he is the president of Korean Academy of Prosthodontics. Please welcome him with a warm round of applause. Greetings. I'm Professor Shim Jun Song, moderator of this session. During the awesome meeting 2023 Seoul, we look forward to exploring the appeal of short and narrow implants and share a range of perspective perspectives in this valuable forum. I hope you find this session informative. And now let me introduce our speaker. Opening our third session is Professor Park Sung Min from Tanguk University College of Dentistry. Professor Park will present on the topic narrow implant and an alternative to open alternative option for narrow ridge. Please welcome Professor Park Sung Min. Hello, I am Professor Park Sung Min of Department of Maxillofacial Surgery at Tango University. I am honored to be here. I don't have as much clinical experience, but I'm honored to receive such invitation. Today I'll be presenting on the topic narrow implants and alternative option for narrow ridges. Let me give you a brief introduction about myself. After completing my training in oral and maxillofacial surgery at Tango University Dental Hospital, I am currently an assistant professor in the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery and am working at Tango University Sejong Dental Hospital. Let's look at the contents. I want to talk about narrow implant and the downside, and I want to talk about why we need to use our narrow implants despite of it. I want to talk about uh, Austin narrow implant uh, and clinical cases. Let's look at the classification of narrow diameter implants. According to 2018 ITI consensus, they're classified based on diameter into three categories. Category 1 includes diameters less than 2.5 millimeters. Category 2 ranges from 2.5 to 3.3 millimeters. And Category 3 includes implants with diameters from 3 to 3.5. 3 .3 All three categories show high survival rates with sufficient evidence already existing for these uh, survival rates. A quick look at the indications for each category. Category 1 is primarily used for mandibular overdenture and interim prosthesis. Category 2 for single tooth replacement in areas such as upper lateral incisors or lower incisors, incisors with narrow width. And category 3 can be used for single tooth replacement with narrow interdental width or buccolingual width as well as for multi-unit restorations. NDI I have been used since the 1970s uh, with uh, diameters below 2 millimeters. They were primarily used in Europe and South Africa under the name pin implants, so where two or three implants were used as a set for a single tooth. Uh, due to biomechanical limitations, they often failed and fractured. Later, Many implants so with diameters of 1.8 to 2.4 were used as provisionals and they are still useful for removable restorations today. These NDIs were also used for implant overdentures where at the time flapless implant placement was a simple solution for denture use, reducing the financial burden on patients. 
In overdenture, such design implants are you being utilized. Um, however, NDI has structural limitations that inevitably lead to the following disadvantages. First, it has less surface for loading, resulting in decreased primary stability. In fixed prosthesis, it inevitably has a poor emergence profile and a higher risk of fracture due to overload. Let's take a look at a clinical case. A 72-year-old female patient was referred for extraction and bone grafting due to inflammation around four narrow implants in the lower anterior. The implants were one body type with uh, irregular spacing and paths that were not uh, parallel. This resulted in two narrow gaps in the upper abutments and poor em emergence profiles making hygiene management difficult. The patient experienced significant bone resorption in the maxillary anterior region due to severe periimplantitis along with pain and swelling. On CBCT, implant number 32 showed osseo integration, while implants number 31 and 41 had severe inflammation and bone resorption, losing their stability. Implant number 42 showed bone resorption, but was judged to ha still have stability. The decision was made to remove the suprastructure and remove implants in number 31 and 41. After removing implants in number 31 and 41, fitting an easy to clean provisional, the post op three month panoramic image showed no inflammation and bone regeneration. Panoramic image after six months showed complete resolution of inflammation and significant bone regeneration, maintaining the implants in good condition. While NDI has limitations due to its structural nature and implant placement difficulties, it is judged to have sufficient strength in terms of survival in challenging environments. Then, why do we need to use NDI implants? As we all know, the ideal spacing between implants is at least 3 mm and 1.5 mm from adjacent teeth. For a standard 4 mm implant, securing a bone width of more than 6 mm is ideal for implant placement. However, in actual clinical practice, it is often difficult to secure sufficient spacing and bone width especially the lower central lateral incisors and premolars and the maxillary lateral incisors and second premolars are securing the width for a 4 mm standard implant is challenging after accounting for 3 mm gap with adjacent to teeth. Considering functionality and aesthetics, the ideal diameter for maxillary lateral incisors is 3 to 3.5 mm and for lower anterior teeth it is about 3 mm making the use of narrow implants inevitable. In clinical practice, implants with a diameter of 3.0 millimeter or less are being used. Uh, Austin has developed two types of implants for this MS implant and TS3 3.0. However, there are practical reasons for needing narrow implants beyond these theoretics. Let's look at another clinical case. A 41-year-old female patient was referred for implant placement, but the case involved a narrow bone width commonly observed in women who have lost their maxillary first and second premolars and have not been treated for a long time. You can see the flap has been reflected in number 15. The bone width was about 3.5 millimeters of suitable for implant placement, but in number 14, there was a narrow cr crustal ridge, especially with uh, severe resorption in the apical area. Due to concave nature of the apical area, it was difficult to attempt a ridge split, so it was decided to perform horizontal augmentation using titanium mesh. Titanium mesh was fixated first and between uh, bone and mesh. Xenograft materials were packed, a releasing incision was made, and primary closure was done. This is post of five months. You can see that there is a sufficient buccal volume allow, which allows for standard diameter implant to be placed. One guide 
Austin Wong guide fabrication was requested to, to place implant because there was sufficient bone width. Uh, I thought it would be possible to place implants with over 4.0 diameter, but if you look at the report results, uh, the mesiodistal width was not secured, so 3.5 millimeter diameter implant was planned. This is a uh, implant operation image mesh was removed and implant was placed because i wanted to make use of the bone grafted area in number 15 4.0 diameter implant was placed if you look at the panoramic image the this is before and after implant placement the ideal space was not secured although sufficient amount of bone width was secured and implants were placed, I wondered whether that was, was ideal. The patient experienced a lengthy process exceeding six months from the decision to use implants to their actual placement. The patient endured pain and swelling post bone grafting and a wide flap was re reflected to remove mesh incurring additional costs for bone grafting. In this case, an alternative view approach using two piece Two one-piece narrow implants could have been considered. In such scenario, for instance, in the number 14 area, simultaneous uh, G simultaneous uh, GBR implant placement may have been done. This is a 60-year-old female patient with Parkinson's disease. Uh, she had a severe trembling, and uh, she continued uh, to treat her symptoms. Uh, she underwent extractions and placed implants. In 2023, her conditions worsened with time. She underwent extractions, and in the maxillary area, bone grafting was done. While receiving treatment on the right side, she pre predominantly used her left side, leading to a fracture of her left bridge. <coughs> Consequently, she had to undergo implant placement on the left side as well. After that, all teeth began to show carious and periodontitis worsened, but the narrow implant on the upper left, which had been in use <coughs> since her first visit, was still well maintained. At the time when the patient came in 2018, I thought it would be uncomfortable, but she mentioned that there was no major problem. Looking at CT, the implant was well maintained without severe bone resorption or periimplantitis, despite the narrow bone width. In this case, rather than doing GBR and doing two-stage implant placement in the upper, perhaps I could have used a narrow diameter e that implant and had done immediate loading. Perhaps that would have been a better choice. To summarize, NDI are used in situations where there is a reduced mesiodistal width, buccolingual and labial palatal width, and in cases where adjacent to tooth roots are in close proximity. NDI helps reduce the need for complex procedures such as lateral bone grafting that can cause discomfort. Instead of staged bone augmentation procedure, NDI allows for simultaneous implant placement. Additionally, they're employed in various clinical situations to provide increased prosthetic flexibility. Let's look at the type of NDI developed by Ostom and their clinical applications. So first, we have the one-body MS implant. The MS implant comes in three types, narrow ridge, denture, and provisional. It is suitable for use in narrow areas like the lower anterior region. Designed as one body type, the MS implant is made to support occlusal forces effectively. TS3 diameter implant is two piece implant and it has similar fatigue strength as 3.25 diameter implant and there's less risk of a fracture. It is compatible with a TS mini 100% and it a lot of prosthetic options can be utilized. It can be used for two-stage surgery as well. NDI in the desired, placing NDI in the desired position in narrow spaces so would be nearly impossible without awesome one guide system. Therefore, the dedicated 1MS kit for NDI is essential. It is structured similarly to the conventional implant drilling system. An important point to note, regardless of the length of the implant being placed, drilling should always start with 8.5 drill to ensure drill guide contact. Drills with diameters of 1.5 mm and 1.8 mm are prone to fracture during drilling, so it's crucial to avoid strong vertical pressure. Gradual pumping motions are recommended. TS3 3.0 oh, you can place it using one MS kit and there is a dedicated cortical drill and that is the difference with MS implant. 
Let's look at a MS narrow rich clinical case. This is female 52 year old and number 32 was extracted due to chronic periodontitis. You can see that there is lower anterior crowding and there was lack of uh, prosthetic space. Partial ortho treatment was done. Without the bone grafting, MS narrow ridge was placed. At. It was placed sufficiently deeply, and this is after prosthesis delivery after placement. Next is a 64-year-old male, and four an lower anteriors were extracted. One MS kit was used to place MS narrow ridge in ideal positions. This is after a four-unit bridge prosthesis was delivered. This is 47-year-old male patient, number 31, 32, 41, teeth were missing. One MS kit was used to place MS narrow ridge, and because primary stability was weak, provisionals were fabricated as shown. This is after final prosthesis delivery. This is a 47-year-old male patient who had to tooth of number 42 extracted. Uh, different types of narrow implants were already placed in positions in number 31 and 41. Concerns existed about narrow space between number 41 and 43, questioning the feasibility of another implant. Uh, by utilizing one MS kit, successful placement of 2.5 millimeter MS narrow ridge implant was achieved in this tight space. Let's look at this image between the two implants and uh, tooth, ideal spacing was secured. If I did not use a one guide system, I would not have been able to place implants such accurately. Let's look at a surgical clip. This is played at a rapid speed. One guide is adapted. Tissue punch is used to remove the overriding mucosa. Bony contact is checked and guide is adapted once again. Flattening drill is used to flatten the bone. By doing this, the thin initial drill will not slip. It will not also get jammed between cortical bone. Drill and guided drill contact is maintained and pumping motion is done. Next, implant diameter. Drill that is according to, that is pursuant to the implant diameter is used. Bony penetration is checked. I am checking whether it's sound. And guide is adapted once again. Then, next, to drilling. 8.5 drilling is done. MS narrow ridge is placed. It is placed about 80% using engine. And implant driver is used to get final position. I am adjusting the position as shown. Sufficient initial torque is secured. And on the other side, Implant placement is done. Narrow ridge implant is adjusted using implant mount and I'm checking whether there is any interference. Next is a TS3 3.0 implant case. The superior prosthetic space is tight, so it was impossible to place the implants, and TS3 implants were placed without GBR, and the suprastructure was made, and the cantilever design guide was used to place the implant. On die cast, 
the suprastructure was made in cantilever design and the patient used it nicely after surgery. Next is a 20-year-old female patient who was referred from orthodontic clinic for implant placement. Tooth number 44 had to be extracted due to severe root resorption and in number 42 and 43 exhibited a knife edge ridge making the placement of narrow implants challenging. Lateral augmentation using mesh was performed but the implants because there was no sufficient buccal lingual width, it had to be placed deep. And for superstructure, TS3, 3.0 and 4.0 were placed, and a three-unit bridge was planned for prosthetic restoration. This is panoramic image after implant placement, and uh, it, this has been two years since prosthesis delivery. A 37-year-old patient with a history of trauma to the upper anterior teeth visited for implant placement before going abroad for training. The patient had delayed treatment for a long time and upon examination, all four upper anterior teeth showed inadequate alveolar bone, particularly in the area of number 12. There was a noticeable lack of usable cortical bone. GPR was performed using titanium mesh. At the time of graft, I made a mistake, and in the upper right, when fixating with a screw, it was placed too deep, and mesh design did not exhibit convex form. Compared with the right, comparatively small amount of bone augmentation was achieved. I should have fixated it more towards the top. But this was overlooked at the time, so there was less bone augmentation. When I removed mesh four months later, although lateral augmentation was done in number 11 and 12, mesh molding was not done sufficiently, and the desired amount of bone was not achieved. Uh, however, I was able to place, I thought it would be possible, it will be possible to place 4.0, but because the bone knee width was lacking, and the other areas also exhibited lack of bone. TS3, 3.0, four TS3s were planned. The patient needing to travel soon desired quick completion of the implant procedure. However, the bone graft had not sufficiently hardened and the remaining cortical bone was sparse uh, during implant placement. Minimal torque was achieved in number 11 and 12. A two-stage surgery was planned. Second panoramic image was taken after second surgery. Three months later, temporary teeth were given and uh, due to patient's imminent departure. Despite concerns of a stability of the implants, when the patient returned after a year for follow-up, the conditions were found to be satisfactory. Currently, the patient is scheduled for final setting of the implants. Uh, this patient came for implant placement in number 42. The patient was 43 years old. There was very severe alveolar ri Ridge resorption in number 41 and 43, and 41 showed a severe mobility. After graft, implant placement was planned. After three months of healing post-extraction, titanium mesh was used for lateral and vertical augmentation. It was not easy to fix the mesh on the bone particle in tight area, so small window was formed to four, or the small window was formed to tightly pack the bone and primary closure was done. The upper mesh was exposed after two months and lateral mesh existed and one guide was planned. Uh, vertical bone augmentation was done. Implant length was very long. Suprastructure became elongated. TS3 3.0 was planned. This is pre-op and this is after GPR. And this is panoramic image after implant placement. Last week, a lateral mesh was removed. The TS3 3.0 implant was placed. This is discussion. Evidence for survival rates of narrow diameter implants is already well established. And now let's review recent studies focusing on other aspects of NDI. First, let's look at the one piece versus two piece NDI regarding stress distribution. Compar the comparison included 2.5 millimeter one piece, 3.0 millimeter one piece, and 3.5 millimeter two piece implants. The results indicated that for stress distribution under vertical and lateral forces, two piece implants may be more advantageous. Ad 
Additionally, extra narrow implants were shown to be significantly disadvantaged under lateral force. However, since the study did not specifically fo focus on 3.0 millimeter diameter to piece implants, further research in this area is considered necessary. Next, in placing NDI in the posterior area, 319 NDI and 620 regular diameters were compared, and there was no major difference in terms of survival rate. A higher BOP was identified among narrow implants, but there was no higher bone loss when compared with SDI. Placing NDI without bone augmentation in atrophic ridge and standard diameter implants placed in area with a horizontal augmentation was compared. NDI alone showed 97.8%, and SDI after GBI, GBR showed 97.9%, so there's no major difference. A recent study published in MDPI compared to Austin's narrow implants. Over two years, a total of 23 implants, including MS 3.0 and TS 3.0 and 3.5, were placed and evaluated. The study focused on several parameters, including implant failures, prosthetic failure, complications, and changes in peri-implant bone levels, as well as pink aesthetic score. The findings indicated that all 23 implants functioned very well without any issues. All NDIs involved the digital approaches for implant placement. Although the sample size is relatively small and long-term follow-up is needed, the study suggests that successful outcomes may be due to the appropriate use of two types of implants in combination of the one guide system. This is take-home message. Clear evidence exists for survival rate of NDI. Regarding success rate, there needs to be more evidence. We can use one piece and two piece accordingly with different situations. And uh, Austin 1 MS kit, MS TS 33.0 is implant is a good solution for a narrow ridge. I believe that there is need for future research on narrow implants used for posterior area. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Q&A will be entertained after the second speaker's presentation. Next, let me invite Professor Pei Aran from Kyunghee University School of Dentistry on narrow implant the prosthodontic consideration and longevity. Professor Pei Aran. Good afternoon. I am Pei Aran, Department of Prosthodontics, Kyunghee University. Today, I'm going to talk about narrow diameter implants, prosthetic considerations, and longevity. Indications. This was. Uh, discussed before, but I will introduce that. Narrow diameter implant uh, from the prosthodontic perspective, uh, there are considerations in terms of the differences from the standard uh, diameter implants. Uh, we are concerned about the longevity, so that will be discussed. If you look at this case, the canine is congenitally missing. In the mouth, if you look at the evaluation, mesodistal width and buccolingual width um, looks sufficient, and it is a canine. So, but if you look at X-ray, 
countries um, the proximity to route so standard implants cannot be placed it is uh, canine so a narrow diameter implant was placed recently elderly patients uh, are increasing in some patients uh, bone grafting cannot be performed the age of patient and compliance of patient and treatment time and costs can be the limitations. In 2018, in the sixth consensus report, uh, country indications include the bisphosphonate medication in large volume, no problem in low dosage, chemotherapy, or irradiation. So bone grafting can be risky in those patients. Recently, minimally invasive implantology is becoming a trend. This is rather old. In 2016, Academy of Oral Implantology, uh, the members were surveyed. 12,865 dental implants. So. Um, Procedure avoiding bone grafting is preferred and guided surgery is increasing. Narrow diameter implants are increasing. So uh, between 2005 and 2012, 5.5 um, of the implants were short implants, 19.5% were uh, narrow diameter implants, and 10.6% guided surgery. As Dr. Park um, mentioned, depending on diameters, uh, there are three groups uh, in terms of narrow diameter implants, mini implants and narrow diameter implants. So these, this is another classification, as you can see in the photo. The mini implants is usually uh, thinner than three millimeters in diameter, and it is used for uh, interim purposes or over dentures at the beginning, and it is used to, with the flapless surgery. However, three millimeters to 3.5 millimeters in general, the narrow diameter implants are used for definitive fixed prosthodontics, and in general, uh, they have a two piece design and the bone graft um, procedures. Uh, can be performed uh, using two-piece narrow diameter implants. Many companies produce narrow diameter implants, one-piece or two-piece implants. Many companies have narrow diameter implants uh, with varying diameters. We need to check. Uh, depending on manufacturers, uh, the torque of tightening prosthesis is different according to their recommendations. So you need to keep that in mind in terms of tightening of a prosthesis. Indication. It reduced the amount of interradicular bone, narrow alveolar crest, and you need to look at uh, the space in cervical area. Uh, emergence profile needs to be considered. Contour of the residual crest, biomechanical factors, and occlusal analysis. These are the same considerations as for standard implants. In general, in the upper centrals and the incisors, the lateral incisors, and the anterior on the teeth in the mandible is other reasons. The available space should be uh, when the space available is less than six millimeters. The ideal tooth implant distance is uh, 1.5 to 3 millimeters. So narrow diameter implants can be chosen when the space is small. Interradicular distance is less than six millimeters. 
orthodontic treatment can be provided, conventional restoration bridge can be provided, and the narrow diameter implants can also be considered. At the early days when we uh, did the implants, at least one millimeter bone was uh, necessary when I was a resident. A regular diameter implant placement, if it is uh, the four millimeters, the four millimeter apocolingual width is necessary, and then a bone graft can be uh, performed when they cannot be accommodated in the maxilla. Only one at all, and other papers talked about for uh, thicker peri implant the buccal bones. The buccal bone should be at least 1.5 millimeters. If a buccal bone um, is not 1.5 millimeters, um, physiologic pathologic bone loss would occur. So rather than wide implants, there um, implants can accommodate more buccal bone. Proceedings of the 7th ITI consensus conference this year, how thick should the buccal bone wall be after implant placement in healed sites? A buccal bone wall thickness of 1.5 millimeters or larger is recommended. Bone augmentation reduced the implant diameters or placement of implant deeper in alveolar crest were recommended. So if you look at, at the bottom, in many uh, clinical studies, a reduction in buccal bone wall thickness of 0.3 to 1.8 millimeters is observed after implant placement. So that has been observed according to the reports. That means uh, at least um, two millimeters of a buccal bone needs to be secured. Homelay Wang and uh, in other studies, uh, peri-implantitis, in more than 40% of such cases, buccal lingual bone width was less than two millimeters. To summarize, so uh, these are the indica indications of four NDI, breaches, um, edentulous jaw, and splinting to other implants. There's a no clear consensus regarding that. Regarding posterior region, I will discuss the matter a little bit later. In the lower anterior and upper uh, letter incisors, if um, the width is uh, less than 4.5 millimeters, NDIs can be placed. The narrow diameter implants, uh, just like the standard implants, uh, the implant must be 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter more apical uh, to the adjacent tooth. A clinical case the existing implant and uh, perio problem and the periodontitis made the, um, it to be extracted and the natural tooth also was uh, extracted. The bone graft the FGG was uh, done and their diameter implant was placed. A bridge was uh, provided. And then um, you can see it is stable. So a little bit of bleeding is uh, observed. Multiple surgeries were performed and scar tissue is observed. Five year follow up uh, photo, uh, ideal tissue contour is maintained. So in the anterior region, a breach um, can also be indicated. In the upper central incisors, the visual dimension, visual distal dimension is eight to ten millimeters, and here it is a six point two five millimeters, a very small central incisor. In this case, 
uh, narrow diameter implant can be used. In this case, uh, the maxillary canine, it is uh, the mesiotissal width was pretty good. In the case of canine, in the lateral movement, if you can control occlusion, um, this can work for canines as well. Emergence profile, uh, depending on implant location, uh, the abutment emergence profile can be different. In 2021, uh, the paper was published. Uh, a slightly labial implant location, centered implant location. In those cases, concave abutment emergence profile was uh, used at the palatally placed implants, labial soft tissue on the convex abutment profile to push uh, the soft tissue labially. In another famous article, uh, According to Katafuchi, the bone level implant emergence angle of more than 30 degrees and convex abutment profile, the perimplantitis risk was clearly higher. On the for an ideally placed implant, slightly concave abutment is uh, indicated, and uh, a little bit of a concavity um, with the abutment is very important. Standard abutment, not only for standard implants, narrow diameter implants, um, should you use concave or flat emergence profile. That's what we are trying to do. Regarding the thickness of soft tissue, in this case, um, due to resorption, uh, the lateral incisor was uh, extracted and narrow diameter was used. The customized abutment. And it was uh, showing uh, th through so in general zirconia or titanium abutments um, should not be showing so two millimeter or thicker soft tissue is required to prevent that narrow diameter implants when it is uh, placed lingually to secure the thickness of soft tissue. Soft tissue augmentation, if it is possible, on um, more aesthetic results can be obtained. This is a case I show a lot during abutment classes. Congenitally missing on case and the ortho treatment was uh, provided, but the spaces are not consistent. And the vocal lingual congenital missing patients have a very narrow bone width in many cases. So, uh, various uh, diameter um, implants from different manufacturers were used. So, the shape of prosthesis varied. As you can see, shining through effect. I talked about uh, the shining through of abutment. You can see the effect. Titanium abutment was used in screw type or zirconia abutment um, was used in some cases. If you look at here, nine year follow up. When buckle bone is not sufficient, resorption and gingival recession occurred, um, and uh, not only the abutment uh, shining through, the abutment itself uh, is uh, shown through. So buckle bone wall thickness of two millimeters is very important, along with the thickness of soft tissue. Emergence profile. If I go back to the topic again, concave emergence profile on the left, standard or narrow diameter implants uh, require that. In this case, 
if uh, impl implants are not placed in sufficient depth, emergence profile cannot be appropriately obtained. So placement um, position, the depth of a placement in three-dimensional um, positions is very important. Uh, personally, I uh, prefer to use a screw type uh, restoration. Uh, zirconia restoration should have at least one millimeter of thickness to withstand uh, the load. And zirconia itself should be one millimeter in thickness in NDI. When the screw type is fabricated, the one millimeter thickness should be secured and it is difficult to get the emergence profile. So emergence profile of the prosthesis is rather fat, as you can see. To fabricate a screw type, tie base abutment and the monolithic zirconia crown uh, is customized, as you can see in the middle, one millimeter if it is not secured. Uh, this is a cantilever type of prosthesis, so this is the more so. Uh, the cervical area a fracture is observed. An emergence of profile that we want it could not be achieved, so when we use NDI, three-dimensional implant position is very important. Uh, otherwise, uh, the peri-implant um, peri implantitis can occur biologically. In this case, the soft tissue was very thin, and the lateral incisor is congenitally missing in this patient. Hard tissue, soft tissue, uh, both were lacking. And narrow diameter implant was planned, and the soft tissue grafting um, was not to be performed, and uh, the implant was placed, but uh, the tissue was very thin, and th there was a shine through effect, so zirconia was used on the x-ray. Um, it looks um, okay in terms of aesthetics, but in the long term, the contour on what kind of effect the contour will have in the long term is uh, something we need to observe. And uh, the implant was uh, placed uh, in depth, so titanium link must have been used. So that was the uh, that was the afterthought. In this case, also uh, the canine narrow diameter implant was uh, placed for restoration, but on the X-ray. In this case, uh, the depth of placement was not sufficient, so uh, the over contour, the emergence profile was uh, observed. The three-year follow-up, it is still maintained, and this is a young patient, so it is uh, being maintained, but in the long term, we need to wait and see. Implant depth. This is important. So uh, the implanted depth, as you know, subgingival margin for subgingival margin, 0.5 millimeters, two millimeters for soft tissue thickness and for platform switching. Uh, 0.5 millimeter of height is required. So 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter. Uh, below the implant is recommended to be placed. Regarding the abutment height, as I showed you cases, the abutment height, when it is not sufficient, the peri-implantitis can develop, as I said before. According to Blanco paper, when it is less than two to three millimeters, the marginal bone loss is greater when the abutment crown margin is less than that. Due to trauma, the implant was extracted and 3.5 millimeter implant was placed. 
if you look at the central incisor on the right, uh, right after delivery of prosthesis, the papilla uh, was not filling the gap. The distal interproximal bone was non existent almost. Uh, that is the reason why three months later, papilla has grown quite a lot. So there's a no aesthetic problem. So when uh, prosthetic contour is not uh, sufficient, um, if you have uh, emergence uh, profile, um, we can obtain aesthetic results. For ideal emergence profile, the implanted depth uh, should not be too shallow. Then a bulky contour needs to be made. If it is too deep, concave contour can be achieved. But as you know, um, impression taking is difficult to do, and the cement, the residue cement can remain, and up to implant the platform, uh, the marginal bone loss would occur. So according to Daniel Boozer, deep as necessary, shallow as possible. You need to keep that in mind. One body implant was placed in this case during the lunch break. Doctor also talked about uh, cementation of a one body implant. As a prosthodontist, I this is not my favorite, but uh, sometimes we have to use this. In many cases, the transitional transitional restoration and uh, for over denture, this is used uh, quite a lot. In a clinical study, a very good outcome has been reported. So, uh, in the lower anterior region, immediate implant placement and uh, loading. Um, it's uh, necessary in some cases. Immediate placement was performed. And uh, palatally, uh, lingually, um, the placement was made lingually. Uh, one week after provisional and two months after the delivery of a provisional. On the day of surgery, provisional tooth uh, delivery is uh, quite a burdensome on the part of a surgeon. The cement residue, the uh, flap is closed um, just now and removing all the remaining cement is um, quite challenging. If possible, I try to adjust the retention and um, Provisional is not cemented for about a week. It's just um, I explain it to the patient because of the uh, risk of uh, residual cement. Um, this is done. One body implant. The setting of the margin is very important. This is something we need to carefully think about. The cervical line of adjacent tooth, 1.1 to 1.5 millimeters, it shouldn't go down further than that. And another important thing is that, according to many papers, uh, monolithic zirconia is polished. Vespathic porcelain veneering is not done. Then soft tissue integration is achieved more. Monolithic zirconia um, doesn't have a static problem, so uh, we don't uh, do porcelain buildup. And the polished zirconia is a good option. And uh, if pol if a veneering is required, uh, uh, then only uh, a small part can be veneered. A stable outcome is observed here. A narrow diameter implant is placed in the lower anterior region. The buccal lingual dimension is very thin. 
So on the palliative side, some the patients、uh, complain about、um, the, some. They feel something there, and the speech、uh, problem needs to be explained to a patient. In the case of one body implant, the abutment height is hard to adjust. In most cases, the abutment height is low, so frequent、um, fallout is a concern. So,、uh, GPC、uh, or other permanent cementation is made. As many dentists said before,、uh, in the sixth I see. ITI consensus meeting. One of the topics that they talked about is the short diameter implant and narrow diameter implants, and the loading protocol or biological、uh, complications.、Uh, there's a lack of data, even though、um, it was a consensus.、Um, Consensus. If you look at the bone grafted area versus non-bone grafted area, as、uh, the previous speaker said, there is a lack of、uh, long-term data. So, in the lower anterior region, in this case, the bone graft was done, and standard diameter implant could be placed. But in the lower anterior region. Implant would go up interproximally, so narrow diameter、uh, can be more static compared to standard implant. So that is used in, in a bridge case for lower anterior. This is the planning we did. A very small、uh, buccal bone is observed. So the implants were placed rather deep. And right after the surgery, on the day, they were immediately loaded with a temporary restoration. After two weeks, the temporary restoration was removed, and soft tissue healed quite、uh, properly. After two months, final restoration was fabricated, and then period periodontally compromised the patient. Uh, so, a vertical bone loss、uh, was quite severe, and long-term follow-up is required. And if opportunity presents、uh, itself, I will、um, make a presentation on this.、Uh, the concern about NDI fractures,、uh, prosthetic complications, are what we are concerned about. Uh, this is a, a study with uh, uh, Dr. Kwon Yongde, a clinical outcome of narrow diameter implant, a three-year retrospective study. 274 implants were followed up、uh, from three to six years. Osseo integration failures occurred at the beginning. Periimplantitis emerged later, but the survival rate is. 92.4 percent, an acceptable level. To avoid the bone grafting, we use、uh, narrow diameter implant. That's correct. But at the bottom, if you look at the bone graft、uh, in the anterior region compared to posterior region,、uh, we perform the bone graft more. To keep soft tissue contour for aesthetic reasons,、um, we couldn't avoid the bone grafting even if we used the NDIs.、Uh, prosthetic complications, screw loosening, and porcelain fractures occurred, and、uh, implant fractures, abutment fractures have not been observed yet. More long-term report、um, would be made, hopefully. So、uh, the prosthetic complications, standard di compared to standard diameters,、uh, the cantilever can 
um, be used more so compared to regular diameters uh, and the eyes would have more prosthetic complications in the posterior region narrow diameter implants are used to um, to reduce excessive bending moment and over contours and the marginal ridge occlusal contacts uh, need to be avoided so narrow diameter implants um, when they are required in the posterior region occlusal cons uh, consideration is required to prevent the perimplantitis emergence of profile prosthetic design considerations um, should be um, given and that's the same as the standard diameter implants so according to the statistics published by the government if you look at the red bars 65 or older uh, the age the people will increasingly uh, go up until 2070 with aging uh, society implant cases will increase and the fear of pain cost and complexity of the treatment may affect the treatment acceptance in this patient group if you look at this photo uh, he's my friend after bone graft uh, he take his picture every day and uh, the change of colors the bruise uh, 82 year old patient he sends me the photo every day which is quite stressful if we can do implant placement without the bone graft um, patients will accept our treatment plan more readily so um, we need to consider patient specific diagnosis and systemic condition if we choose the correct indications um, cases and the eyes can be utilized as you can see in this case in the interior single cases would be it, it the best indications um, and the bridge can be also used in the interior and clinical guidelines should be followed in the posterior region. I hope this um, has been of help to you. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the good presentations. Clinically, I have used MS implants, uh, Dr. Park Song Min's case. One body implant uh, was placed. Uh, you used um, one guide. And uh, you didn't show us any CT images. So my impression is that the direction of bone and uh, the matching of direction is very difficult uh, sometimes uh, they are lingually positioned so uh, they can have uh, prosthetic problems so we usually use a uh, two-piece instead of one body so uh, their use is limited uh, what do you think about that another thing in your case um, in the anterior uh, four anterior incisors, you placed uh, the four uh, three point five, 
in the upper interiors. Narrow implants can be used, but um, it is difficult to, to avoid lateral pus. So, um, have you thought about additional GBR uh, to use a 4.0 or standard implants? Don't you think um, placing two of those and have a breach? Do you think that's better? What do you think? MS1 body implants are placed. And when I prepare, it was not the treatment for this lecture, so I didn't take a post-op CT image. So in many cases, um, they are used. Narrow reach. In narrow reach and the unfavorable conditions, I use it, but the cases are not very often. Um, surgically, two piece implants are better to use. Two piece implants um, is not intentionally used. Uh, there was a clinical limitation, so I had to use them. It was not my choice. So there are implants. I will select the cases where I can intentionally use the narrow implants in the upper anterior region. The patient didn't have um, enough bone width due to personal reasons. The patient um, didn't want additional GBR because the patient had to leave the country soon. 3.0 implants. In the quadrant two, the initial torque was good, so four unit breach. I expected it would go well, but my mistake was that I didn't secure the volume sufficiently, and it was a thin reach. And I used the GBR with mesh and. Uh, if I used the screw fix the GBR, it could have been better. And then there were implants in the anterior region. Even though it would be a little bit cumbersome, um, to avoid the cumbers and cumbersome of that, so we use the narrow implants in order to overcome that. Um, we need to consider the possibilities from GBR to acquire sufficient initial torque. I don't know whether that answers the question. And online questions. Um, Dr. Pei, you can answer that clinically, as you said before. A one body implant was placed, and uh, the direction was not appropriate for prosthesis. One body abutment can be reduced. Do you have any tips for that? Reducing, yeah, one body implant is placed, but the direction was not correct for prosthesis, so you can prepare an abutment. That's an online question. In advance, everything needs to be prepared. Uh, uh, the lengths are different, long and short. If uh, the direction is labially inclined, long needs to be a long one should be used, uh, and uh, reducing it should be planned in advance. In most cases. I prefer to use a screw type in almost all cases. So this is the same for all oral surgeons. So they are placed uh, lingually, palatally. So it was lingually inclined in that case. Aesthetically or in terms of soft tissue profile, uh, there is no problem. It was lingually inclined, but uh, the patient can feel some feeling, a foreign object feeling with the patient's tongue. That can be a problem. One piece implants, I don't have a lot of experience with that, and it is not my favorite. And removing cement, 
I'm not sure whether um, I did the clean job in the margin setting, knife fetch margin or shaper margin or shorter margin. So I'm not sure about that. So when it comes to one piece implants, uh, those are the stresses uh, that I have, so I don't prefer to use it. So um, we will have uh, five more minutes for Q&A. Um, do you have any other questions? I asked this question in the morning. Uh, through asking a question, we can make sure Dr. Park in the lower interior region or uh, the lateral or premolar in the maxilla, the reach is narrow. So in that case, we place deep and um, positioning in correct direction is important, but over time, uh, the gum would go down and periimplantitis or dehiscence can occur. So on um, during surgery, um, it was okay, but l expecting going down later, aosis collagen, a bios collagen can be used, uh, alveolar undercut or crystal, um, crystal can be made this stronger. So do you have such cases? I don't have a lot of clinical experiences, so I cannot dare to give you any conclusion in the long term. Bone resorption is something we cannot avoid, especially when we place narrow implants. Uh, we need to be careful in narrow reach. We need to reduce the bone. And one guide is used for uh, fine tuning, but sometimes we can, we can reduce too much of, of the buccal bone by mistake. So on two place narrow diameter implant, and the flapless is good when the bone is sufficient, but a uh, flap is used using a lens drill or a uh, surgical burr is used uh, to make indentation lingually. In terms of the depth, I try to place as deep as possible, but in terms of long-term follow-up, I do not have a lot of uh, clinical experience, long-term experiences, so um, I believe I need more study in the future. Okay, I have done a lot of long-term follow-ups myself, so when Richie is narrow, Alveolar undercut should be considered, and in order to do so, if possible, two pieces is the answer rather than one piece. Even though um, later, if problem occurs, uh, the prosthesis can be removed and uh, address the problem. So my strong recommendation is that collagen, and not using membrane, the osteum's new materials and uh, materials have been advanced quite a lot recently, so using such approach is recommended. I believe that will give you a very good outcome. Uh, may I ask you? one more question to Dr. Pitch? Just an urgent question, one urgent question. Longevity test for narrow implants, is it, uh, is it for from one manufacturer? No, then it is a little bit ambiguous you need to focus on one type of implant from the same manufacturer. Yes, and we have uh, some um, statistical results, but uh, you gave me just 92% uh, success rate, and, which is encompassing all manufacturers and all implants, so uh, you need to divide the results. Okay, it's um, 45 in minutes, so we need to close the Q&A. Thank you very much to speakers. And the best questioner needs to be selected. The first questioner, 
from the floor. Nickname also uni is the questioner who asked the question online. Uh, congratulations. So this concludes session three. Please give another warm round of applause to the two speakers and uh, goodbye from me too. So session three is concluded. So I'd like to thank Dr. Shim jun so who chaired the session and two speakers to give them a big round of applause. And this is the um, third coffee coupon lucky draw. 600 people will win the coffee coupons. Who are the winners? Let's do the lucky draw now. So many people won coffee and dessert coupons. Congratulations. And the uh, coffee coupons will be sent via text messages. Um, you can check whether you won the gifts uh, through bulletin board of the NO site. If you are not lucky enough to win the gifts, uh, uh, be patient that there's another um, lucky draw. And uh, uh, session four, another uh, lucky draw will be held uh, a break. Up to three o'clock, we'll have a break. So in session four, Dr. Kim Hyun Jung will lead live surgery. We look forward to it, and uh, we will come back shortly. Thank you.
In addition, to macro-belie a sin's based on deletions unique to the rely without covering the one. So the patient can fit on easily and accurately as one. Macro-belie provides diagnostic analysis files and 3D setup simulations to help establish accurate treatment plans. In addition, orthodontic treatment can be carried out according to the initial treatment plan by applying the magic setup system that checks and supplements the tooth movement every 12 weeks. Start orthodontic treatment with magic ally that can correct various orthodontic cases accurately and conveniently. Is in 1980 millimeter diameter and has seven different types of thickness, 
Introducing OneJet LCD, the next generation 3D printer specialized for digital dentistry. A dental 3D printer should be highly accurate. OneJet LCD features an array type LED that emits light uniformly across all sections and a mono LCD with excellent light transmittance performance. It is also capable of high precision printing at 100 micrometer or less across the entire output plate, meaning the user can apply the printed output to the patient without a separate adaptation process. A dental 3D printer should be fast. The OneJet LCD has printing speeds of up to 30 millimeters per hour. It can print a wide variety of procedures, such as surgical guides, provisional teeth, models, and splints within 30 to 40 minutes. OneJet Pure Plus features a high-intensity light source, which helps pour materials within 2 to 7 minutes. Thus, the user can fabricate and place the required procedures on the same day the patient visits the clinic. A dental 3D printer should be easy to use. OneJet LCD offers four functions that improve user convenience during dental procedures. First, the user can send procedures data wirelessly and print. Second, the build plate is easy to assemble and remove due to its magnetic connection. Third, the printed prosthesis can be removed vertically without the risk of breakage or damage. Fourth, the automatic OneJet support setup function reduces working time. A dental 3D printer should be easy to manage and maintain. OneJet LCD alarm informs the users in advance for replacement of the LCD panel. Furthermore, the LCD panel is easy and simple to replace. It maintains the optimal printing environment, which prevents errors in prosthesis fabrication. Introduce high precision 3D printing at your clinic with the fast and convenient next generation 3D printer, OneJet LCD. Great unit pair designed for dental treatment must be convenient for the clinicians to use, feel comfortable for the patient during treatment, and they should also be easy to clean and maintain. I would like to introduce K5 is both a stylish and convenient unit pair. In case the backrest tilts downward, the leg rest goes up. The clipping function prevents the patient from slipping down. It is convenient for the clinicians to carry out treatment and provides comfort for the patients to receive treatment. This is the highlight of awesome meeting. This is the second live surgery. Before we begin, 
we're going to have a fourth event. You can currently check out the fourth event to pop up at the demo site. Don't miss your chance to win coffee and dessert coupons. The results of the draw will be announced after the conclusion of the live surgery, and the coupons will be sent via text message. Today's second live surgery has been prepared by Dr. Kim Hyun Jong. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Professor Kim Sun Jong of Ihua Women's University Seoul Hospital. Professor Kim Sun Jong graduated from College, Dent College of Dentistry at Yonsei University and completed his, her residency in oral and maxillofacial surgery at Ihua Medical Center. He earned his doctorate. Master of Medicine from Korea University and Master, Master of Public Administration from Seoul National University. Let's welcome Professor Kim to the stage. Greetings, I'm Professor Kim Sun Jung. Dr. Kim Hyun Jung is going to present us with live surgery under the topic MS implant and one guide. Let's look at Dr. Kim Hyun Jung's uh, profile and we're going to look and watch his pre op clip. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Kim Hyun Jung. Uh, I'm with the Seoul Top Dental Hospital. As was introduced, the topic of today's uh, Austin meeting is short and narrow implants. Today, I'm going to talk about the narrow implants. So, the implant surgery um, would be using MS uh, implants and one guide. I studied in Korea University majoring in oral surgery and did residency in uh, oral surgery. And I am uh, have practice in Sochodo. Uh, today's uh, agenda, a simple introduction and MS implants. And I'm going to talk about uh, live surgery case, uh, case review. I will review it with you. First introduction. Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't choose uh, narrow implants as the first choice, but uh, sometimes we have to use uh, narrow implants in some cases. So as you can see here, uh, tooth is lost in the lower anterior region. If we are to place an implant, a regular uh, diameter implant cannot be placed. The same is true when two teeth are missing. In this case, uh, regular implants uh, cannot be really placed. As you can see, when three teeth are missing, the space is uh, quite sufficient. So we can use a regular uh, with an implant um, implants to do the restoration. So when four teeth are missing, two regular diameter implants can address the problem. As I, as we saw before, when one tooth is missing, a narrow diameter implant needs to be used. And today, I'm going to introduce this paper. Uh, the general lower anterior tooth sizes are indicated here. It is about Korean adults with normal occlusion and their tooth sizes and ratio, published by Yonsei University. 753 patients with a normal occlusion, their tooth with the word measured, surprisingly, uh, in the case of male, the average is uh, 5.38 millimeters and uh, 5.20 millimeters uh, for females. Uh, the letter incisor width is uh, 6.0 for male and 5.8 millimeters for female. This is average. Uh, there's a standard deviation, so there are many patients with a smaller tooth width than this. The upper numbers are female average uh, width and the lower anterior tooth width um, for male are indicated in the lower numbers. Uh, as you know, ideal implant position with uh, some space uh, between 
teeth and implant. The space should be about 1.5 millimeters. And uh, ideally, uh, that should not invade into the tooth space. In this narrow space, regular implants are hard to be placed. As you can see, a very narrow implant with a diameter of 3.5 millimeter would require an average space of about six millimeters. Uh, so in general, the average lower anterior tooth width of male is 5.6 or 5.4 and female. 5.2 and uh, 5.4 so um, regular restoration is difficult so uh, we can use MS implants from Austin as you saw before in difficult cases the one body 3.0 or 2.5 millimeter MS implants can be used to easily deal with aesthetics in such cases <coughs> As you can see, uh, if there is a 5.5 millimeter space uh, in width, uh, we can place implants and they can be static and functional. As you can see, two implants are used for two lower missing anterior teeth. When two lower anterior teeth are missing, we can place um, to place uh, two regular implants. Um, 12.5 millimeter space is required. Uh, but as you can see in the lower anterior, if uh, two MS implants are used and if the gap between the implants uh, can be reduced a little, uh, 10 millimeter space is needed for aesthetic and uh, safe treatment. Uh, MS implants look like this. Uh, as you can see, in general, the length is uh, the part uh, where implant surface treatment is provided, uh, the concave area is the gingival height, uh, which is 2.5 and uh, 3 millimeters, and the prosthesis is connected, uh, which is 7 millimeter. So today, we are going to use uh, one guide in MS implants on, on the real patient in the live surgery, as you can see. One guide MS um, implant uh, surgical kit is available from tissue punch. Uh, the sequential drilling, uh, the implant can be placed for effective and easy placement implants. So this is 2.5 and 3.0 diameter MS implant drilling sequence. So this is for your reference. So MS implants and one guide will be used on a patient in the live surgery today with you. Case review, a 80 year old female patient, quite old, but um, she's quite healthy. She received implant treatment before. She has high confidence in implants. Uh, the lower anterior region, number 41, has mobility and pain. So we decided to place an implant at number 41 in uh, the mandibular implant plan, 3.0 millimeter diameter by 13 millimeter uh, on MS implants. Uh, Interoral photos, as you can see, the mandibular anterior region has crowding. Um, due to compromised the periodontal situation, the tooth mandibular anterior uh, number 41 is protruded and the uh, bone width is narrowed and regular cannot be placed and um, in this case uh, are you going to you are you going to extract uh, the adjacent tooth and place regular diameter implants and um, for effective implant treatment the ms implant placement can be the answer for this live surgery case this is panorama bone resorption has uh, progressed to a certain degree as you can see this is the CD view the CD image and intraoral scan models are um, merged to fabricate a guide in my case uh, I use the implant studio to fabricate the guide directly if you do not have that you can use the Austin OneGuideOstem.com online. So if you upload the scans and CT, uh, you can discuss the matter with uh, uh, the doctors who do the guide design to fabricate the implant surgical guide. So if you send the information after some time, various uh, patient file um, will be obtained. The surgical preparation would be made, including a guide. So uh, that way we have prepared 
uh, the surgery. Let me explain. As you can see, this is a surgery report. As was uh, explained before, MS implant with a 13 millimeter length and 3.0 millimeter diameter and change of a height of 2.5 millimeter for surgery. As you can see, the implant position can be uh, estimated according to this report. Next, um, yeah, during the surgical design, a file submerged for the design and implant positioning. The CT image center order scan submerged for accurate implant positions. That's um, how it is uh, designed. Next, today, uh, after placing MS implants, uh, a temporary tooth will be provided. Um, that's how we designed. So this is a temporary design we made. As you can see through the report, we would uh, uh, determine the implanted position, a temporary position relationship with adjacent teeth. In the report, on the right-hand side, the implanted positions. So uh, the distance uh, to the tooth is uh, 0.12, 1.12 millimeters, and 1.02 millimeters. Very close, so a slight mistake can damage uh, the adjacent teeth, so using uh, one guide, more safe and comfortable surgery will be performed. As you can see, uh, this is temporary design, and uh, for safe drilling, a template is used. Uh, so this is how the guide is designed. Uh, today, we have prepared open style guide. So to show you the drilling sequence more clearly, I chose a sleepless open style for better visibility which will lead to safe placement. Next today, buccal gingiva may become thin or bone loss will occur over time. So a small bone graft will be um, performed. With some bone graft, MS implants will be placed safely with one guide. So this is the guide we have prepared. When we use a guide, the guide hole diameters can vary. In general, when we use one guide, it is usually 5.1 millimeter regular diameter drills, and the hole diameter is the same. Uh, in For narrow diameter MS implants, the guide has narrow holes. The 3.6 millimeter diameter hole guide is uh, fabricated. To check accurate engagement of the guide, uh, the milling tool is used to, to uh, check um, the accurate guide and whether a surgery uh, can be performed properly. So this is uh, the guide and the temporary uh, fabricated uh, going through all those steps. And today we are going to use the guide and an um, MS1 guide to place an implant. So I am going to attach a temporary tooth after the surgery. Uh, surprisingly, the surgery can be finished uh, very quickly. And if you uh, need more information, I will explain along the way. The surgery is ready. So let me move to the operation room and do the surgery. Dr. Kim Hyun Jong, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let us begin. I'm honored to be here. And I would like to express my gratitude to my patient as well. A lot of uh, people have put in effort, so I want to express my gratitude to Professor Kim Sun Jong. Thank you for providing your input. I look forward to your continued advice as mentioned. Today, in number 41, in lower anterior, there was mobility. After I filled my pre-op clip, there were some changes because number 41, there was significant mobility for surgery. 
We wanted to preserve the tooth as much as possible, but there was pain and mobility worsened, so last week uh, extraction was performed. So it's slightly different. Originally, I planned the number 41 to be present, but we have already extracted it, so it's different. But the guide and provisional prepared ahead can be used. So we are going to proceed with surgery as is. So it's been only a week, so I don't think there is going to be a major change biologically. As mentioned, I'm going to proceed at Let's look at intraoral situation, say ah. Anesthesia was performed ahead as shown. Number 41 has been extracted. It's been just a one week. And you can see extraction socket to fill is happening. The bone fill may not have occurred yet. In general, MS implant, when it is placed, uh, we do flapless or we proceed without GBR. That is the general preference. I have been placing MS implant for long, and based on my experience, after placement with time, gingiva becomes uh, thin and the uh, implant can show through. A recession can also occur, hence, as shown on the labial side, uh, GBR and membrane will be applied. First, when I do implant surgery, I always emphasize the way you hold the tool. When you hold mass, when you need to be able to balance the blade on your finger, you need to hold it properly, you need to do rest properly. This is basic, but I emphasize this over and over. You need to be able to have a good grasp of the tool. This is single case, it's not complicated, there's slight undercut, so a precise incision is necessary. In general, incision may not be done on the other side, so I am doing it on the other side as well. You can see the blade going in. Extraction socket healing has not occurred whatsoever. Flap reflection is planned. When you reflect the flap in general, So I want to propose a, a way to reflect the flap easily. You don't push the flap on the incision line. You use the periosteal elevator and twist it slightly by doing this. Almost as if it doing making fulcrum during extraction. Fault, flap can be reflected in this way more effectively. Today, the plan was not to make vertical incision. As we proceed with the incision, if there's a lot of tension in gingiva, then I'll proceed with vertical releasing incision. Flap has been reflected, as you can see. On the labial side, the flap has been reflected. On the labial side, flap was intentionally reflected. In general, flapless surgery is preferred. And uh, when we are to do guided surgery, flapless surgery can be done very precisely. But as in this case, if there is a slight recession or if the bone thickness is too thin, then in consideration of recession and excessive contact to cortical bone, bone graft needs to be done. And reflecting flap is preferred in this case as shown. Dissection is done sufficiently. This is extraction socket and around it and inside granulation tissue exists. So this will be removed slowly.
when I go to implanted treatment the seminars, the questions that I receive most frequently is how thorough should you be in removing granulation and inflammatory tissues? Personally, I try to do thorough debridement. I am using periocurate and I'm using it to remove granulation tissue, especially in extraction socket and in the presence of inflammation. I try to do a thorough job. If you take a look on the labial side, retractor is being used just slightly. In the low, lower anterior, when you do a thorough job on the buccal side, if you just focus on the labial side, on the lingual side, cortical bone pe penetration can occur. So we need to prevent such situations. We need to check it. Periosteal elevator can be positioned like this, and this can be of help when proceeding with surgery. The questions may come to your mind. If you're going to do this, so why do you use a guide? This question may come to your mind. If you look at this case, adjacent teeth are slightly tilted, and in order to get the right path, or we're planning to provide a provisional in order to do Are you uncomfortable? So I think the patient is feeling slight discomfort because we're removing granulation tissue. If you feel any discomfort, Please raise your arm, or you can just voice your discomfort. It can feel a little bit. You may feel pressure. If you feel uncomfortable, just feel free to tell me. Uh, on the inside of granulation tissue, there may have been inflammation, and the patient may feel discomfort. And in this case, I apply anesthesia. You may feel a slight sting. If you feel excessive pain, please tell me so. Are you okay? Dr. Kim, number 42. Is there mobility? In the case of number 42, there is slight mobility. There's no periapical lesion, and there's a slight lesion on CT. It's slightly overlapping. Today, we're just going to remove granulation tissue and then place the implant. If the adjacent teeth is unhealthy and because the path is very important here, in this case, guided surgery is recommended. Bone graft, are you going to do it using tunnel rather than giving vertical releasing incision? Yes, uh, today we are going to use uh, two membranes. Uh, there's two membranes from Austin. One is hard type and the other is soft type. Today I'm going to use hard type. I'm going to apply it on the soft tissue and in between I'm going to do bone grafting. And in the gap, if necessary, bone grafting will be done. For a significant period of time, I've been doing debridement. And on the inside, in my feel, it does not feel as if it's soft tissue, but you can discern it with a sound. But as shown, you can see here it slightly now. There is slightly more here. So up to the inside, sufficient debridement has been done. So can you see it? Up to the extraction socket, sufficient debridement has been done. From now on, I'm going to place the MS implant. As mentioned, prefabricated guide is going to be used 
uh, shown the you can see the guide in the case of MS implant guide as we engage it the guided drill and uh, <coughs> the design length it's about uh, 13 millimeters if you're going to use excessively long drill then it can just spin so drilling is going to be done so that the guy can be engaged properly because a guide can shift my assistant is going to hold it down as shown here I'm engaging the guide drilling will be commenced as shown sufficient up and down motion is done irrigation is done for initial drilling the length of the implant to be used is 13 millimeter implant as mentioned before in the case of narrow diameter implant it's not my first choice but if i were to use it in surgery for lower anterior in this case i would use a longer implant today i'm going to use 13 millimeter implant this is the second drill this is the same diameter earlier i've used a 8.5 millimeter initial drill now 13 millimeter you can see that it's engaged unless it is 8.5 it will not engage so engaging will be done first is there a reason why you open the labial side first is for cooling or to check depths today as we do surgery drill depths and stop cannot be visible so i chose an open design if it's closed then you'll not be able to see the height in the case of lower anterior i think there are some questions uh, isn't 10 millimeters sufficient rather than 13 millimeters uh, did you choose 13 millimeters based on your clinical experience or is there a special reason at times in the case of ms implant you inevitably have to do immediate loading temporization needs to be provided you cannot just send the home patient home with implant you provide provisionals in that case the primary stability becomes a very important in the case of MS narrow diameter implant, uh, you cannot increase torque too much. If the torque is a 40-50, then in the neck area, torque can get concentrated. So in order to make a safe, safer way, I try to increase uh, the length. So that is why I use a 13 millimeter length diameter implant. Do you feel uncomfortable? Anesthesia will be performed once again. In the case of this patient, this is equivalent as an immediate case. I agree that you need to use 13 millimeters. If it is healed to ridge, then 10 millimeter would be suffice. In this case, as Dr. Kim has mentioned, for primary stability and for loading, you need to use a longer implant. Next, a drill sequence will be proceeded. 2.3 millimeter diameter drill will be used. Originally, I was going to drill up to 2.7 millimeters and place 3.0 implant. The bone is more soft than anticipated. There is little resistance against the drilling, so I'm not. I'm going to forego the final drilling and proceed with implant placement. So drilling has been done.
and I'm going to place an implant. As you can see, when you place it, the arrows, the arrow on the drill, on the flat surface, usually arrow is indicated, so that is the matching guide for the placement. Uh, the black uh, the stripe is the laser marking, uh, 2.5 millimeters at the top and the laser marking at the bottom, 4 millimeter gingiva height um, is indicated. So using guide, 30 newton centimeters. It is inserted very slowly. Today, the implanted position as the flat surface is uh, toward the lingual labial side. As Dr. Pes said, I agree with her. If we place the MS implant in the lower anterior, because of the implant, the anterior teeth would become convex. So to avoid it, We have the flat surface face uh, labially. The last thing, a torque wrench is used, as I said before. The temporary will be connected very accurately, so the placement depth, and it should go in a little bit further. And the direction is aligned. As you can see, so according to the guide, you can see the slot. When you use a hand wrench, what is the maximum rotation that you can use for the narrow implant if you apply too much force? Usually, 40 Newton centimeters or less. So recently, the drills they have a torque indicated, so it is a set to 30 Newton centimeters. When you use a hand wrench, you have the feel whether it goes in very tightly or not, so you have the feel. So guided implant placement has been completed. Next, bone grafting on the labial side and where bone is lacking. Ostem membrane is to be used. Uh, the big size is cut in half and the contouring is already made. On the labial side, this will be inserted as you can see, doctor, in another lecture, sticky bone is used. What do you think about that? In most cases, sticky bone is made, PRF uh, from patient is used, but uh, today we have not prepared it so. Uh, rather than sticky bone, the bone graft material, uh, the bovine bone is uh, to be used. A patient, are you okay if you have a any uh, discomfort, please let me know. A 
membrane is pushed in gently. And this is pushed outward a little bit to create a space. So the space is made on the labial side and the bone graft material would be inserted in the space. I don't know how much difference it would make, but later when MS implant is a place in the lower anterior region over time, uh, implant can shine through. So due to physiologic remodeling, the labial bone would be resorbed quite a lot. So rather than vertical incision, I use a tunneling. Uh, carefully, I insert uh, bone graft material. Sorry about that. Are you okay? <laughs> so can I ask a question while you're doing it? Yes. So sorry to bother you, but uh, we have received a question. 2.5 millimeter implant is available, but why do you use a 3.0? We have TS, and you're not using 2.5, but you're using 3.0 MS implant. Why do you use that? As I said before, I want it to last longer, and I want to reduce the failure rate, and uh, I want to use something that has a lower uh, failure rate. So, for example, I am aware that 10 millimeters is um, good enough, but I want a thicker and safer option. As Dr. Park said, 3.0 TS implants, I used them before, but biologically uh, it is 3.0, but it is uh, bigger than 3.0, and it is, uh, two, it is not as thin as 2.5, so I chose the 3.0. I chose one guide, so a thicker implant uh, could be selected. So outside, the bone feels convex here. So I'm going to clean it with water. So there are a lot of uh, particles inside your mouth. A temporary is prefabricated. The fitting the one guide, as you can see, the direction and shape is uh, quite appropriate. A bone graft material that I use, the membrane, I'm going to show them. The Austin AOS and OS membrane. Hard and soft options, and I prefer the hard ones because inside, If it is hydrated, it becomes too soft, so I cannot push it in. So if you use a hard type, it can be easily pushed in. So that's why I prefer to use the hard option. Now suturing. The suture is chrome, chromic. I can use a nylon, but in this case, uh, suturing is not challenging. Nylon suture, because of tension, it is difficult to remove. So chromic uh, doesn't have to be removed, and it uh, is removed uh, automatically. So I use a chromic. The advantage is that um, it falls off naturally, and uh, the suture compared to nylon is weak. 
So we need to be careful when we do suturing. And it is a week under tension in our patients. Um, people love uh, this suture because there's no stitch out step. So MS implant, the result of your hospital, there are so many outcomes. Do you usually use a 3.0? Yes, mostly 3.0. And not many cases where 2.5 is used. When two are used in the lower anterior, uh, then I use 2.5. So in this patient, uh, you don't do stitch out separately. That's right. I just check, and sometimes I remove it myself if uh, the patient is traveling from afar. Uh, I just uh, tell the patient uh, to come back in about a month. Then you will find them all disappeared. It is uh, like a uh, rotting of a uh, rubber band, and they just uh, fall off. So you have many patients um, who travel to visit your clinic from afar, so that your consideration. And I don't want uh, subject patient uh, to pain. 4050 nylon can be used, but sometimes um, I cannot find the end, so that's uh, the confusion I may face. Therefore, I prefer to use. Uh, is temporary fitting good? Yes, I showed you before. So I want to check the articulating paper. But so please um, close up the shape of the temporary. So oh, what kind of cementation do you do? It is uh, slightly underbite. Oh, please close your mouth so it slips away easily. And the change of uh, direction is OK. So uh, the temporary is prefabricated. As you saw, uh, it is uh, rebounding a little bit, as you can see. So a one, two, three is a twisted in terms of occlusion, but uh, the fitting is uh, pretty good here, as was asked before. As Dr. Pe talked about um, cementation, in this case, mostly I use a high bond. Would you mix it with high bond? And sometimes we can check. In the MS Guide Kit, there's a tool like this. This is uh, the duplicated abutment to check retention and uh, to see a temporary. In cementation type, cement access. So if we cement right after surgery, that's the concern. And it is difficult to, to meticulously get rid of them. And after uh, cementation, this is used if you have a model. These days, um, we use the model-less approach. In that case, as you can see, uh, so um, more sufficient filling, please. So we use a model-less approach. So customized abutment or abutments in the past that we used. And then we fill the model with the cement. And the excess is um, squeezed out, and a temporary is mounted. 
so you can have appropriate amount of cement. So for this temporary, the, the direction is a little bit different. Now please bite tightly. Uh, thank you very much for your cooperation. So, and with the cooperation from the patient, everything went well. Uh, so, was it painful? No. Uh, I was very worried about the patient. Thank you very much again, patient. And uh, in about 10 days, I'm going to check, and you come back tomorrow uh, for disinfection. So, MS implant one guide live surgery has been conducted. And uh, this is my first time to be here. And uh, I can see so many preparations have been made, and many people have uh, helped me. And uh, I have done what I wanted to do. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim, and all the staff who prepared uh, the live surgery. Thank you very much. So you saw the pre-op video and you saw surgery live. Thank you very much. And uh, I believe you have some questions first. Uh, let's open the floor for questions from the floor. As you watched a live surgery, do you have any comments or questions? Professor Park Wan-su. Thank you for the comfortable and the stable surgery. My question, I have a question. In the previous session, um, I had this question too. And uh, you did uh, bone grafting on the labial side, as mentioned in the previous lecture. In the lower anterior, 1.5 to 2.5 um, millimeter should be secured for long-term stability. In the lower anterior region, when we place a narrow implants, even narrow implants, on um, obtaining that uh, labial a bone is not easy to obtain, and um, bone grafting should be done on um, when uh, the thickness of the bone. Do you have any criteria when we need to perform bone grafting? How thin the bone should be? Okay, right now. Dr. Kim Hyun Jung. So the question is from Professor Park Wan Su in the interior, low anterior, how thin should be the alveolar bone requiring bone graft? And I heard the question here. So at least the one millimeter should be secured. When the wall is thin, uh, recession can occur over time, and uh, the bone bone it can become bottle bone, which should be avoided. Extraction socket in the past um, was um, the jumping distance was emphasized, so the labial bone thickness is important for bone graft. When bone thickness is thin. I try to use a bone graft like in this case. In some cases, uh, how much ossification would be performed? So uh, to be honest, I'm not sure about that. So when we do uh, bone graft and soft tissue enhancement over time, if we can achieve them, there is a clinical long-term differences when we do them versus when we do not do them. So as you ask the question, so. Uh, one millimeter width is uh, something I aim for. So, does that answer your question? Thank you for the for the answer. Um, so, two millimeters in the upper anterior, but um, in the mandible, the thin bone can be stable 
over time. So do we have any criteria? If I may add, as I said before, uh, not uh, two to three years, but over five to six years, uh, most of the cases uh, that I did, uh, the congenital missing cases in young patients, uh, patients in early 20s, uh, if you do surgery in the lower anteriors, after four to five years, uh, they tend to become thin and um, implants would, the grayish implants would shine through in some cases. So I try to thicken the bone on the labial side. And not only MS implants, but uh, implants in the lower anterior region. On the same for regular implants, so we encounter the same situation. So two millimeters in the upper anterior, and I will study more on that. Dr. Song mo -kyung. And Dr. Kim Yeon jong thank you for the good surgery. You use the temporary. When I use MS, you have a dedicated cap uh, that is binding with the resin, and it clicks in, and the cap doesn't come out. And I think uh, using the cap is very important for impression taking and for other purposes. But uh, if uh, the resin temporary is made, uh, there is a cement problem. And uh, it is difficult to take a margin impression. So I always use dedicated uh, cap for MS implants. Uh, but uh, you use uh, the resin temporary uh, deliberately. Why did you go in that direction? As you know, on the lingual side, and if it is crowded, uh, the crown should be reduced later. So uh, to be in the tooth contour, we need to control the depth. So I pay attention to the contour. But you are not checking from above. Uh, maybe you already considered that during treatment plan. So if it is to be ex uh, protruded, I place deeper. So that's my question. Thank you for the good questions. When we place MS implants, the first question on the depth uh, is important. The first question was about uh, the temporary sleeve, and the second question was about depth, but uh, the answer is the other way around. Uh, during surgery today, I was of uh, the camera angle was different, but I was checking from the above, and uh, I used the guide. And the temporary was uh, printed using a 3D printer, and so today I didn't use uh, sleeve, as you know very well. This is a single case, so uh, I didn't use. Uh, I use a temporary the guide and temporary. And uh, the fit of the temporary is always a concern. And uh, if it is a three, ca and a three tooth cases, uh, the fitness may not be perfect. So checking direction is very important. Uh, even though I use the guide today, when I do not use the guide, uh, when it is uh, in contact with the bone in the lower anterior region. The direction can be changed. So uh, when the path is not um, correct, full drilling of the cortical bone is uh, important, and uh, there is a danger of lingual perforation. In that case, uh, you need to check uh, the lingual side and the plastic sleeve when we routinely place implants and when we do uh, prosthesis, uh, the sleeve is very good for margins, but a 3D printer was used for the temporary, and the guide form was already set. So uh, the temporary was uh, fabricated using a 3D printer. The 13 millimeter long is used. 
So in many cases, it touches the cortical bone. So I hardly use 13 millimeters because 13 millimeters um, can create the fenestration. So I don't really use 13 millimeters. Uh, so you use uh, 13 millimeters. Uh, don't you encounter such cases frequently? As I said before, I use the guide and I do not use the guide. The path can be changed, as I said before. If the direction is not uh, the fitting, uh, I need to do preparation to uh, prepare for this. Is, uh, I prefer to use uh, 13 millimeters because of stability. So uh, I will have um, more uh, courage and uh, adopt the shorter one. And it is important uh, um, whether we use 2.5 or 4.0. The neck plays an important role. It uh, depends on um, it, it can change the uh, depth. So live surgery video, uh, the images are available. So let's have a look at them. This is the implant position placed depth uh, is the proper according to the plan and the direction uh, the temporary um, when it like that even though the slot was there and um, I'm pride I take pride because um, it, this went exactly as planned and it is close to an adjacent tooth. I was uh, concerned whether it can invade the space in the adjacent tooth. Uh, but uh, using the guide, the implant was easily placed. And uh, the implant placement was uh, completely like this. So time is up. So uh, let's um, ask one more question from the chatting window. Uh, change of a height to 2.5 and 4. So when you choose, uh, what is the criteria in choosing one of those? 2.5 and 4.0. The criteria when a periodontally compromised the patient um, with a lot of bone loss. In that case, after implant is inserted, um, even though with the bone grafting, a soft tissue, and if there's a adjacent teeth, 4.0 is used when MS implant is to be used without a guide, and implant is a place that sometimes it went too deep, and then the upper part is not visible. Then 4.0 is a good option. And uh, if um, a trauma case or if there is a problem in the case, as you saw before, the adjacent teeth in this patient uh, were almost sound. So 2.5, a change of a height, MS implants can be chosen on um, better clinical and aesthetic option. So today, I used the 2.5, a change of a height implants. So this concludes Q&A session. So the best questioner, two questioners are chosen from the floor, Dr. Song Mo Gyeong, and from the chatting window. So the nickname So is chosen. So thank you very much for your cooperation, uh, Dr. Kim Hyun Jung. Um, my gratitude again. And this concludes the session. Thank you. Express, we would like to ex express our gratitude to Dr. Kim Hyun Jong and the moderator, Kim Professor Kim Son Jong. We will now complete the fourth session, and now we will look at the winners of Lucky Draw. Three hundred people will receive coffee coupons, and two hundred people will receive uh, bakery coupons. We will begin to look at the results. Five hundred winners have been announced. Please refer to the dental site. Coffee coupons will be sent to the winners via text. 
We will have a brief break as we close the fourth session. In the fifth session, lucky draw will be held. I hope you stay tuned. In the fourth floor, there is exhibit booth and the break space, so I hope you enjoy it. See you in a bit.
Introducing the Trios 4, an intraoral scanner which scans and visually replicates the oral cavity in three dimensions. The Trios 4 is extremely precise and offers fast scanning. It automatically eliminates unnecessary areas such as ribs and cheeks during the scanning using the AI scanning function. Even the novice user can scan tips and easy. The Trio 4 is an integrated wired and wireless scanner. It is easily used wirelessly at the large dental clinic. If the battery runs out, clinicians can continue using the Trio 4 by plugging in its power cable. The Trio 4 helps diagnose dental caries with its fluorescent scanning function. Also, the clinicians can track changes with dental caries over time. The Trio 4 can record patients' occlusal movement. The patient-specific motion function allows clinicians to record occlusion according to the movement of the patient's temporomandibular joint. Experience the Trio 4. It can be used in variety of treatments. Great Unicare designed for dental treatment must be convenient for the clinicians to use, feel comfortable for the patients during treatment, and they should also be easy to clean and maintain. I would like to introduce K5, which boasts a stylish and convenient unit care. In case the backrest tilts downward, the leg rest goes up. The tilting function prevents from slipping down. It is convenient for the clinicians to carry out treatment and provides comfort for the patients to receive treatment. The K5 also has a wireless tube controller designed to offer an even more convenient treatment experience for the clinician. Transient RPM can be easily adjusted by turning the foot pedal left and right, making treatment. water supply device discusses formation of bacteria and biofilm in the water line of the unit chair. Always using clean water during treatment makes it much easier to reduce the risk of infection. Let's go over K5 key features again. The patient does not slip downward thanks to the tilting function. When the backrest tilts downward, the left leg goes up. Second, the wireless tube controller makes treatment much more convenient for the clinician. Third, BWC is the passive bacteria in water line to supply only clean water during treatment. Try the K5, a unit care designed to add both convenience for the dentist and comfort for the patient. Introducing the SM5, the dental impact surgery engine that provides safe surgery with its accurate port calendar and drilling ability. First of all, SM5 provides accurate drilling results thanks to its outstanding checking time. The implant can be safely shaped since the implant is firmly shaped, minimizing unstable vibration. Moreover, the port value and rotation speed can be checked with ease on the LCD panel during the surgery. Try the SM5, the surgery engine that has outstanding checking port and that displays its port value and rotation speed during surgery. Introducing the upgraded T2 Plus with superior high resolution imaging, ultra high speed scanning, and ultra low radiation dose treatment. The T2 Plus has a 0.05 millimeter voxel size, which results in superior high resolution imaging. This enables a more accurate diagnosis compared to the T2. With a T2 Plus, patient waiting times can be reduced thanks to a faster scanning speed compared to the T2. Images are acquired in just 30 seconds. T2 
CP Plus low radiation mode allows for safer scanning with only 22% of the radiation gel shape compared to that of the DC. The low radiation mode allows scans for children and pregnant women without any concerns. The T2 Plus offers various field of view sizes for facial imaging, implants, skin blades, antidontic procedures, and more. The T2 Plus allows for customized scanning based on the treatment. The T2 Plus includes convenient and easy to use 1T software, 1T, and reset. Through consultation, treatment and implant planning will help increase patient acceptance rate. T2 Plus is available in three colors, white, blue, and red. You can choose the color that best matches the ambience of your clinic. Introducing the upgraded T2 Plus with clearer images, shorter scanning time, and lower radiation dose. Introducing the N1 portable x-ray, delivering high quality imaging while being extremely easy and simple to use. A good portable x-ray should produce clear images. At 70 kilovolts and 3 milliampers, the N1 produces clear standard x-ray images. Clear images relieve the clinician's stress during the diagnostic process. A good portable x-ray should be easy to operate. The N1 is light at only 1.61 kg, which is 30% lighter than a camera-type device. Also, it has a gun-type design which is easy to operate with one hand. This ensures easy alignment and high accuracy when taking images. A good portable x-ray should have a long-lasting battery. With the changes from improved battery performance, the N1 lasts for a week on a single charge, eliminating problems with other wireless X-ray units. The N1 reduces the inconvenience of continuous charging, which helps improve clinical efficiency. The N1 is easy to use and produces clear images. With X-ray images alone, it can be very difficult to convince patients since X-ray images don't offer a complete picture of their oral health status. Fortunately, today's products can help you with this very problem. It's the SHAP Intraoral Scanner. One of the most important things you need to consider when choosing an intraoral camera is image quality. To help the dentist explain the condition of the patient's teeth and set the correct course of treatment, intraoral camera needs to take clear images inside the patient's mouth, even though it's very dark inside now. SNAP uses a 1.3 megapixel sensor, unlike other regular intraoral cameras that pop out at 300,000 pixels. That's why it delivers clear HD images that can satisfy everyone. Another important thing of an intraoral camera, which has to take images as quickly as possible, is the focus function. Snap focuses in just 0.3 seconds when you press an image taking button and snaps images automatically, which helps produce clear, imperfect images that accurately show the patient's intraoral condition. Some existing products do have an autofocus function, but they have two separate buttons, each for focusing and image taking. However, Snap has a convenient two-in-one button. All you need to do is press the button once to capture fast and imperfect images of the patient's intraoral environment. And finally, an intraoral camera's head and neckline is very important since it has to take images from narrow spaces inside the mouth. Snap has a curved head and slim neckline that gives you a better angle for reaching the teeth and inserting into the mouth, which makes it easier to image not only wisdom teeth that are difficult to see, but also female patients and children 
you have small doubts. From the patron state pressure, this reduces any foreign body sensation and discomfort, while from the dental state pressure, it reduces stress when imaging the posterior region and makes treatment easier. I was able to actually see which teeth were collagen, and that makes me have trust towards dentists and left a better impression in my mind. I feel like I want to come back to this dentist in the future, and I'm going to recommend this clinic to my friends and family. Since I saw my teeth with my own eyes, I think I'd be more likely to get dental treatment without hesitating. Intraoral camera shots have expertly explained the teeth, the conditions of their oral environment, and create a more credible and trustworthy impression of the dentist and canal technician. Introducing Ostrom Implant Hyso Plus. Hyso Light Plus is excellent at reproducing fine areas. Hyso Light Plus can reproduce 20 micrometer lines without any tears or distortions. The stone model poured from a Hyso Plus impression produces smooth surfaces and separate screens. Thus, the user can fabricate accurate and precise twist edges. Hyso Plus is highly hydrophilic. Hyso Plus has a short intraoral setting time of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Hyso Plus offers a sufficient working time of 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Hyso Plus has a high elastic recovery ratio of 96.5% or more. Experience Hyso Plus for accurate and precise impression taking. I would like to introduce Rosex Plus. Rosex Plus is an automatic anesthetic injection device that injects an anesthetic solution at a constant rate. Rosex Plus has three buttons that allow the user to adjust injection rate from low speed to medium speed or high speed. You can also switch between auto and manual mode using Rosex Hardware one touch button Rosex Plus only weighs 80 grams, which is similar to a regular pill, and has a pin side grip that makes it easier to use when repeated injection of anesthetic is needed. Try using the automatic anesthetic injection device Rosex Plus. Implant prostheses are prone to straight impression. Straight straights stuck between braces are difficult to remove. Removing sheet straight completely from your teeth can be extremely difficult. Use wet tip every day. Then, the powerful jets of water can change placement between your teeth while using. You can select between three screening modes, squeeze, stop, and massage. You can select any water pressure that feels right for you. Thanks to the massive 320 milliliter water you don't have to refill the device with water while you're cleaning your teeth. 99.9% antibacterial silver ion filter keeps the inside of the water container bacteria free. Once you've brushed your teeth, make sure to finish with water. <laughs> Special 
지금까지 올리 시대를 최초 국민으로 할인이라는 특별한 조건으로 불출했습니다. 여기에 국민 동작 모델팀 40분을 추첨해 사법부를 정치특권에 최고까지 안겨드립니다. 오직 50편 미팅에서만 만나볼 수 있는 특별한 혜택. 지금 대동작 쪽에서 구매 가능합니다. 공사는 8천원, 특공창은 만원? 특공창은 뭐가 다른데? 뭐가 달라도 다르겠지. <웃음> 임플란트 하면 뭔데? 아, 뭐가 달라도 다르겠지. 오스템 임플란트. 네, the excitement continues to grow at AUSTA meeting 2023 Seoul. We now have reached our final session. Before be <coughs> we begin the last session, there's an important segment remaining. It's time for the eagerly awaited grand event. Entry to begin. Five lucky participants will win a Galaxy Bud 2 Pro. Three will receive JBL M2 wireless headphones. And one fortunate winner will be gifted a Bisco bespoke wireless vacuum cleaner. Don't miss this opportunity for winning amazing prizes. And please stay with us until the end. Now let's proceed with the final session of Austin Meeting 2023 Seoul. In this last session, three speakers will engage in a profound discussion on short and narrow implant about clinical significance and implication. Let me introduce the speakers. Dr. Cho Young Jin of Seoul DR Dental Clinic, Dr. Park Jung Chul of Hyo Dental Clinic, Professor Cho Young Dan from Seoul National University Dental Hospital. Please join us on the stage. Good afternoon. Thank you. I am Dr. Jo Young Jin uh, from TR Dental Clinic. Hello, my name is Park Jung Chul. I'm with the Hyo Dental Office. I am Professor Jo Young Dan. I'm from Seoul National University Dental Hospital. This is the last session of of the meeting. This is late hour of Sunday, and um, thank you very much for. Uh, being with us and I would like to thank the participants online to be with us. Uh, this is the last session and um, it, it has been a long hour, uh, long day and uh, please stay with us until the end. Uh, so this is the finale of uh, our awesome meeting and um, it is um, we are nervous and uh, excited about this uh, discussion. Uh, uh, Dr. Park, what about you? Thank you very much for inviting me at this wonderful occasion. And uh, it was uh, my pleasure to prepare for this discussion as well. And it is my honor to be here. Uh, Professor Zhou, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I am with uh, the wonderful uh, two panelists. It is my honor to be in this uh, discussion. Before, uh, let's get started with the discussion. Short and narrow implant, uh, the clinical significance and uh, implications. Short implant and narrow implant uh, will be discussed um, in the first half and the latter half respectively. And we are going to look at uh, the criteria and the clinical application and how they can be used. And we will um, talk about uh, indications and uh, how they can be additionally uh, used. Short implant and narrow implants um, are used in an abnormal situations. So uh, the clinicians can broaden uh, the clinical um, 
uh, treatment uh, range. So let's talk about the short implants first. So let's have a look at a simple case. Here, if you look at here, uh, recently this spring, I provided the treatment at number 16. Uh, the tooth is missing, and uh, an implant was uh, placed. The sinus graft was uh, simultaneously performed, and uh, there was uh, no problem in the surgery on CT. Everything looks okay, and no problems are observed, but uh, the patient um, complained that pain and the swelling a few days later. So the graft had to be removed, including the implant. So after the process, uh, I sent the patient to, to ENT department, and uh, various allerg allergy um, test was done. And uh, she had the uh, positive response to house uh, mites. And uh, I was reported that um, pulmonary function test um, she has uh, reduced the function, uh, the function of lung. So this is a very um, cumbersome situation. So uh, do you use this kind of approach in the uh, mandible? Yes, uh, the implants were placed a uh, long time ago in another clinic. Uh, 10 millimeter uh, implants were considered a standard. So on um, placing short implants on um, was considered as uh, not appropriate. In fair alveolar nerve is burning here, and um, it is difficult to, to place a 10 or a longer implants. So the implants were uh, inserted at angle to avoid in fair alveolar nerve, and the implant position is uh, the buckly position than desired, uh, leading to periimplantitis in many cases and the lower and upper, the normal place where they cannot be done. Sinus graft, can we reduce it? And um, if um, the implant is close to inferior alveolar nerve, but then uh, we can use uh, short implants, uh, escape from vital anatomic structures, not to invade uh, the structures. So this is a good solution uh, to speakers and Dr. Park uh, used the, the short implants in the live surgery and in the presentations. As you can see, the, this patient, uh, number 2 and 4 and 5, and, uh, the implants were placed before, and number 7 and 6, the implants are uh, planned. And uh, CT, pre-op CT, as you can see, uh, still uh, there is uh, some milky stuff in the sinus. Uh, and the vertical bone uh, length was 6.1 millimeters. So uh, I was wondering whether sinus lift should be done together. P cast drill or 485 kit can be used to uh, utilize the short implants. And uh, there are uh, specific drills and uh, tools for short implants, uh, number 26 and 27. Uh, TS3 CA 5 by 6 millimeter um, drills were used to in not to touch the lesion in the sinus. And the prosthesis was delivered. Uh, short implants can be utilized in the mandible, don't you think so? Yes, as uh, many cases they have been demonstrated in the morning. This patient had a periimplantitis, so implants had to be removed after the removal. Um, it was not comfortable to place the implants, so grafting was performed, and we waited a little bit. Guided uh, 485, 180, 485 kit can be used for placing short implants. And a guide was uh, fabricated, and one 485 kit was uh, used to place the uh, short implants uh, because uh, not enough uh, bone uh, to avoid uh, in inferior alveolar nerve. And the soft tissue was not good, so FGG was performed uh, to treat with the short implants. 
If you look at the photos at number 47, it is close to inferior alveolar nerve. So a guide was used with the 1485 kit. So it was completed safely, not damaging the inferior alveolar nerve. If you look at the CT, the implant is short, but it is wide. And the buccolingually, uh, it is stable. So short implants as uh, discussed in the morning sessions. Um, the criteria is different from doctor to doctor, so there's uh, no definite uh, criteria specified in a textbook. So uh, from uh, this morning um, until before this uh, session, uh, we did the survey using QR code. Uh, how short should uh, short implants be? So let's look at uh, the result. So we did the survey. If you look at the result, seven millimeter or less uh, is considered as short implants, uh, according to most people. And I agree with this result. So uh, regarding many uh, lengths, uh, short implants uh, are defined. The length of short implants, the definition. First, uh, less than 8 millimeters, uh, that's called the short implants. Ultra short is uh, less than 5 millimeters, according to uh, papers. It varies from study to study. Uh, the numbers are different. The reasons to use uh, short implants, as you mentioned, when uh, the surgery is very complicated, uh, the surgical time and efforts can be reduced by using short implants. So PubMed, uh, we search the papers, the short implants in millimeter. Many results are appearing, the papers. In 2015, EAO consensus conference talked about this, eight millimeter or less. Uh, those are considered short implants. Uh, 2017, according to ACP paper, um, between six and 10 millimeters uh, to be short implants. So the papers, um, the paper is um, in line with our discussion. How to distinguish length and diameter, so survey paper published in 2017. For the last four to five years, how uh, the perception has evolved based on the data. Awesome implant, and by implant length, uh, the sales volume has been uh, collected. And uh, if you look at this table from uh, the four, five, six, and the implant sales increases from 10 millimeters and beyond. Over time, the sales volume decreases by year. 8.5 and 10 millimeter implants, which is mo most popular, 10 millimeter implants are decreasing in volume and 8.5 increasing. So uh, after uh, 2022, 8.5 millimeter implants are used the most widely. So many surgeons um, regarded 8.5 as short implants, but it is not really short. It is almost considered as standard. And so this is not um, academic evidence, but uh, this um, can be derived from the data. So what we propose is that uh, short implants are seven millimeters or less. And Austin implant uh, produces uh, four and five millimeters, which is extra short. Uh, the entire length is the same, but the bevel size is different. So let's have a look at uh, the useful application of short implants. If you use uh, short implants wisely in the upper and lower, you can reduce uh, surgical stress and ease it conveniently. If you use it inadequately, then you can get uh, unwanted results. Professor Cho, can you give your input on this? 
When you use a short implant, the advantages are shown. You can avoid anatomical limitations, and you can reduce time spent on GBR and the effort put in it. You can, you no longer need to take a CT, and you do not need to spend money, time, and effort on sinus lift. If you look at the different uh, literature, in my case, I use uh, short implants of quite frequently, and uh, survival rate. Uh, compared with the standard uh, implant, uh, some say the survival rate falls short, uh, uh, whereas uh, some view that they're similar. Dr. Park, what's your opinion on this? If you look at the review study, short implant and standard implants were compared in terms of survival rate, but there was no difference. And in short implant, surgical complications occurred less. There were less surgical complications. This is a study from Zurich University, and statistics was done on the survival rate of short implant. If you look at what is marked in red, implant with di wide diameter, the success rate is 100% in short implants. If wide diameter can be assured, even if implant length is shorter, it, the survival rate can be more good. And if you look at the FE analysis, wide diameter and small diameter implants were compared and load is com concentrated on the crystal area in terms of load bearing if the diameter is wider it is better in terms of length it, with same diameter if the length is reduced the load is not less concentrated when using short implant if you increase the diameter you can get the better results so when you use a shorter diameter a shorter length you need to use a sufficient diameter when you use short implant we do not place it in a area with ample bone we need to place it precisely in limited places so we need to do analysis at three dimensionally there can be side effects if we do not we need to place the implant in accurate depths and direction, and that is very important. Compared with regular diameter or regular size, important. This is more important in that aspect. The guide of surgery can be used. One guide, one cast, one four eight five kit can be used. The com if you use it with combination of these, then you can get better results. The survey was done again. When placing short implant, what do you think of using digital guide? How necessary do you think it is? And uh, how often do you use digital surgery? Survey was done. If you look at the result, when placing short implant, how much do you need digital guide? So five, you think a digital guide is absolutely necessary, and one, it's usely, useless. If you look at the results, over half of the respondents find that digital guides are absolutely necessary, whereas when uh, placing a short implant, how often do you use guided surgery? More, less than thought, uh, people use uh, digital guides less frequently. We understand that the combination of short implant and digital guide is very good. Dr. Park, could you add that Dr. Kim Gi Sung has mentioned one case is using one 4A5 kit, and I use it very frequently myself. The patient had peri-implantitis leading to bone loss, and when you place implant here, although grafting was done significant, uh, at times the residual bone you get is not significant. In order to do surgery in a safe way, guided surgery was done. I've made a clip out of it. Twist drill with Y dimension and 1-4-A-5 also has Y dimension. The flat tip is flat. If you look at the video when you do the drilling, 
we, why dimension can penetrate the inferior alveolar nerve very easily, but for a 5 kit to drill has flat the tip, so it's very difficult to penetrate. And uh, the superior border of inferior alveolar canal can be pe penetrated very safely. And in that sense, uh, we can pre place implants very safely. We do not uh, damage the nerve at all. In number 37, you can see that implant has been placed uh, safely away from the inferior alveolar nerve. When you use short implants, the vertical space with adjacent teeth can occur. Dr. Park, if you look at your case, at number five, six, and seven in between, it, the difference does not look significant in that case. Um, no major problems will result. However, in other cases where there are significant changes with adjacent teeth periodontally, there can be major issues. Uh, Professor Cho, can you add? If you look at short implant the case, the implant, the pro, because implant is short, the prosthesis is elongated, and if the there is a drastic gap, and the length of the crown differs. Although you emphasize the need to maintain hygiene, because there is difference in the the prosthesis length that the patient finds maintaining oral hygiene very difficult. This will lead to peri-implantation, which will then lead to explantation as a periodontist. If you take a look, you see the red, yellow, and green lights. What is green is OK. The bone level with adjacent teeth is similar and crown size is similar, so the patient can maintain oral hygiene very nicely. The red, it, if you take a closer look, uh, compare with adjacent teeth, that there is difference in bone level and uh, the patient find it difficult to maintain oral hygiene. In that case, uh, with uh, the reduced height, you need to in put the prosthesis as much on top as much as possible so that the patient can use a proxa brush. You can see the prosthesis with yellow light and this kind of design is very important so that the patient can use proxa brush. I have mentioned that I use the short implants very frequently as a periodontist. I would like to give you my two cents. I do not use uh, short implants for first-time cases, but uh, I place a short implants when the patient cannot go through any more large surgeries due to peri-implantitis. This was the same for this patient. Because of peri-implantitis in the upper left and lower left, uh, the situations were dire. Implants were removed very easily. Sinus membrane perforation occurred. Sinusitis also existed in this case. If you look at the lower left, around the implant, there is dental calculus. In these cases, the patient does not want large-scale surgeries. The patient just wants implant. In this case, a short implant was chosen to treat the patient. In this case, the pillar becomes a shorter and the prosthesis becomes a shorter. So this kind of design is more recommended. And although there can be food impaction, we need to make a design so that the patient can maintain oral hygiene. To summarize, in order to provide a normal anatomical structure through ridge preservation or vertical GBR, a lot of time can be spent. And if you place a standard implant, the patient can easily and simply maintain the implant. It's more favorable for maintenance. However, if you place a short implant, you cannot make, uh, there is limitation in restoring the normal anatomical structure and then more effort needs to be paid in maintenance. So we can do surgery simpler but uh, we need to pay attention to the maintenance afterwards. These days on YouTube or entertainment programs, uh, the balance of pro uh, balance game is very popular. Have you watched it? Yes. So uh, let's play balance game. 
Dr. Park, if we short implants are if if you have to use a short implants only or if you cannot use a short implants at all, which one would you choose? Uh, just the short implants or no short implants at all? I will choose for I will choose uh, using short implants only. I cannot afford not to use it. So uh, there are x-rays. Regular implants and the short implants are splinted, and short implants are splinted, and a single case of short implant and crown implant ratio is not very good. So, how you are going to use them? So, uh, you chose uh, the short implants only, so you chose uh, three circles. When crown implant ratio is not very good, I don't want to use a short implants uh, prosthetically, so I chose X. Uh, but uh, listening to presentations in the morning, maybe my X should be changed to a triangle. Uh, Professor Cho, regular and short implants, when they are uh, splinted, you chose a triangle. Why? If you look at that case, ultimately the implant uh, the crest level, uh, there's a gap, there's a difference uh, that leads to crown length difference, and uh, that's uh, difficult for uh, patients uh, to clean for oral hygiene. So that would lead to perimplantitis. I totally agree with uh, Professor Cho. On the, the vertical ball level matching with the uh, adjacent uh, tooth is very important. And uh, short implants are used when vertical dimension is uh, small. So one tip is that if you can have uh, a longer distance um, between implants, uh, the vertical height is um, something we cannot um, do anything about. but. Uh, you should have more gap with adjacent tooth. So we talked about um, major usage of short implants and um, any complementary function of short implants. ChatGPT is very popular and uh, it appears on the news. So I asked about the short implants um, to ChatGPT and the significance of a short implants and AI answers like this, as you expect. Um, it preserves the vital structures like the maxillary sinus and inferior alveolar nerve, and um, the invasiveness of surgery can be reduced, and um, um, less surgical procedure and cost can go down. And additionally, uh, when original implant failed, as a replacement um, for failed implant, a short implant can be used. And um, there are some anatomically unavoidable circumstances where a short implant should be used. So um, these have been discussed uh, in the previous uh, presentations. Let's have a look at a replacement case. 12 millimeter long implant was uh, placed and the implant was mobile and the screw fractured. The screw w was to be removed, but uh, I felt something weird and I opened it up on the left hand side. Uh, implant was fractured, so it was removed. And then uh, implant position should be changed. And uh, if the bone loss was severe, it could be hard, but uh, we could uh, place implant immediately. We need to consider factors like uh, marginal bone loss and uh, implant uh, length. If it is uh, removed, uh, the drill hole in bone had a 12 millimeter long implant, so uh, then the implant uh, would be 10 to 11 millimeter long. So we need to choose appropriate length of an implant. 8.5 millimeter implant was um, placed um, from 12 to 8.5, uh, the length of implant. So shorter implant was used for the recovery. 
Short white implants were not used uh, quite a lot in the past. After the failure, the uh, next step would be very hard and tedious. Uh, the healing would take longer. So if you uh, place, uh, so you want to place the same length or longer implants, and uh, uh, there is a limitation of uh, anatomy. But if you use a shorter implant, uh, it works pretty well. Let me show you my case. About 10 years ago, uh, the treatment was uh, completed like this. At that time, number seven, the bone volume was lacking, so uh, we treated it up to number six, and the patient was lost uh, uh, to follow up, and after a decade, the patient came back. Number 39, uh, the bone resorbed uh, up to apical, so perimbalatitis uh, progressed quite seriously. CT, uh, the bone was resorbed up to uh, inferior alveolar nerve, and uh, placing an implant again at that site was unimaginable. So uh, ARP was uh, done. And at number seven, a short implant was planned. SS2CA 6 by 7 millimeter implant was placed uh, away from the inferior alveolar nerve using a castrio. And number four, five implants, and uh, uh, the posterior implants were uh, linked, and the pontic was uh, made. and. Uh, uh, this is the bridge that we provided. So uh, you did the very good design of the implant. Yes, external implant design, extra internal connection. Uh, splitting is not appropriate. So SS type platform um, with the platform was used. As Professor Cho said, if the platform has a big vertical difference, uh, the hygiene maintenance would be more difficult. So SS type has uh, colors, so uh, that's why I chose uh, that implant. Clinical significance of short dental implants. So as I showed you before, there are many advantages. And um, a replacement tool for failed implant. And the short implants can be used in an unavoidable circumstance, so they can be used as a last resort. So uh, the ultimate uh, last uh, solution can be provided uh, by a short implants. In the morning, Dr. Kim Gi Sung and Dr. Son talked about uh, with a lot of materials and uh, listening to the presentation, um, I um, became more favorable towards uh, short implants. So uh, let's go to the next topic, narrow implants. So this is the last session. It is uh, a little bit uh, tiring. Uh, let's uh, stretch. Uh, let's have a short uh, uh, stretching. Uh, let me ask a question, uh, Professor Cho. Clinically, short implants and narrow implant. If we have to choose one of them, which one would you choose? So two are used in different situations. As uh, Dr. Park said, the short implants. So I would choose a narrow implants. Personally, uh, between short and narrow. I use the short implants more than narrow implants, but there are circumstances where narrow implants are, uh, need to be used. So let's look at them. In this case, my case, a very old one. In 2004, uh, the lower lateral tooth was extracted and the adjacent teeth were rotated. So and the width was very small and the BL as well. So one piece narrow implant was uh, placed in November 2004. And the patient was a regular customer. And the patient uh, visited um, recently. And I took a CT after such a long time. Uh, the buccolingual bone is uh, stable, and uh, the implant is functioning pretty well. Uh, so in the lower anterior region, the width is small, so we uh, tend to 
use in their implants. One piece type is used. If uh, there is uh, more space, two piece can be used. Do you, would you introduce a case, uh, Professor Cho? According to papers, uh, two piece implants uh, have a higher survival rate compared to one piece and their implants. When I use uh, their implants, uh, for success rate, two piece and their implants are chosen. Uh, number 41 tooth was hopeless, so it was extracted. The original plan was uh, number 31 was rotated, so the rotated tooth uh, would be extracted and then an implant would be placed at number 32 and the ponte would be used, but uh, the patient insisted on using just one implant in the missing area, so a missing implant was chosen. Uh, the width was very narrow, and uh, the implant was exposed uh, on the buccal side, and the membrane covered the site. And then um, after five years, the patient uses it pretty well, so the, uh, I respect the patient's selection at that time. Their implant can be uh, used pretty well in the lower anterior. And uh, it is um, like an art that you place the, such implant uh, in such a very narrow space. So narrow implants uh, are usually for lower anterior. It is a less aesthetic region than the upper region. So let's have look at the criteria for narrow implants as was introduced um, at the beginning uh, ACP Journal 2017. Narrow implants are defined to be less than 3.75 millimeters. So uh, 3.75 millimeter was a uh, regular implant, uh, the first uh, Bronemark implant. So a regular platform was 3.75 millimeter. Uh, that can be considered as a regular size. Usually, if it is less than 3.75 millimeters in diameter, and they're called narrow implants, uh, there's a no uh, notice or disagreement to that. Austin has uh, two-piece, one-piece type in their implants. MS is one-piece type, uh, three millimeters or less. Uh, so these are here, a two-piece type. KSTSSS US, 3.0 millimeters, 3.5 uh, are available. So, useful application of uh, narrow uh, diameter implants uh, for a lower anterior region. And this is a summary. So, replacement of small teeth, uh, like in the lower anterior or uh, lateral incisor and premolars uh, in the upper jaw, their implants would be used. And uh, beyond the indications, uh, if there is a lack of a space, uh, their implant should be used. And if um, PL width is very small and without the bone grafting, there can be used. Additionally, a provisional, removable provisional, um, can be assisted by uh, narrow implants. So MS provisional or two-piece type implants, 3.0, 3.5, are usually used. And uh, for additional uh, usage, MS denture, MS provisional uh, can be used. One guy surgery can be used, and there's a case. Dr. Park, can you introduce it in lower anterior? We come across these kind of situations very frequently, and uh, anterior four required extraction. As Dr. Cho and Professor Cho has mentioned, you, if you can find the right position, that's great, but that's not very easy. When you provide the bridge prosthesis, the position can serve is a very critical factor. In the case of MS implant, the, the drilling is just once or twice, so it's very important. If when you fabricate the guide, you can place the implant very easily. And the finding implant position is very easy, and following that, you order temporary ahead and provide a prosthesis on the day of uh, 
surgery, you can provide a provisional, you can replace provisional in the middle and provide final prosthesis. I think this is a very pr uh, convenient uh, prosthesis and uh, the implant has been positioned in a nice position. As for narrow diameter implant, it can be used most frequently in lower anterior. As mentioned previously, when you use the MS implant, the drilling is just once or twice. If you do drilling wrong, in the case of regular diameter, there's room for adjustment. However, if you start off in a wrong foot, then it's difficult to adjust. So you need to use the guidance system so that it goes in the correct path. When you use narrow diameter implant, a part of you it can feel uncertain about when a significant load is applied. As mentioned in the previous lecture, if you look at the ITI consensus report, depending on the diameter, different categories ha can be made. The smaller the diameter, if it is less than 2.5 millimeters, so the success rate is not low, but compared with a larger diameter, survival rate goes down slightly. Are there any other literature that we can reference? Let's look at other literature. In 2018, this is a study published in Choir, and three categories were divided. In category one, implant diameter was less than three millimeters. In category two and three, it was about three. And in the case of category one, significant low survival rate compared to standard was observed. And as for category two and three, there was no significant difference. Let's look at other research. In the case of narrow implant, more than uh, biomechanical factors, we need to consider bio Im bi peri implant infection. As for type 4 spongy bone, when there's infection, failure can occur more. This is a different study. In conclusion, with reduced diameter, prosthesis thickness can increase. So when load is significantly applied, a mechanical failure can occur. Considering all these, in limited circumstances, overload can be applied. So we need to use it in limited situations where overload does not get applied. As Dr. Park, Professor Park has mentioned in his lecture, in the case of narrow diameter implant, there are some downside biologically due to peri implant disease, failures can occur also due to biomechanical reasons when overload is applied. When you place a narrowed NDI in these case, failures can occur. We need to consider mechanical factors as well as biological factors. At times, we end up using NDI, but you need to bear in mind the precautions. That's how it can be summarized. The primary purpose of using NDI is to get secure space and when there's lack of bone, if you need to pr place implant in precise manner, you can use it and you can use the help of guided surgery. Open flap can be done and you can gain visibility and you can see very thin and ridge. I thought MS implant was placed nicely if you take us. CT is positioned towards the lingual side. I'm sure you have experience. Uh, those who have had a long clinical experience, you have you may have come across this kind of cases. In a very thin ridge, you may think that you have placed the implant accurately, but you may end up with apical perforation leading to additional GBR. In order to reduce such risk, you need to utilize guided systems. Regarding this, a survey was done. When placing a narrow di diameter implant, do you think a digital guide is necessary? It's the same format as a short implant. 26% show neutral opinion. Over half of the respondents say that it is necessary compared with short implant. 
the opinions are less pronounced. Uh, do you use uh, the guides for narrow implant? When asked this question, fewer people responded that they use guided uh, systems for placing narrow implants. So less than 50% use guided system, short implant and narrow implant. People think that you need to use guide, but in reality, such usage is still lacking. So there's more room for improvement. In the case of anterior, we have discussed primarily about it. For upper posterior at times, uh, it can be used, and it's not used for molar area, but in premolar area, it can be used if there is prosthesis in the mesial or distal position. In number four, it may be you may you don't want to invade adjacent to teeth or adjacent prosthesis, so you may have to use these options. No matter how you try to design it, at times you may feel like it's going to be in contact with number three. By adjusting angle, number four and five, guided surgery was done to place the two implants. If you look at the occlusal surface, it looks okay, but if you look at the apical view, there was very little room. When you look at CT, at times, they're in contact. Those situations we can come across very frequently. We need to prepare ahead in order to prevent that. There can be indications for premolar in the area as well. I think guide is the solution for accurate placement, Professor Zhou. So I primarily use narrow implants for lower anterior in the case of this patient in number 13 teeth due to secondary Carious, a bridge was removed in number 13 and 14 implants were to be placed. I was quite courageous. In premolar area, I applied the narrow implant. In the case of this patient, this patient was female patient. And in number 14, it was missing for a significant period of time, so it was quite narrow. Two narrow implants were placed. Unlike what was uh, anticipated the patient is using it nicely if the patient was male and if it was towards the molar area i would not have used a na narrow implant the patient did not have strong occlusal force so in the premolar area narrow implant was used successfully here in posterior area if possible regular diameter implant should be used but in sometimes the knee for narrow diameter implant and premolar area can arise. So if you can apply it clinically under careful consideration, then the survival rate will not differ significantly from regular diameter implants. But as shown here, when you compare it with the splinted cases in single crowns, and more so than premolar cases, uh, molar sites show more hardware complications. So as uh, Professor Pei has mentioned, Koreans have very strong occlusal force, and Korean dentists uh, go through a lot. So this is a three-year retrospective study, and uh, the accumulative survival rate is 92.4%, but this is not really satisfactory from a private practitioner's perspective when used in molar area compared to premolar area success rate, survival rate uh, decreased uh, rather than using it in low bearing area, you need to consider a causal force. So as for narrow implant, you need to consider load first before using it. This is my case in the past. In lower anterior and narrow ridge, I was not confident about doing GBR, so I used a mini implants. The patient used it for a long time. But then, all of a sudden, the patient came in with prosthesis in mind. It's not easy to come across fractured prosthesis in these cases. Two-piece implant fracture, well, you may think that screw screw loosening or screw fracture occurred, but this was a one-piece narrow diameter implant. And when they come in, you feel very, com you know, you 
you feel baffled when people come with a fractured one piece of implant. When you open a flap, this is not two piece of implant. You have to use EFR kit to in these cases. You cannot use such kit. You need to use cause dehiscence and you need to elevate it and remove it. GBR needs to be done and I was barely able to do it. Are you sure you're not confident about GBR? You have done a wonderful job. Narrow diameter implant, if it fails or fractures, I think it's really difficult to address it. I have restored the case like this, but you need to think of situations where it may go wrong. So we have tools to use in such cases. I haven't used it yet, so uh, MS implants can be removed using the tool. If you have any, don't uh, experience that it's better. So time is almost up. And so this is the last part, narrow diameter implants. The clinical usage, uh, the indications have been discussed and the provisional related to cases, so we will introduce the cases before close. The space is um, narrow and um, narrow implants can be used for fixed or removable. We can use MS provisional. That is another uh, clinical value for narrow implants. So let's have a look at a case. Uh, this is the case I showed you before in the upper anterior implant. So on the place and the provisional, if provisional can be provided, it's better. But the situation um, was different. So uh, teeth were extracted. The implants were in the posterior region. And uh, one piece can be used. Uh, temporary fracture or uh, loss can be hard to repair. So um, posterior regions and anterior regions were segmented. Uh, two MS implants were placed in the anterior region, and the provisional was um, segmented in three uh, segments. When a denture is uh, inserted or removable, uh, the GBR can be pressed down, uh, leading to poor outcomes. So um, MS implant, the provisional, was used. So during healing period, uh, it can work as um, support uh, for healing in edentulous uh, patient. And if uh, the partial edentulous portion is becoming uh, large, the patient would experience a concavity object from number three, five, six, and seven. Um, implants were placed, and uh, at number eight, narrow diameter implant was placed uh, to use as a provisional. And in the second stage of surgery, the mini implant was removed and then transitioned to the final. This is used. Um, on from time to time in a full edentulous case the implants were placed and to protect the gbr area ms denture implants um, was uh, two were used because the incise canal was good so it they were used and uh, uh, in the secondary surgery, the fixed uh, the, the prosthesis was provided. Uh, in a fully identical case, a guide design was made. After placement in the anterior region, two MS denture implants were placed two for, two for bilaterally. Uh, they were submerged, and two MS implants are exposed. And uh, retention was increased and the flange was uh, cut uh, when there are some patients uh, who complain the thick flange is so they can be reduced and uh, um, fix the prosthesis and then final prosthesis so this is um, 
helpful when they are used as provisional. When a removable is used, then, then pressing down on GBR is a concern. So on flange uh, can be used as uh, support. So I believe this can lead to uh, excellent prognosis. We talked about short and narrow implants. In a format of a discussion, uh, let's uh, summarize. So, summary of today's discussion, short implants and narrow implants. Clinically, and we, there are cases we have to use them. Advantage of short implants, um, simple in areas of uh, surgical risk. Narrow implants, when MD and buccolingual space is lacking, this can be used, but uh, there are disadvantages as well. Uh, for short implants, um, it is difficult uh, to maintain uh, the oral hygiene. And for narrow implants, we need to use them very carefully under excessive occlusal force. I need to emphasize that. And uh, for short implants, uh, it is short, so in order to compensate for that, wide diameter implants need to be used for narrow implants. Uh, when diameter is uh, three millimeters or less, uh, the survival rate is uh, lower than uh, the standard implants. So all these need to be considered when you make a decision. So summarize, this is the last slide. We talked about the short and narrow implants. This is the paper, uh, European Association for Osseointegration. Integration. Uh, they did the Delphi study in a survey form. The future trends in implant dentistry in Europe for the year 2030. And expert opinions have been collected in the Delphi study implant length and diameters. The length would be similar or shorter in 2030. And regarding diameters, uh, they would be similar or um, narrower ones. As uh, Dr. Best said, minimally invasive, in, minimal invasiveness is uh, to be focused under aging society. So this, Digital guide, the short implant and their implants would be utilized more in the future. So, uh, this concludes the session that we have prepared. Now, um, we have discussed among ourselves, but if you have any questions, uh, please um, ask them. First, we have uh, many questions from online. Uh, let's open the floor for questions first. Do you have any questions? Please raise your hand. We will give you a microphone. If you don't have any questions, uh, let's uh, look at questions in online chat window. TS. Asked when short implant is used, um, so the retention can be difficult. And do you have any tip for one guide when in a dystrophy and case the retention is um, low when the guide is pressing down? Maybe the guide is moving. Maybe there's a no stop. So in a free end, the guide may not be secure. Uh, Dr. Park, what do you think? Usually, in a single case, it is not necessarily so. But when I design a guide, if that is expected, uh, there is um, a fixed drill. I can remember the name. The guide can be fixed so that it doesn't get mobile. It can stabilize the guide more securely. At number seven, single case, 
the support uh, natural teeth can be increased in number. Any questions from the floor? Okay, I'm Dr. Park. Uh, listening to the presentations, uh, I have this presentation uh, question. When platform is different, single, single, or splinted, which one is favorable for uh, prosthesis? When uh, vertical platform is different, um, whether splinted or single, uh, from by mechanical perspective, uh, splinting can reduce complications. If you use a splinting, a surgeon and a lab technician who fabricate um, a prosthesis should communicate very smoothly. Um, Sometimes the embracer is uh, completely closed in design. I opened my practice for 20 years still. I have to communicate very actively with a lab technician if it is to be splinted in designing the uh, prosthesis. Uh, embracer spaces should be open for hygiene control. And if um, a platform a difference exists, uh, from periodontally, um, if a vertical gap is big, the low implant has a poor crown implant ratio, so it should be made single case. If crown ratio is poor, implant survival is um, and not at that is significant, so uh, the fracture risk would increase. So, uh, prosthetically, splitting is more favorable. Any other questions? Thank you very much for the impressive discussion, three doctors. And for short implants, when the platform heights are different and the uh, gingiva depth is a five millimeter or higher. Uh, the gingiva or um, problems occur and um, they're connected and have you had any such cases where inflammation became a problem? Thank you for the wonderful question. As you have mentioned, that when there's a difference in bone level, the prosthesis end up longer. And in that case, uh, the prosthesis becomes closer to mucosal area. In the end, the patient will feel pain when doing teeth brushing and proper maintenance of hygiene will not be done. Be it natural teeth or an implant, there needs to be characterized to tissue. And as you have mentioned, you have a gingivectomy. When you do it, the keratinized tissue becomes removed. So you go closer to mucosa. Rather than that, I recommend FGG or APF to provide a more solid gingiva. In most cases, when a short implant is used in posterior region, it's not aesthetically important. So the implant is below, and we need to provide a solid uh, gingiva to distance ourselves from mucosa in order to prevent peri-implantitis. So I'm, well, does it answer your question? So a lot of questions are being raised. OMFS below the, below the, in the, in, in the sinus floor at times, when a short implant is placed, in uh, the lower, below the cortical bone, it can be empty. And do you do bone grafting when you do short implant? I think it is important that we make sure that 
the short implant does not fall. I do not do separate the bone grafting. We need to make sure whether there is empty space on CT, and we need to check that upon drilling. When it becomes penetrated too easily, then we have to do grafting. In that case, so I tend to go for regeneration. I use allograft. That is my preference. What is important is that when you do drilling, if it goes down too much, I think we need to get uh, good stability and fixation. I think it's about getting primary stability. And in these situations, in other words, uh, there's no uh, there's no bone below the cortical bone. In that case, so we may stimulate inferior alveolar bone rather than putting in bone graft. I don't think that is recommended. Unless you do condensing, I don't think it's going to go in. Or if there are no more questions, we're going to entertain question from online. So TS, more so than TS, SS type shows, SS type short implant shows more favorable result of periodontally. Is there a difference long term? I don't think there is difference in terms of implant type. Personally, I use a TS or KS primarily. I look at the if there's too much uh, gingival level difference or if there is very bad crown to ratio the connection goes up slightly so you can reduce the ratio slightly long term when I have used SS type because posterior area aesthetics is not as important and it is periodontally more favorably so you can use it selectively I don't think there are major differences between implant type tissue level implant type and submerged type implant I don't think there are long term differences in prognosis. We need to consider internal displacer. If the implant placement position and direction is not very good, it is difficult to adjust to apartment because there is a set value. We need to consider that and choose the right implant to get good results. If there are no more questions, let's entertain more questions from online. So one piece, do you put the wide surface buccolingually or mesiodistally? If there is sufficient space, I do it uh, mesiodistally. If there is lack of space, I do buccolingually. Questions were raised in the afternoon session and questions up was about uh, flap management. I tend to place implant more lingually and in putting index side towards the lingual side can get can lead to better result when you prep it after osteo I think it should be done after osteo integration so after about two months a rubber dam puncher is used with rubber dam I prep using that. I'm not sure whether this answers your question, but it popped up in my mind. I think it's a good idea. In the lower anterior single cases, you prepped it, and the crown shape was very like a natural tooth. PFM restoration thickness could not be adjusted, so flap was reflected. So I want to make a such a natural looking crown. That's my desire. Well, in the case of upper anterior, is there a reason why you don't use narrow implants? Unlike a near lower anterior, implant angle and abutment angle, there can be many limitations. We need to use custom abutments because there are, in a lot of cases, angled cases. Also, it is an aesthetic zone. When recession occurs, we need to prevent, uh, prepare for that as well. The bone profile itself is more protrusive. That is why 
it is not a good indication to use one piece and narrow implant. Therefore, it is not frequently used in the upper. As for upper anterior, alveolar bone direction and tooth position can be deviated significantly, so this is difficult to use. We have a little bit more time. So let's entertain just one more question. If you don't have any questions from the floor, Dorongyo. Actually, we have a question from the floor. What is your indication of selecting gingival high in case of one piece implant placement for immediate implant placement of your face presentation? For example, if as we know that if we do immediate implant placement, we tend to have gingival rotation, and we do bone graft over the gingival tissue level, tissue level high. So, the chance of gingival rotation will occur. So, how what is your indication to select the gingival high for one piece implant? Man. One piece implant when they are placed, the gingival height is the question. MS implant, we can choose 2.5 or 4. Personally, rather than the company recommendation, I place a little bit deeper because I have wider choice. Um, the higher gingival height, 4 millimeters is my choice. So MS implant, actually the margin is positioned a little bit higher for fabricating the prosthesis to respond to any situations that can develop later. So this concludes the Q&A session. And uh, we have uh, questions from online and from the floor. And uh, let us select uh, the questioner uh, who wins prizes. So uh, the first uh, the questioner. And uh, from online, Indigo has asked the most questions. So Indigo is getting the prize. Congratulations. So uh, this concludes the Q&A, and all the program of today has finished. Thank you very much for staying with us until the late. Uh, no, how was it? Uh, so I enjoyed uh, the preparation, and uh, I enjoyed the discussion. Professor Cho, yes. And I hope um, what we have prepared um, is uh, helpful for your short and narrow implant placement in your clinics. Thank you very much for your attention. So that was a wonderful discussion by three doctors, Dr. Cho Young-jin, Dr. Park jung ji and the Professor Cho Young-dan. Um, I'd like to express my appreciation to you. Please um, give them another round of applause. Uh, as the questioner, online questioner, we will contact you individually. And then uh, regarding the Austin meeting 2023, so whether you are satisfied with the lectures, all the participants offline, we sent you the text message. Please link the link, click the link, and uh, 200 people will receive a chicken gift certificates. So 2023 Austin meeting poster award, 109 posters have been collected. The poster results were reviewed 
and the winners were chosen after vigorous evaluation and discussion by 18 judges. Uh, the awards include five gold prizes, four excellence prizes, and one grand prize. Today's award will be presented by Chairman Che Gyu Ok. Let's welcome Chairman Che to the stage. First, we have gold awards for the 2023 Austin Meeting Posters. The winners of the gold awards will receive a prize of 1 million won and a certificate. The names of five awardees will be announced in alphabetical order. Please give them a warm round of applause. This is the gold award. Uh, Professor Park Chung-jo of uh, Omex Oral Facial in Hanyang University, Dr. Park sung of Joseon Dental Hospital, and Professor Chu Sung-woo of uh, Prosontic Division at Kyung University, and Dr. Che Gun-ho of Won bon Dental Clinic, and Dr. Han Se-min of Yonsei Baro Dental Clinic. Dr. Park Chung-jo of Omex Oral Facial Department at Hanyang University, with your unique uh, passion for dentistry and presentation of an excellent clinical case, you have been selected as the winner of Gold Award at the Austin 2023 Austin Meeting Seoul, Korea. The certificate is awarded in recognition of your achievement. President Che Kyo, please give him a warm round of applause. Photos will be taken at the very last. Dr. Park Songha of Joseon University Dental Hospital, it reads the same. Gold Prize. Dr. Ju sung of Prosontics Division at Gyeonggi Dental University. Please, it reads the same. Please give him a warm round of applause. Gold Award, Dr. Che Gun-ho of Won bon Dental Clinic. It reads the same. Congratulations. Gold Award, Dr. Han Se-min of Yonsei Baro Orthodontics Dental, Dental Clinic. It reads the same. Please give him a warm round of applause. We'll have a photo shoot. Please come to the center of the stage. Chairman. Please stand to the side next to the chairman. Please look at the camera in the front. Move slightly towards the left. Congratulations, Gold Prize winners. Please step down the stage. Next is we have Excellence Awards for 2023 Austin awesome Meeting Posters. The winners will receive uh, 1.5 million won and a certificate. The name of the awardees will be announced in alphabetical order. Dr. Ham Sang Min of Prosontics Division at Yonsei Dental Hospital and Dr. Jong Ji Won of Jamsir Center Dental Clinic. Dr. Kwon Yok Soon at, uh, uh, of Periodontal Division at Gangnam Wonju Dental Hospital and Dr. Che Hyung Jun of uh, Seoul Patent Dental Clinic. Uh, and Dr. Kim Ho Jin of Gyeongbuk University Hospital Orthodontics Division. The Excellence Go Award goes to Dr. Ham Sang Min of Yonsei Dental Hospital Prosontics Division. Case report name is Prosontic Restoration of Both Mandibular and Posterior Teeth with Considering Occlusal Function and Maintenance. 
you have presented an amazing case, clinical case, and you have been selected as the winner of Excellence Award at the 2023 Austin Meeting Seoul, Korea. This uh, certificate is awarded in recognition of your achievement by uh, Austin Implant Chairman Che Gyu Ok. Poster Excellence Award, Dr. Jung Ji Won of Samsil Standard Dental Clinic. It reads the same. Excellence Award, Dr. Kwon Hyuk Soon of uh, Periodontal Division at Gyeongmyung Monju Dental Hospital. Excellence Award, Dr. Choi Hyungju of Seoul Baron Dental Clinic. It reads the same. Dr. Kim Ho Jin. Excellence Award, it reads the same. Next. We will have a photo shoot. Please move to the center of the stage. Please look at the camera in front. Congratulations once again to the Excellence Award the winners. Please step down the stage. So we still have grand prize left. Please help us. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. The grand prize for the best poster presentation at 2023 Austin meeting goes to an exceptional winner. This prestige prestigious award including a prize of 2 million won and a certificate is awarded to Dr. Lee won Woo of Maxillary Oral Facial Department at Hanyang University. Congratulations. Grand Award Dr. Lee won Woo of Maxillary Oral Facial Department at Hanyang University Dental Hospital. The title is Comparison of Prophylactic Effects Between Localized Aminocycline and Systematic Amoxicillin on Implants Placed Immediately in Infected Sockets. With your unique passion for dentistry and presentation of an excellent clinical case, you have been selected as the winner of Grand Prize at 2023 Austin Meeting Seoul, Korea. November 19th, 2023, to Austin Chairman Che Gyu. Please give him a warm round of applause. Now we have we'll have a photo shoot. Smile. Congratulations. A big hand, please. I'd like to thank Chairman Che Gyu Ok, who has given out the prizes. Uh, let's hear from the winner. Thank you very much for giving me this prize, uh, Awesome Implant. Second, um, people say. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Park chang -ju, who helped me quite a lot. And uh, I would like to thank uh, those who work in Hanyang University School of Dentistry. Thank you. So 2023 a poster award ceremony is to be concluded. And all the winners, thank you. And uh, congratulations. Continue from yesterday. 
we have held the Austin uh, Dental Hygienist Forum and Austin Meeting 2023 is sold at the Head, head office of Austin Implant, and now we are um, approaching the end, and um, it is regrettable that we have to close everything. So we have a prepared event before we close uh, the highlight event. Uh, let's get started. Galaxy Bus Pro as well as uh, JBL M2 wireless headphone and bespoke uh, vacuum cleaner will be given. The year's prize draw, lucky draw, adopts a rotary system due to high number of participants uh, with the last four digits of their phone number being 2875. Consequently, we will draw a total of five digits from the middle part of the phone numbers for the lottery. Now let's begin with a third prize and proceed with one winner at the time. Third prize for Galaxy Bus 2 Pro. Seven two seven zero three. Congratulations. Second winner is two five nine six zero. Two five nine six zero. Congratulations. Next is a three nine one six four. Three nine one six four. Winner of Galaxy Buzz Two Pro. We still have two more prizes left. It's eight seven four one four. Congratulations. If you're absent, you'll be able to receive it. Maybe you are you have applied it via online for eight four five three six. Five winners of Galaxy Buzz Two Pro have been announced. So please give them a warm round of applause. So next is second prize. JBL M two wireless headphone. Who will be the winner? Two eight four four seven. 28447, congratulations. Second winner is 62800. Congratulations. Second winner of MBL headphone has been announced as well. The final winner is 53771. Five three seven seven one. Congratulations! Uh, this is the final winner. We only have one major prize left. Bespoke Jet Robot Vacuum Cleaner. There's number five eight zero five zero. Five eight zero five zero. Congratulations! You have uh, won the first prize. For the winner, separate contact will be made. How was your experience thus far over the past two days, November 18th and 19th, the Austin Dental Hygienist Forum and Austin Meeting 2023 Seoul have unfolded with resounding success. So we firmly believe that the outstanding lectures and live surgeries by leading domestic and international speakers in the field of dentistry provided you with meaningful and enriching experiences. As we conclude this event, we extend our he heartfelt gratitude to the moderators, speakers, and all of you who stayed with, stayed with us till the end. Thank you for making this a shining success.